fact in the 94-95 season. So Kamitrov just might give Cap and Rye a bit of a run for his money. Then in the three o'clock, mentioned that Tony Carroll could have a good day. Burundi was a winner here last time, so Burundi, I think, should go close, as indeed maybe Dasher could also feature prominent in the two-mile hurdle at three o'clock. And then we end with a conditional jockey's hurdle at 3.30 with Nesson Dora, I think, the one to uh, side with in our final race this afternoon. Not a very original selection, that, but uh, in a race that does look a little open, Nesson Dora just gets a rather tentative vote of mine. So, that's the scene here at Leicester, a very fine Winter's off, summer's afternoon, winter's afternoon, it's perishingly cold, but I think the racing could be quite hot. But you'll be staying off the mulled wine, I hope, uh, Rupert, and keeping your eye on duty. I'll, I'll be on duty, but I might at the end of the day allow myself to have a little uh, tipple. And if you haven't seen Mr and Mrs Lovelace, who, uh, who occupy the mushy pea van, send them all the best. I wish we had some mushy peas <laughs> here. I'll, I'll, I'll send some down to you. <laughs> Well, that's actually impossible. You can't really do that. But um, thanks very much for the suggestion, Rupert. Many things, they can land man, men on the moon, but as far as putting mushy peas from Leicester into our studio here, quite impossible. Now, let's have a look at uh, a race. We're going to look at um, the 350 at Wincanton now. This is the um, showcase race today. Not too many runners in this. Neat Feet is the 7-4 to four favourite. And then they go 7-2 to two Punker. Six to one Nazir, sevens Robert's Toy, eight to one Walk On By, tens Torn Silk, Shepherd's Rest, and Jers on twelve to one, and twenty-five to one Stone Cutter. Well, let's start, Roger, with a look at uh, the favourite, Neat Feet, um, trained by David Ellsworth. Neat Feet, and this is Neat Feet in action at Wing Canton. Uh, at the end of October, he's run sen since at Ascot, ran quite well behind a horse of David Nicholson's real estate, who I think runs in the big William Hill hurdle on Saturday, so maybe it's quite good form. Neat feet winning nicely here from Advanced East and Al Mapper at Wincanton. Yes, th I thought this was quite a good performance. Um, he would be my idea of the winner of this race, I must say. Uh, Wincanton is one of those courses that you really need a horse that knows it. I don't know why that should be, but to me, if a horse wins round round Wincanton once, he can go there and win a game. You're right, because it's a difficult, sometimes it's quite difficult to find winners at, at uh, yeah. Wincanton. Maybe it's because one ought to look for the specialist, because if you suddenly interpret the form book, it can be turned in its head. Mm, I don't know why. I, I've taken a lot of horses there that I thought would run well, um, and they've never really got into the race. Uh, but if you take a horse there that, that, that runs well there, he seems to run well there every time, um, and neat feet. Who's Certainly. won there twice, yes. so he's definitely yes. won for the shortlist. Yes. yes. Worthy favourite, seven to four. Almost nap material, I reckon. Uh, Punkar hasn't won at Wincanton. Maybe he will. Graham McCourt trains him. In fact, he's won three times at Southall uh, on the turf there. And uh, here he is running at Kempton Park. He runs behind a horse of Kim Bailey's here called Mukdar. Blaze of song and specialised in the uh, places here. And uh, gets beaten five or six lengths. Behind yes. Uh, Mukta. Yes, this 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 was a, a fairly classy performance, wasn't it? This this wasn't a bad sort of race at all. I was here this day. Um, ground probably not a lot different to how it's going to be today. It was it was a little little on the on the slow side this day. Um, Wincanton. Normally you'd expect it to be quite quick ground, but it seems today as if it's going to be just on the slower side of. It's been a good autumn for ground actually, hasn't it? We've got none of this. Um, you know, this time of the year, often we can be plagued with firm ground, fast mm. ground. Yes, it's, we've, we've had steady rain, haven't we? So a lot of the we courses... We had a deluge, didn't we, in the autumn? I mean, it's sort of evened yeah. out since then. Yeah, yeah, we've not had the long sort of dry periods. And so. no frost yet, which is quite good. No uh, thick frost. No, that's right. Whatever no. Whatever the word is. Heavy. We'll look at uh, Robert's Toy in a moment. We're going to go back to uh, Windsor, where Mark Richards has got off to an early start, talking to Mick Fitzgerald. Thanks very much indeed, Robert. Yes, we saw him yesterday. Well, last time anybody saw him yesterday, he was rolling around in the ground at the top of the hill at Plumpton. But thank goodness he's still in one piece, Mick Fitzgerald. Uh, not a very pleasant experience yesterday, Mick. No, but even worse for for Jeff King and the owners of the horse, really. You know, was, uh, unfortunately, he had to be put down afterwards, which is always worse, you know. Like, it's OK for me because I can, I can pick myself up off the ground and feel pretty sore and, and walk away. But unfortunately for them, it, it hits a bit harder. It certainly does. Uh, not a nice experience at all. Well, let's hope that today we get off to slightly better start. Your Grecian dart in our first uh, must have a very, very good chance. Yeah, he, he has. He, I've been very happy with him. He ran very respectably at, at Cheltenham. He made a bad mistake, four out, which knocked him back 
to the back of the pack and as you know at Cheltenham it's quite difficult to make up ground after making a mistake like that, especially in a good race where they haven't gotten any gallop early on. We're well, not going to take you too long because in the third, hopefully, you might even be able to get a double up. A quick one for Nicky, a copper coin. Uh, third to Hello Sam last time out. And Hello Sam has, certainly hasn't let the form down since. No, he's a funny horse. That we're, you know, He's a nice little horse. He's a little bit weak, if anything. Uh, I think he's definitely a horse that will improve with age. He was very disappointing when he ran first time. He didn't quite get home at Stratford over 2-6. We always thought he was a stair. And then when we ran him back over 2-2 two -two at Fontwell last time, he certainly proved that he was staying on better than anything at the death. Um, I've made probably too much use of him the first day, and that's why he didn't get home. And then last time, I found myself struggling early on and in the middle part of the race, but towards the end of the race, he was really flying. Well, uh... Casa, carry on from that. Uh, a handicap chase. Robin's pride's got a few more letters next to his name and figures at the moment. But we shouldn't read too much into it because he was a little bit unlucky last time. Yeah, he was. Chris has said to me, I spoke to him at Newton Abbott the other day when he gave me my instructions to ride this horse. He's, he's very, very hopeful. I think you, you'd have to say that he was travelling like a winner when he unseated last time. He's a horse who I've schooled. I, I do like him. He's a tough little horse. And I think it looks a very open heat, this Buckland lad of Gardy Grizzells is obviously the one that we've got to beat. But we've got a fitness edge, whereas that hasn't run yet this season. And, you know, I know Chris is, he thinks this horse is in very good shape, and I'd like to think he might go and win. Well, I think you might just be right, too. Uh, another novice chaser, uh, Ivory Coaster of Bender Hans, was beaten an awful long way the last time when he was second. Yeah, he has. He, he's, he's a funny horse, this. You look through his farm, if you go right through it, and you see some very, very good farm littered in amongst them. He's got several good places around Ascot and at good tracks in good races, and every time he gets dropped down a grade and comes to a smaller track, he, he doesn't quite produce the goods. I don't know why. He's got ground in his favour, he's a, he's a sound little jumper touch wood and he just might be one that, again, in a competitive heat like this, he could just go and surprise. I hope he does. In our last Nordansk, again, I had a bit of a layoff. Michael Madrick's horse was third in a claimer last time at Fontwell, but I know Michael thought he'd get him a little bit fitter after that run. Yeah, I know Barry Fenton who rode him that day. I spoke to Barry yesterday and he, he seemed to think that the horse would run very well. I think it was a tough decision for him. He rides one of Robin Barrels who he rides all of Robins and he seems to think the horse would run very well. It's a very open heat this and he ought to have a chance. Well, just quickly, before you go dashing off to get changed, uh, last jump meeting here at Windsor, I've got pretty strong views about it. Uh, I've already voiced those. Uh, any from you? Oh, very much so. I think it's an absolute disgrace. I really do. I think you know, those words might seem quite strong, but I don't think you know, strong enough words touch the spot, really, about Windsor. It's a great track. You see the runners today. It never has a small field of runners throughout the day. It's always very well supported. The people who live in London who have horses in training all over the country, you know, they, they want to see them come and see their horses run, and they can only take a half day off. It means they don't lose too much time and money, and I really think that Windsor being lost is a disgrace because it, it's one of our better supported jumps track and there's a lot more, a lot a lot of places that I'd rather see Golden Windsor. Well I'd love to talk to you for a lot longer but I know the jockeys are going out but I'll let you go thank you very much indeed Fitzy and uh, well it's a pity we haven't got a bit longer to talk about it but obviously I'm not the only one with strong opinions about this one Robert back to you. No strong opinions there from uh, Windsor, more from Mark a little bit later on. Jockeys going out for their first race, but we've got a bonus for you because we're going to head to uh, Wexford. We've got just a minute or so in hand, so we're going to give you the uh, 12.30 race, the Vinegar Hill Maiden Hurdle, two and a quarter miles. And we've got a pretty short price favourite, I reckon, here, Willie Mullins' Mill Lane Lady, but for all the betting, let's go across to Luke Harvey. Mill Lane Lady is the even money favourite, and they go 4 to 1, 16, Sue Dawn. Two Bachelors Bar, six Prince of Erin, 7 to 1, and it's 10 to 1, number 5, Pompier, 12 to 1, bar those. I was, remember sitting in this chair a week ago watching the racing from uh, Thurley's, I think it was, and Mill Lane Lady was well fancied then and got beaten by a horse called Dor Dante, one of the reserves, I think it was, and uh, maybe can make amends today, even money favourite. She looks, according to the betting, the one to be on here. Yes, they, they've, they've, she's drifted back now from odds on, so they're obviously very keen on her. And, and it was Ruby good... Walsh does no wrong, does he, sir? No, he's really making a name for himself, isn't he? Mm. A lot of familiar names over there. Jason Titley, who we saw, of course, riding here um, a lot for oh, Henrietta Knight. Yes, he's on, he's on riding Aaron, pretty he, winners. Yes, he could be the one to chase him home, couldn't he? 
certainly could. Seven to one from six to one, but they're off and running at Wexford. Let's go across live to attract a commentary. Straight to the front by Ruby Walsh from in second place is native home Mike Murphy with on the inside Cullen's Town and Kieran Gall. They're followed by King Brandy with Bachelor's Bar racing just after these ahead of Sue Dawn and then Pompier next on the inside as they race on away from the stands beginning to climb up towards the first flight and Millane Lady makes it from Cullen's Town running second on the inside of Native Home. The three are being followed up by Sue Dawn also improving towards the outside is Bellevue Lad with King Brandy just behind the leaders. Bachelor's Bar comes next and they're followed by Pompier and a mistake of that flight by Randall Island. Racing on now towards the approach to the second and Mill Lane Lady in front moving into second place is Bellevue Lad. They're followed by Cullen's Town running three and Native Home four. King Brandy is behind them in fifth and then comes Sue Dawn, Pompier on the outside of Bachelor's Bar and then comes Randall Island being followed on the inside by Romantic Storm as they race over the next flight taking them down the far side and heading towards flight number four. Mill Lane Lady in the lead by two and a half lengths. Bellevue Lad is second. In third is Cullen's Town and fourth place on the outside comes Native Home. Behind Native Home in fifth is King Brandy. Sue Dawn is sixth. Pompier comes next on the outside of Bachelor's Bar and they're being followed by Prince of Aaron. Shiny Bay comes next as they jump the flight taking them across on the approach to the straight and Middle Lane Lady continues to take them along. Just over two in front in second place Bellevue Lad. Third is Native Home on the outside of Cullen's Town. Sue Dawn is five and then comes King Brandy. These are being followed by Shiny Bay Pompier with just after these Prince of Aaron as they swing into the straight now and race on towards the flight. That'll be the last after another circuit and Middle Lane Lady in the lead from Bellevue Lad in second, Cullen's Town Native Home just in behind, then King Brandy, Shiny Bay, Sue Dawn towards the outside, being followed by Pride of Aaron with Pompier, Bachelor's Bar on the inside, and then comes Randall Island, Gary Duff Breeze after these, and they're being followed past the stands by Camden Rose, further back in the field to Comanche Flyer, who is the back marker. So they race on away from the stands out in the final circuit. Mill Lane Lady continues to make it for Ruby Walsh. Bellevue Land is second, Doc O'Connor. Third, the inside, Cullen's Town and Kieran Gall. On their outside comes Native Home and Michael Murphy. Just after these, Sue Dawn with Shiny Bay. And then comes King Brandy, Bachelor's Bar on the inside and they're being followed by Prince of Aaron in company with Pompier and these go on from Gary Duff Breeze in company with Al Milto. So they race on now to the flight, the top of the hill, four flights from the finish, Mill Lane Lady, Native Home goes second, Bellevue Lad is third, Sudorn is four, then King Brandy and Collins Town and over that flight Mill Lane Lady goes on by just over two lengths to in second place Native Home, Sudorn improves on the inside, Shiny Bay is close up. King Brandy being pushed along five. Mill Lane Lady over that one, two and a half in front of Sue Dawn moving second on the outside of Native Home. Then comes Shiny Bay as they race now with a good run to the second last. And Mill Lane Lady who's made it all under Ruby Walsh in front. Shiny Bay has moved into second place for Liam Cusack and they're being followed by Sue Dawn and Tom Tracy. Pompier makes ground with Native Home and Bachelor's Bar next. Two to jump. As they approach the second last, it's Mill Lane Lady. Mill Lane Lady dived at that one and almost went. And Shiny Bay now makes ground up on the outside. Pompier improves. Mill Lane Lady trying to recover from the mistake on the inside. So they race round the home turn. And on the outside, Pompier coming there to join Shiny Bay. Mill Lane Lady trying to recover ground again on the inside has come back to lead. Bachelor's Bar is just behind them. But in the center now, it's Pompier who's come through to join issue with Mill Lane Lady Bachelor's Bar coming down out of the final flight and Pompier Mill Lane Lady over on the far side then making ground the outside is coming with a good run is Camden Rose and it's Pompier pressed by Camden Rose now as they go towards the line Pompier and Camden Rose in a photograph and also a photograph for third Bachelor's Bar and Mill Lane Lady
Well, it was a crucial mistake there by the favourite Mill Lane lady, put paid to her chance. A very close finish, whether Pompier is held on from Camden Rose, I wouldn't want to be 100% sure, but they finished pretty tired there. Pom Pompier and Camden Rose, good finish, wasn't it? But a mistake in the pink colours by Mill Lane lady put pay to her chances. Yes, I, I thought when, when she made that mistake, I thought that would be her done for. But in fact, she actually stuck to her task, didn't she? And, and was still there with a chance at the last. Much the race I was sitting back here saying, oh, well, she's going to make amends for finishing close second uh, last week. And who knows, bar that mistake, she might well have done. But she's, oh, she's back on terms there, isn't she? Yes. Yes, not the stuffing out of her, but um, she's got back on terms of this. The horse that's just got beaten has come from a long way back here. Pompier jumps for last with a nose banner, but he rather dives at the last. And here comes the yeah, Camden Rose has come from a long way mm. behind. Yes, he's turned in about seventh or eighth. Bachelor's Bar, I think, is the one storming into third. But a very short run in there. And um, we'll bring you the full result as soon as we get it for that. Pompier and Camden Rose. But we've got our first race at Windsor coming up uh, imminently. Let's get a show with the Luke. Oh, a loose horse, okay. Luke. What's going on there? Looks like a jockey's fallen off. <laughs> well, that's the uh, first race at uh, Windsor, the farewell novice hurdle, over two miles. Favourite is number one, a Grecian Dart, 8 to 11. Then they go 7 to 1 for Nemisto. Out to 8 to 1 then, number 9, Super Monarch, and 11, Zers. 12 to 1, number 8, Sudist. 20 to 1, number 7, Rear Window, 6, Premier League, and it's 50 to 1, number 10, Win the Toss, 66 to 1, 12, Golden Fawn, 13, My Lisa 2, and it's 100 to 1 about, number 2, Chinachuk, 3, Niven Niven, and 5, Pampered Pilot. Thanks for your help, Luke. The jockey who's fallen off there was Carl Llewellyn of uh, Golden Fawn. Hope he's OK. The horse is still uh, running loose. There's the horse, but you were thinking of napping. I'm glad you haven't, because it's a very short price favourite. It's, you know... Grecian Dart, yes. Yeah. Nice horse, though, isn't it? But um, I'd be very surprised if it got beaten here, but um, I, don't, I don't think you could claim a great deal if um, if uh, tipping him to win. Of his rivals, we've got uh, Nemisto, who's just been nibbled at in the betting, 7-1 into 6-1, to one. Henrietta Knight's horses, just beginning to, to, to find their form. Of course, uh, Edward on Blur runs on, on <coughs> Saturday in the in the Tingle Creek. The Misto won with a chance. And she, she won with a lovely novice hurdler at Windsor at the last meeting. Um, so young horses are, are well. I, I, I think Nemisto, to me, would be the one that would chase Grecian Dart. Um, Supermonic, who belongs to Shellgate Public Relations. In fact, I actually trained a horse for them last year. Um, this horse won a nice race at Newmarket on goodish ground and then went back to Newmarket on softer ground and got beaten. So whether it was just the ground that cost him his race, um, but he would be quite a decent recruiter to novice hurdling if he was to handle the ground. Meanwhile, still running loose, Golden oh, Fawn. Carl's and, trying to oh, fly. There is uh, at least <laughs> Carl Llewellyn's on his feet and prancing around, and he's caught the horse. Always a problem here, of course, because they can end up in the river. Oh, uh, it's not going to happen anymore, though, is it? But nope, um, I'm sure we'll go to... Luke's been wading in Old Father Thames for many, many years. Give us a few experiences. You've, there are many stories about horses running into the Thames, aren't there? Yes, that's right. I, I remember one years ago, a horse, uh, I think that was a jump race, that had been tubed, that actually got into oh, the river. Oh, isn't that fatal, um, isn't it? Yeah, well, it was. Um, yeah. And, of course, swam around for some length of time, but then disappeared. Uh, and I remember... Oh, one, dead? Mm, yes, that's right. That was a fair time ago. Please. And I, I remember uh, another one, I think it was one of Richard Hannon's, that went there to... Uh, have a stalls test one Monday evening before racing. I hope this is a happier ending, is it? Oh, much happier. Um, and I think it delayed, it was still actually out on the course loose when they were running the second race, um, careered around for ages. Yeah, strange things happen to horses. At, even at Worcester the other day, there was a horse of Henry Daly's that won, previously run at Toaster and run two miles up the A5. Is that right? Which is a very yes. busy road. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes, Can't be a lot of good then. <laughs> And Carl's back on board. Grecian Dart is uh, shortening all the time. Seven to four on now, from uh, six to four on. But uh, with all the betting movements, let's go back to uh, Luke. Have you ever been dumped into the Thames, Luke, on a horse or not on a horse? I've been dumped off horses plenty of times, so not in the Thames, Bob. Well, the favourite here is one Grecian Dart, four to seven. There's a little bit of money for four Nemisto. That one now from seven to one, now into eleven to two. Then uh, nine Super Monarchs, uh, eight to one chance. Eleven Zers is ten to one. It's up to twelve to one, about eight Sudist. 
20 to 1 about 7 rear window and 6 Premier League and it's 50 to 1 bar those. The Henderson horses have been in wonderful form haven't they in the last month or so so I think Grecian Dart is going to be extremely hard to beat here. Yes I think so. Um, I'm hoping here that Nicky's horses will carry on in tremendous form as I've um, got his other horse in in my double later This will on. be your selection. Oh, that that uh, wayward golden fawn is some way behind the others, at least 50 yards or so behind the uh, other runners. So we are going to run a bit late here. We're already nearly two minutes late. That grey is behaving rather erratically. Yes. It was behave misbehaving in the paddock. Well, that's Nemisto. Is it really? The second favourite who's been yeah. well backed. Well, raring to get, get, a, get on with things, I suppose. Oh, well, let's 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 hope it's just very well. Yes, yeah, a bit of joie de vivre. But uh, we're waiting for Golden Fawn to uh, join the others down at the uh, start. We'll be heading our next port of call. Will be Wing Canton, 12:50. So we've still got time. So it's the worst thing is if the races all start going off together and we miss the action. But there, just now joining the others is Golden Fawn and uh, Carl Llewellyn, a rank outsider in the betting, and the only other one being backed, apart from uh, Grecian Dart, is, is the one of the grey, Nemisto. Yes, it looks like it, it, it will just involve these two. I must say, Super Monarch, though, I, I think, um, as the, the third favourite, though, though he, he, he might well be a recruit to the jumping game, I'd like to see him run on this ground well before, before I tipped him. So we have a close look at uh, Super Monarch, which is... Uh, Blue with white sleeves. It was a £10,000 race that he won at um, Newmarket, so they obviously take a bit of winning. He, he has got a fair amount of ability. He used to be with Simon Dow before he moved to Carl Burke. Yes, now with Carl Burke. I think we can go to the commentary box for uh, the first time. Last time jumping, of course. Man with a tear in his eye, no doubt, is uh, Derek Thompson. Uh, not just a tear in, uh, in my eye, but a, a big drop on the end of the nose because it is bitterly cold here today. But the ground, it's riding pretty good. Good jumping ground, and they seem to be sorting themselves out for the opener. The hot favourite here, Grecian Dart, in the light blue colours, right in the uh, middle. And they're being called in. They're being called in for our opening race, the Farewell Novices Hurdle, Division 1. Well, it looks as if this could be a first-timer. And having said that, it is. They're under starter's orders. They're off. Right, here we go. Over two miles and eight flights of hurdles. And one of the first to go on is one of the two greys, Nemisto, who's running quite free early on, disputes it with Pampered Pilot. These two stride for stride as they come down towards the first of the eight flights. The hot favourite Grecian Dart runs third at this stage, and running fourth is Royal Cayley. These are the four leaders as they jump uh, the first, and uh, one or two not two foot perfect, but they're all safely over the first. Coming down to what will be the last next time round, and Nemisto taking them along at a good clip here. Pampered Pilot runs second. Making ground towards the stand side is Chinkachuk, then comes Grecian Dart on the far side in fourth. Behind these, running fifth as they come past the stands is Royal Cayley. On the inside is Zers. Towards the middle is the other grey, that's Premier League. And behind Premier League, towards the stand side, is uh, Super Monarch. On the inside of Super Monarch is Nive Niven. Behind this one, as they pass the stands, is a rear window. And looking back towards the rear, Miley's at two is the back marker. And just in front of that is Sudest. So out they go, out their final circuit. And the one who's taken them along at a good clip is Nemisto. He's running, pulling quite hard. And he leads them into the back straight as they go down towards flight number three. And this horse, this grey, taking a real good hold of Liam Cummins. Nemisto the leader. From in second place we have Chingachuk. Then comes the odds-on favourite, Grecian Dart, going nicely in third. Pampered Pilot is a close fourth as they jump that one on the far side. Good jump on the inside there by Zers, who's gone right.
right up to join them as they go down towards the next. This is uh, flight number four. And still the hard-pulling Nemisto, the leader, from Grecian Dart in second. On the inside, disputing third, we have Zers. Then comes Pampered Pilot, and Chinga Chuk jumps this right up with them on the outside. On the heels of the leaders going well is Super Monarch, the horse who won at Newmarket on the flat. Then comes Royal Cayley. Behind this one is Nive Niven. Then comes Golden Fawn, who's asked to improve. Going a good clip as they go down towards the intersection of the course at the halfway stage, a mile left to run. And still Nemisto takes them along. The leader by about a length and a half. In second place is the hot favourite in the light blue. That's Grecian Dart. Third towards the far side is Pampered Pilot. Then comes Zers. Then Super Monarch. Then comes Jinga Chuk. Behind this is Golden Fawn. Then comes Miley's at two, who's making a forward move. And behind this one, as they jump it, is Royal Cayley. That's the leading group as they go towards the bend with three quarters of a mile left to run and three more flights when they get round into the home straight. Nemisto still leads from Grecian Dart in second. Zers goes well in third. So does Super Monarch in fourth. And Pampered Pilot is fifth. That's the leading group of five. Behind these under pressure is Golden Fawn. Behind this one, My Lisa 2 takes closer order. Then comes Royal Cayley. That's the leading group as they come round towards the home straight with just over half a mile left to run and three flights left to jump. And up front, as he has been right from the word go, is Nemisto. Grecian Dart, the hot favourite, comes up to join him on the inside. And these two in the air together virtually. Also going well on the far side is Zers. And these three beginning to go clear of My Lisa 2 who's beginning to stay on. And these four now drawing well clear of the weakening Super Monarch. Here they come down towards the last two flights and the odds on favourite Grecian Dart now goes on. Nemisto now comes under pressure. Zers is third. Making significant progress is My Lisa 2 right behind in fourth. This is two out. Grecian Dart in the lead and going well. He leads by a length and a half. Nemisto coming back on the far side. Here comes My Lisa 2 with a good looking run. Coming down towards the final flight. Grecian Dart has got about a five length advantage as they come to it. Grecian Dart pops over in the lead, pings it. Miley's at two, jumps it in second. In third place is the weakening Nemisto, and it looks as if the odds-on favourites got this as they come up towards the line, half a furlong left to run. It's a win for favourite backers. Grecian Dart coming right away and winning this race very comfortably indeed under Mick Fitzgerald. In second place a good run by Miley's at two. Nemisto is third and staying on to be fourth, win the toss. No problems there for the favourite, the Nicky Henderson trained Grecian Dart, ridden by Mick Fitzgerald, second My Lisa 2, ran a good race, and third was Nemisto. But the runners already down at the start at Wincanton, they were a bit late off at Windsor, so let's speed on with Wincanton. North Tyne is uh, the short price favourite here, North Tyne, full show with Luke. Yes, thank you Bob. First race at Wincanton, two miles six, novice hurdle. Just to remind you, there is a jockey change, and it's quite a significant one. Not the favourite there, number nine, North Tyne. Paul Holly now rides instead of Andrew Thornton. North Tyne is in at five to four. Twelve Yorkshire edition is a four to one chance. Then they go five to one, number two, Ashgan. Out to six to one for number six, Jet Specials. Then it's ten to one, eleven, Strong Magic. Twelve to one, ten, Rosie Boy. Fourteen to one, about eight, Miss Cool. And it's out to twenty to one for three, Browning's Boy. 5 Clonshire Castle and it's 25 to 1 bar those. Before we uh, go to uh, commentary, we can go uh, straight away to uh, Miriam, who's reporting from uh, Wincanton this afternoon, who's got news on this. Yes, Robert, program. welcome to Wincanton, and I'm sorry that I haven't spoken to you beforehand, but I have just rushed here from Philip Hobbs's where I've ridden out first lot and um, thoroughly enjoyed a morning that uh, you'll all be able to enjoy um, on Sunday. Now, our opening race uh, here at Wincanton would appear to be between Robert Ulner's North Tyne and Yorkshire Edition from the Paul Nichols stable, but Ian Williams, who is with me, is introducing a very interesting point-to-point -point winner in Ashgan, Ian. He's a very nice horse, Ashgan. He did very well in his point to points last season and I was very fortunate to be sent him during the summer. We've worked him very hard. Uh, I think he's a very promising horse, but he's still carrying a little bit of weight that I'd much rather have got off him at home, but we've just worked him and worked him and we've been very tough on him, but he seems to just hold on to a little bit of tummy. So he might just lack that final edge? He's maybe just lacking that real edge of fitness and like you've quite rightly pointed out there's two fairly reasonable novices in this race on their form up till now um, i'll be quite pleased to see him run a run into a nice place today ian thank you very best of luck thank you very much commentary coming up from wincanton but let's quickly bring you up to date with a couple of results 
Yes, Wexford, number five, Pompier was winner, 10 to 1. Nine, Camden Rose, 14 to 1. Third horse was number one, Mill Lane Lady, even money favourite. And just to clear up there, at Windsor, the first was number one, Grecian Dart, 4 to 7, favourite. Second, 13, My Lisa, 2, 66 to 1. And third, four, Namisto, 11 to 2. Now let's go live to Wing Canton. They're off and running. Simon Holt is our commentator. A high miss call then is Mankind. Strong Magic back in the field from Jet Specials. And Browning's boy as they fly the second flight north time made quite a bad mistake at that. Towards the rear at the moment, Tachometer is last of all. Last but one is Clonshire Castle. Towards the back also Ashgan along with Arguably. And uh, Clonshire Castle just seemed to get snatched up at uh, that point and dropped back uh, to last place. Heading towards the last in the back straight, and it's North Tyne that lands in front, though. Hasn't been at all fluent over the first three obstacles. Rosie Boy better towards the inside. And then Miss Call races in third, Yorkshire Edition towards the inside. After Yorkshire Edition is Mankind, followed out wider by Jet Specials and Browning's Boy. Back on the inside in midfield is Strong Magic, and then behind these is arguably, as they swing right-handed out of the back straight, brush off towards the back with Ash Gang, Clonshire Castle getting a fairly rough ride, got another bump there on that turn, and then last of all is Tachometer. Down the side of the course then, towards another right-hand bend, and North Tyne and Rosie Boy continue to dispute the running. A couple of lengths in advance then of two in nosebands, Yorkshire Edition, the inside of Mist Call. Back then in fifth place in a green jacket to Mankind towards the outside of Strong Magic. Wide out then in gold is Jet Specials, followed by arguably and Browning's Boy and Ashgan and Clonshire Castle towards the inside as they head down towards flight number four then. Rosie Boy and North Tyne. North Tyne took off and landed about a half length ahead of Rosie Boy. Miss Call. Reminder there for Jet Specials on landing. Now on to the fifth. And North Tyne with a big white face, big strong horse coming to it. Again, rather careful. Rosie Boy, uh, a rather more proficient jump towards the inside. In third, with a good pitch under Richard Dunwoody, is uh, Yorkshire Edition in the colours of Robert Ogden. Then, from uh, Mist Call and Mankind Specials, Browning's Boy is taking the circuitous route, right round horses from arguably Strong Magic the Rail. Brush off towards the back with Tachometer and Ashgan and Clonshire. And there's trouble there around that bend. Rosie Boy went badly out left, took North Tyne with him. Others that weren't done any favours were Browning's Boy and Missed Call. So uh, quite a few changes in places as they head towards the next flight. And at this uh, obstacle, it's now North Tyne who's back in front, having been taken rather wide round that turn. Yorkshire Edition is second, Mankind in third and then Jet Specials. Rosie Boy trying to get back into it again but uh, again hanging out to the left round this bend and uh, has run right off the track Rosie Boy over there as the others continue along the back straight and it's North Tyne from Yorkshire Edition and Mankind and Jet Specials as they land over, oh a terrible jump by the leader North Tyne sent to young Paul Holly up into the air but fortunately he landed on the horse's back uh, looking towards the rear, Rosie Boy, who's proved rather untractable, has had to be pulled up. Brush off is last of all. Meanwhile, the others clear the middle one in the back straight, and it's Yorkshire Edition, the big horse with the noseband, who just edges the lead now from no North Tyne in second. Then Jet Specials. Behind Jet Specials is Mankind, Strong Magic, and then Miss Call from Arguably, who's made up a bit of ground. Ashgan is making stealthy headway towards the inside of runners from Tachometer as they clear the last uh, over in the back straight. A big jump by Yorkshire Edition, the leader there. Getting a bit remote, Clonshire Castle, then brush off under pressure, and Browning's boy has dropped tamely away. Drawing towards the end of the back straight then, and it's Yorkshire Edition. And Strong Magic just appeared to lose uh, his action leaving the back there. Yorkshire Edition by a length to Jet Specials. Mankind the inside of the ever-improving Ashgan in a blue and orange jacket. Miss Call is in fifth p position as they now run down the side of the course. Behind Miss Call is North Tyne who's losing ground from Strong Magic, arguably Tachometer. And I think we can forget the others as they now swing right-handed with two flights left to jump. Yorkshire Edition on the inside of Jet Specials 
who's being driven vi vigorously by Dennis Leahy. Mankind is third. Ashgan now struggling to run on as they head down towards the second last. And it's Yorkshire Edition who's travelling well from Jet Specials in second place. Ashgan pulled towards the wide outside and Mankind in behind them as they land over two out. Yorkshire Edition in front over that one from Jet Specials. Mankind plodding on. Ashgan on the extreme outside, the right-hand side. They've kicked well clear of Miss Call, but down towards the final flight then, and it's Yorkshire Edition in front, keeping up the gallop. Met it well on a long stride. Mankind, a bit of a heap in second, but Ashgan is running on under the stands rail to go second now, but will have to fly to catch the leader, who's pulling out all the stops under the Dunwoody drive, and it's Yorkshire Edition staying on too powerfully for them, racing inside the final 50. Yorkshire Edition, a clear-cut winner from Ashgan on the near side, then in second place from Mankind in third, and they were well clear of missed call. Good performance there by Yorkshire Edition in the colours of Robert Ogden, trained by Paul Nichols, another winner for him, ridden by Richard Dunwoody. And uh, this is the horse who was quite well fancied at Haydock the other day, but the uh, horse box for Paul Nichols' horse box arrived only about an hour before the race, so that might have unsettled the. Yes, that's right. Yes, we all got stuck for some considerable length of time on the on the M6 when uh, Laurie went into one of the um, flyovers. Um, what a lovely big horse he is. I think he'll be running over fences sooner or later, won't he? Maybe sooner. <laughs> yes, that's right. Anyway, Ashgan second and uh, Mankind in third. Uh, first race at Leicester is uh, under five minutes away, so let's go live there. And uh, the runners have arrived down at the uh, start. Stingray, I think we'll find, is the uh, favourite here. But let's have a show with Luke Harvey. Yes, Bob, Stingray is favourite, ridden by Rodney Fount, who is due to go on to Windsor later on in the afternoon. But uh, 13 Stingray is the 2-1 to favourite. Next they go 4-1 to about 5 Eregal and 11 Sadler's Secret. Then it's 6-1 to about 8 Golden Hawk and 12 Saxon Victory. Then it's 8-1 to Court Ordeal. One always trying is a 12-1 to chance. Then it's 20-1, to number 7 Frame of Mind. 9 Ivorian, 2 Blue Anchors, a 33 to 1 chance, along with 3 Cool Performance, 6 Felony is a 50 to 1 chance, 10 Park Royal is also 50 to 1, 14 Temujin's a 50 to 1 chance, 15 Tom's Prize also, and make it so, it's 100 to 1, 7 Ruby Bear, and 18 Ruth Gem. Thanks for that comprehensive show to Luke. A Stingray, 2 to 1 favourite. And uh, we can hear from uh, one of Stingray's rivals here, Adrian McGuire, who rides for David Nicholson runner, Erigal. Yes, Adrian's got a couple of good rides. Let's talk about the one in the first. The first and got a good chance, Erigal? Yeah, I'd have to have a good chance. Um, it's had some good runs, some been consistent, and um, <laughs> hopefully today is the day. Yeah. No, <laughs> there may be one or two quite useful ones around, but he's hinted at, at some form, that fourth and a, and a second, so he, he's been knocking at the door. Yeah, he has. Like I say, he's had some good runs, and uh, he's been knocking at the door, so um, just hope that consistency continues today, and maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll draw. How will you try and make sure you get into, into, the, into the winning position? Well, I suppose um, there's plenty of runners. We'll, I don't know, four to fifth, something like that. Hope to go a good gallop and uh, hopefully stamina will, will uh, come my way and uh, hopefully we'll get her home. Adrian Maguire's views there on uh, Erigal in this uh, first race at Leicester. But before we go to the uh, commentary box, let's tidy up the result from Wing Canton. Yes, Bob, that opening race at Wing Canton went to number 12, Yorkshire Edition, 4 to 1, second favourite. Second to Ashgan, 6 to 1. Third, number 7, Mankind at 33 to 1. All 13 ran. Uneasy this favourite at uh, Leicester. Stingray, first time over hurdles, of course. Showed a little bit of form on the flat. Won a mile and three quarter maiden, I think, at Nottingham. Soft ground. Mm, yes. Um, Wouldn't I think be it's... rushing there to back well, the favourite, no, would you? No, I think um, it's being done really on, on Venetia Williams. Phenomenal success, isn't it? As much as anything. He has got flat form. On, on this ground here, which, uh, if it is drying out from soft to good to soft, could be a little bit tacky. I think you wouldn't mind seeing something that had run a couple of times over hurdles. Like, well, I think like Court Aragon. Ordeal, who's run quite well, the uh, horse trained by Richard Bevis, might run well, 9-1. Yes. to one. Yes, that's right. Yep. Showing a bit of form. Yep, again, it, it's had that bit of experience, and if, if this ground is tacky, that can just come in valuable. See, Stingred were finished behind a horse of uh, Mary Reevely's one over hurdles the other day. Lord Lamb finished fifth behind Lord Lamb, one over. 
hurdles the other day, one of her four winners on, on Monday, I think it was. But they're filing out onto the course in the commentary box today. Let's have a last look at the betting now. 11 to 4 now, this uh, Stingray drifting. 5 to 1, Erigal, who we heard about in Sadler's Secret. 6 is Saxon Victory. 7 to 1, Golden Hawk. 9 to 1, Court Ordeal and double figures and upwards the rest. Commentating today at Leicester, delighted to say good afternoon to Graham Good. A very good afternoon and welcome to Leicester viewers. Uh, one little bit of uh, parish notice here. Number three called performances in blue with yellow, well, blue with gold stars. There's our starter, Adrian Sharp, sorting them out. 18 to line up for this beginner's juvenile hurdle race. Won last year by an odds on pipe chance, but looking the wrong way at this moment is felony. Just having a turn round. They're also turning round on the outside. We have Golden Hawk. Market forces make Stingray 11 to 4, if not bigger eye being high here at the moment, but. Has to be determined. Here we go. They're under starters' orders. They're off. Race away then over two miles. Quickly down towards the first flight. Cool performances amongst the uh, hunting pack early on. They take it over with uh, Ruth Gem the inside and Felony running fast. All safely over the first. A very short run to the second. Skipping through on the inside is Saddler's Secret. And it's the blinkered Saddler's Secret that'll leap the second in a length lead and takes it safely. And they're all safely over the second flight of hurdles, although Blue Anchor a little bit uh, slow at the back. Come up past us, and now it's Ruth Gem in the striped jacket on the outside that comes through for a view of the front. Ruth Gem to Sadler's Secret sitting in second, Featherly in third. The inside position is Saxon Victory hugging the, hugging the rails. Stingray just forced a little bit wide with Argy Bargy midfield as they make their way towards the back straight. Uh, cool Performance sits in a midfield position. On the inside is Frame of Mind. Behind these goes Park Royal. The outside of Park Royal to Mujin, always trying, is towards the back. Make it so is now Plum Last. And uh, Ruby Bear is uh, towards the rear. Tamuji makes a mistake at the st third flight of hurdles. But up front, the principal players at this stage, and they've gone through the first half mile, concern Saxon Victory and uh, Saddler's Secret. With uh, up on the outside, these Erigal. Also, a felony in a position. Stingray not that far behind, and Golden Hawk as they cross the next. Golden Hawk a little slow. Good jump there by Frame of Mind, who's uh, getting closer now as they continue the run down the far side. Saddler's Secret just has the edge to Saxon Victory. The pace is strong. Felony going into third. Up on the outside, Erigal and Stingray as they make the, the dog leg down the far side. Of about five or six uh, right across the track now, heading at a rate of knots towards the next flight of hurdles and under a mile to go. Well past halfway. Wide on the track are Erigal and Stingray. On the inside is Saxon Victory in company with Sadler's Secret and a half behind these Felony who makes a slight mistake there and gets a reminder for his pains. Ivorian starts to pick up. Golden Hawk with chances. Frame of mind is bang there. Cool performance with a run. Then Park Royal. Then some of the strugglers that include at this stage court ordeal. Stingray takes up the running but only just as they head out of the back straight and on this sweeping turn for home where they have four flights of hurdles to jump in the half mile run. Saxon Victory is under strong pressure now. It's Saddler's Secret hugging the rails. On the outer is Erigal and a line of three is made up by Stingray. They're one, two and three. Golden Hawk is four and closing down on them and then behind the Saxon Victory followed through by Cool Performance putting in a nice performance. Park Royal behind these. Here we are four out over which a mistake was made by Sadler's Secret on the outside Stingray and between the pair is Erigal coming home well though is Golden Hawk in four and closing the quartet close in on the third from home and Sadler's Secret very game has come back for a good jump there and a length and a half lead over Stingray in second place then in third under pressure now is Erigal and starting to uh, stay on is on the inside Golden Hawk they come down towards the uh, second last now and also with a strong run on the outside cool performance here we are two out and on the inside we've got uh, Sadler's Secret on the outer with a nose bang cool performance they're going at it 
Hammer and Tongs back in third is Stingray, followed by Golden Hawk, and then the rest struggling. This is the final flight at which it's going to be with the nose band, cool performance that edges into the lead at the last. Golden Hawk a mistake knocks out place money. They come down towards the last 150 yards, and cool performance rousted home by Jim Cullity, going three, four, five clear up towards the line. Cool performance it is to a brave saddler's secret. Plugging on for third is Stingray. Golden Hawk coming home four. I think we had a long price winner there at Leicester, trained by Di Hayne, cool performance, owned by her her father, Tom Jones himself. Yes, that's right, yes. And hey. ridden by Jim Cullity, a very easy win. Sadler's performance, the pipe runner was second, ran well. And uh, Stingray didn't run too bad, so Sadler's secret second, and Stingray, first time over hurdles, I don't think... Uh, Connections will be too disappointed no, with that. No, I'm, I'm sure they aren't. What do you make of the conditions there? Um, it is testing. I thought it would be. There's not. There's nothing running on, is there? Jim Colotti's given this a, a terrific ride. I thought um, he's certainly not knocked it about. He was 100% effort from probably three out, uh, and has gone on one readily in the end. But um, he had to work very hard, didn't he? Big price winner. Luke will give us the SP. It's a 50 to one winner, Bob. Three cool performance. 50 to one. 11 Saddler Secret was second, 5 to 1. Third horse was 13 Stingray, and he was a 3 to 1 favourite. 18 rand, sorry. Uh, the, uh, it's a tough, it's a, it's a stamina sapping track, isn't it? There's a stiff uphill run for, at Leicester. Yes, yes, and this, this is a beautifully bred flat horse. We were told we were worried about um, Stingray first time over hurdles, but of course this was a first taste of hurdles for yes, um, this yes, winner. Yes, that's right. And if you look at its breeding, Bob, it, it's by Lear Fan out of Christchurch, the Queen's mare, that um, was beautifully bred. Would that suggest it would be a jumping? Hasn't been up to now, I wouldn't guess. It is now. No, no, there's been, been some very good winners in that family. Jim Cullity saying how he did it. But uh, we leave Leicester because we've got uh, a jumping afternoon today. We're off to there's the happy trainer. We're just just leaving the, 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 the connections there. But there they are going down at Windsor for the uh, 110 race here. We've got a two mile five furlong handicap chase. Here's how they bet. Yeah, so it's amateur riders for race. We've got uh, an outright favourite now. Work ho favourite. We've got an outright favourite now. Seven Scobie Girl, Shaman's Mullins' horse, is favourite. 11 to 4. Then it's three to one about five cheeky Charlie, four to one about one injector buck. Then it's five to one about three philatelic. Then it's six to one two Hawaiian youth. Number six River Bay is a six to one chance. Number eight Teleporky has drifted right out from twenty one to thirty three to one. And number four No Catch Him is a twenty five to one chance. Mm. Eleven to four favourite here is Scoby Girl, who's trained by uh, Seamus Mullins, written by Alan Dempsey. A lot's been uh, spoken about him, but let's hear from the trainer, Seamus Mullins. Talk. Thanks very much indeed, Robert. Yes, Seamus Mullins has joined me, as you said, favourite, and uh, you're just telling me that uh, that's not a great sign to be favourite and be interviewed beforehand, Seamus. It can happen any time you interview me, Mark, when I were favourite. Actually, with these colours, with um, Game Dilemma, Mr McCready's down at Fontwell one day you interviewed me. <laughs> <laughs> um, she finished second, but never mind. Well, Scobie Girl today, obviously, she looks as though she's got a favourite's chance after back-to-back -back wins at Plumpton last year. Definitely. Um, she's got the jumping experience. I mean, there are some of them with uh, a lot better hurdling form, but Windsor's tricky enough um, over fences. Um, sadly, we're going to lose it, but um, I think, she, yes, she has got a, a favourite's chance. A uh, very significant jockey booking, a lot of people would have said. This uh, boy Dempsey, um, I think, is a serious jockey in the making. I've watched him quite a lot on, on the racing channel and live. He rides a nice filly for Mrs. Reevely called Catherine's Pet, which I actually have a half-sister to. And he, it was riding of her that caught my eye. He's very cool. I think he's, he's a top jockey in the making. Well, best of luck for today, and uh, let's hope you're right on his behalf as well. Well, hopefully. We say, Mark, it's a sad day here today that we're losing Windsor Jump Racing, and I think it's very short-sighted on both Windsor Racecourse's behalf and also the BHB. We're losing um, a track, a very valuable track, to run an ordinary horse, like possibly what my mare is and a lot of the horses here today. If we want to go jump racing in the London area now for a London owner, we've got to go to grade one tracks, and if we haven't got a grade one horse, 
where do we go? I mean, we're going to lose Linkfield uh, in the spring. We've got to go, you know, Folkestone or Plump are the nearest best thing, which which is fine. But uh, it's a sad day for for racing that uh, for jump racing that we're losing Windsor. Well, I think you just mirrored it. A lot of people have said thank you, Seamus, indeed. And uh, let's hope uh, we don't have too many more lost in the near future. Back to you in this studio. No, we don't, don't want any more lost. Not to end a few more. We don't want any more lost. Anyway, there is. Um, Seamus Mullins talking about Scooby Girl, Alan Dempsey, this up-and-coming amateur rider. There is uh, Alan Dempsey. Of course, we've got another up-and-coming star, Richie Forrestal, riding uh, Injector Bucks. So we'll see two of these. Yes, yes. Um, different styles, aren't they? Um, Richie Forrestal um, with Kim Bailey. He's made a great start. Um, unfortunately for him, he, he got injured yesterday morning on the schooling ground and missed a winner yesterday. Missed Whipper's Delight, didn't he? Yep. But Scooby Girl, the winner here, do you think? Um, yes, I do. Uh, I don't. I'm not a great fan. Once we get cracking into the season and the, and the ground starts to to get a bit softer, of of uh, get tipping horses that are running first time against horses that have had several runs. But I must say that I think Scoby Girl would be my idea of the winner, and I think Injector Buck is perhaps one to chase it home, which Enough goes course, completely great against the grain. Off um, for 988 days, hasn't it? Just yes. You, uh, Philatelic and Hawaiian Youth, obviously. Um, They've been running, both been running and running well. Um, Cheeky Charlie, Rid that's ridden by Ian Mungan, who in yes, fact who had the winner yesterday. Who yes. stood in for yes, Richie Forrestal. Yes, yes, he's going to be on fire today, I would think. And that one's shortening all the while. Let's get a, a late betting show because Cheeky Charlie, the one that seemed to be backing Luke. Yes, Cheeky Charlie was seven to two. It's now a three to one chance. Scoby Girl still favourite seven. Kobe, Scoby Girl favourite five to two. Then it's nine to two. Number one Injector Buck. And it's six to one, bar those. Runners being called in then. 11 to four, Scobie Girl, the favourite. They're off and running. Here's Derek Thompson. With a rider's handicap chase, and one of the first to go on is Hawaiian Youth and Teller Porky. And these are going to go down to the first and jump it in the lead. Oh, and a bad mistake at the back by Cheeky Charlie. Cheeky Charlie is down at the first. Ian Mongan suffered quite a fall there. Horse is all right, and I think Ian's about to get up. So, going down towards Fenton's number two, and the lead-up is Talaporki from a wine youth and philatelic. Up on the far side is No Catch Him. These are the four at the head of affairs as they jump it. And a bad mistake by Injector Buck. That's down. Injector Buck is a faller. So, the field reduced to six after just the first two fences. So, making the bend at the far end of the course for the first time, and philatelic on the inside disputes it with Talaporki. Then comes No Catch Him, Hawaiian Youth, then River Bay, and the back marker is the favourite, that Scobie Girl. That's the order as they come into the home straight for the first time and straighten up towards fence number three, and this will be the first of the three ditches they'll be jumping in this amateur riders' race. The field quite tightly grouped as they come towards the ditch. In the red sleeves, Teller Porky in the pink colours. That's philatelic. These two are stride for stride. Hawaiian Youth and No Catch Him right behind. Then comes River Bay and Scoby Girl. That's the order as they jump the first in the home straight. So they're all OK over that. Coming down now towards the next fence. They've got uh, three f plain fences in front of them. And as they come down towards the first of these, philatelic in the pink colours. Just the leader over that from in second place, Teller Porky, virtually stride for stride. Uh, right behind disputing third, Hawaiian Youth. Behind this one comes No Catch Him on the far side is River Bay and the back marker is still. Scoby Girl, that's the order as they jump the next in the home straight. All six safely over that and coming down to what will be the last next time round. Up front it's Teller Porky who leads from Philatelic in second. Coming up to jump this in third will be No Catch Him, then Hawaiian Youth, River Bay and Scoby Girl. That's the order as they jump it, and there's only about five lengths between the six runners as they pass the stands with a complete circuit in front of them. Teller Porky in the red sleeves leads, and the pink colours philatelic. Towards the stand side is no catch him. In the black and white hoops, River Bay is fourth, the wine youth is fifth, and a very close six is Scoby Girl. That's the favourite. So out they go on their final circuit, swinging left-handed away from us in the stands, and uh, the field beginning to group up. There's only five lengths between these six runners. So swinging in the back straight as they go down towards fence number seven of the 15 they'll be jumping in this. So they're coming towards the halfway stage. Fence number seven is a plain one. And as they go to it in the red sleeves, Teleporky, who's been there right from the word go, he's going to jump this one in the lead. Philatelic in second on the inside. Then comes No Catch Him. Towards the outside, Scoby Girl takes closer order as they go down towards fence number eight, which is the water jump for the one and only time. 
All safely over that. Still quite tightly grouped with Teleporky leading. And now here comes in the black and white hoops River Bay to join the front rank with a wine youth and towards the outside Scobie Girl. Then comes uh, Philatelic. The one who's just been ridden along now is No Catch Him. And about five in the air together there as they jump that fence and go down towards the intersection of the course. And uh, still leading is Teleporky. Then uh, right behind in second is River Bay. Philatelic is between these two. Then comes Hawaiian Youth and uh, Scobie Girl on the outside. That's the order as they go down towards the intersection of the course. The one who's struggling is uh, No Catch Him. And uh, seem to have lost Scobie Girl at that. He seems to have run very wide and he's lost his lose his pitch there. Well, back with the leaders anyway. Teleporky late from in second place River Bay. Philatelic is third. These three now beginning to go clear of Hawaiian youth who's beginning to struggle in fourth. Going towards the bend at the far end of the track and there's a lot of bumping going on there. Philatelic on the inside. Up on the outside is Teleporky. These two are stride for stride. Right behind in third is... Oh, and a faller at the bend is Hawaiian youth. Hawaiian youth has slipped up on the bend and come down. It's all happening down at that far end of the track. So here they come round towards the home straight. Half a mile left to run, four fences left to jump, and up front it's Teleporky, Philatelic is second, and River Bay is third. That's the one, two, three, and these three have it between them as they come down the home straight with uh, four left to jump, and this one is the last of the ditches. Leading three safely over that with Teleporky in the lead. Going well in second is Philatelic. Right behind being driven along is River Bay. Now it's in the pink colours. Philatelic who now goes on. From River Bay in second, under pressure in third is Teleporky. Jump in the next and Philatelic in the pink colours towards the stand side. On the far side it's River Bay. Half a length between these two. Make it stride for stride, neck and neck. Here they come down towards the next in the home straight. And they're in the air together. This side it's Philatelic. On the far side it's River Bay nip and tuck neck and neck here they come down towards the 15th and final fence Philatelic just half a length in front on the far side in the black and white hoops is River Bay this is the last and Philatelic just the leader from River Bay furlong left to run who's got the better finishing speed Philatelic this side on the far side River Bay they're stride for stride half a furlong left to run Philatelic this side River Bay the far side who's going to get his head in front Philatelic might just it's a photo between Phil Philatelic and River Bay. Philatelic might just have got it, but that's one for the judge. In third place, Teleporky. Well, that race had anything, everything, didn't it? Uh, Philatelic and River Bay in a, in a, in a very close finish. Uh, in fact, it's been called Philatelic the winner, River Bay second, and Teleporky in third. We lost the uh, first two favourites very early on, Cheeky Charlie and Scobie Girl. Then Injector Buck, a crashing fall for that one. In fact, uh, Scobie Girl had a horrible, horrible fall. And then on the um, home turn, we got, I think, a loose horse coming the other way out of the... Out of the um, coming towards the horses, and Hawaiian Youth slipped up. Yes, yes. Who said jump racing wasn't exciting? Um, yes, there's a couple of really very, very nasty falls. No, we're in the back straight here. This is, I think this is after this, this we've is lost... This is JD climbing up the inside, isn't it? Yeah, he's just going on the inside there in the pink colours. JD Moore, son of Arthur. And suddenly we're going to see... There we are, that loose horse. And, oh dear, Niall Fehley comes off Hawaiian youth. A rude shock as you turn in the bend. Suddenly you see a horse coming towards you, a loose one. Yes, you brace yourself for a fence, but you, at that stage you're trying to ride for a position rather, rather than bracing yourself. Alan Dempsey, I don't know how he is. He had a horrible form from Scobie Girl, didn't he? Yes, yes. That, that, that wasn't jumping that fluently. Um, and he just put it into the race and I'm afraid it turned a somersault, didn't it? All the jockeys are on their feet, which is good news. Let's get the uh, SP there at Windsor. Yes, Bob, very eventful race there, uh, that amateur riders race. One was uh, three Philatelic, uh, that was six to one. Second, six River Bay, nine to one. Third was eight Teleporky, 33 to one. <laughs> and uh, we've got an opening show for you at Wing Canton. Favourite there is number 11, Tales of Bounty, at three to one. Number three, Fuero Real, is a five to one chance, along with eight Noble Demand and 13 Tom Paddington. And it's 8 to 1 about number 15, Bratesh, 12 the Jean Genie, and uh, 6 Master Carter now gone out to 9 to 1. And it's 10 to 1, number 2, Fields of Omar. And then it goes right out to 25 to 1 about 
seven Millad. Then it's 33 to one, 16 Harleston Lane, 50 to one, about five Lawyers Dream. And the outside of the lot is number nine, one to go, 66 to one. This, I predict, is a pretty difficult race to name the winners. Anything leap up and shout back me to this one, Roger? <laughs> no, no, I think it leaps out at you. Watch me, doesn't it, rather than rather than back me. I mean, the um, Ellsworth horse, t Tales of Bounty, is, a, is an obvious one. Fuero, Furo Real is uh, the drifter. Tom Paddington's been backed a bit. Yes, yes, and, and noble demand of, of Toby Bordings, I would have thought. Um, has had two quite... Well, you were talking about experience, and that probably yes, could stand that one in good yes, stead. Yes, that's right. Eleven to four favourite Tales of Bounty. You just had the uh, two wins. I'm still get, gathering my, getting my breath after that race at Windsor. <laughs> All sorts of things happening <laughs> yes. there. And then we had a 50 to one winner at, at uh, Leicester before that, a surprise Di Hain winner. There's the... Um, Starter going up to uh, his rostrum, mm -hmm. going up the steps two by two. And um, I think it shouldn't be that long before they're underway. Tales of Bounty, the 11 to 4 favourite. The runners fired out onto their course, onto the uh, course. And um, I think we can go across back to uh, Simon Hope. Let's hope there's no event here. We've had our breath taken away, Simon, with events at Windsor and before that at Leicester. Yes, it was very exciting at Windsor. What a shame that uh, they're not going to have any more jump racing there because uh, a lot of thrills and spills there meanwhile we've got a novices hurdle here just about to start there are the starters orders they're off away with uh, two miles to cover red risk is anchored leaving the gate behind fields of omar towards the back as well falcon sail the first to show on the outside of master caster lawyers dream a gray close up behind them tales of bounty towards the outside with right out wide tom paddington getting a clear view of the first they just lost his hind legs on landing taking a keen grip for tom paddington on towards the second and it's falcon sail from tales of bounty in the pink jacket over on the inside master caster from lawyers dream and then one to go as they take the second flight. Tom Paddington out wide then. Up the inside in headgear is Bratesh and then back in the midfield inch perfect from the Jean Genie and Fuero Real and the last four at the moment Harlestone Lane, Fields of Omar, Milad and finally Red Risk. Passing the stands then a circuit to go and it's Falcon Sail. Just bowling along very merrily in front about three lengths clear of Master Caster in second and Tales of Bounty who's now been taken back into third position. Uh, behind these, one to go towards the outside, Noble Demand in red and Bratesh towards the inside, followed by Tom Paddington as they jump the one down the side of the course. Uh, then uh, Lawyer's Dream, an inch perfect, running up the inner from the Jean Genie. Fuero Real, not really travelling early, just being coaxed along from Fields of Omar, Harlestone Lane, the last two, Milad, and finally Red Risk, who's been last all the way so far. Into the back straight they go then, a line of three flights of hurdles awaiting them down there, and it's Falcon Sail that continues to make the running by three or four lengths to noble demand towards the inside jumping it in second position the inside of master caster inch perfect made a mistake there as they continue along the back straight towards the next falcon sail really trying to stretch them in front setting quite a good pace to noble demand and master caster tales of bounty and Bratesh follows these from lawyers dream and tom paddington right round horses from the gene genie who's getting a bit closer two lengths fields of omar an inch perfect and they've dropped the others fuero real has dropped right away from harlestone lane and one to go and my lad as they race towards the last in the back straight and up front it's still Falcon Sail, but not too clever there. A noble demand joins uh, the leader on the inside. Tom Paddington towards the outside with Master Caster very close. The Gene Genie has made headway. Tales of Bounty follows these on the heels of them. From Bratesh trying for a run up the inside as they swing right-handed out of the back straight. The leading... Full six or seven are chased by Fields of Omar and then Lawyer's Dream. And most of the others have dropped away as they run down the side of the course. The others headed by Inch Perfect. And uh, of what remains, they're well tailed off. Down the side of the course, it's Noble Demand, Master Caster, Falcon Sail, trying to hang on grimly to uh, his position between horses. And then in behind them is Bratesh, the inside of the Jean Genie. Tom Paddington now moving up quite stylishly under Jamie Osborne towards the outside, chased 
hard by Tales of Bounty. The winner will come from this group of six or seven and probably from one of the front two, Master Caster and Tom Paddington, as they head down towards the second last. Master Caster, the inside of Tom Paddington. They're just getting away from the others, headed by the Gene Genie and Noble Demand. And then Falcon Sale, the early front runner from Bretesh and Tales of Bounty, down towards the final flight. And up front, Tom Paddington looming up on the outside of Master Caster. The Gene Genie running on pretty well in third place, but landing over the last, it was Tom Paddington who has a definite advantage now and beginning to sprint away from them. Tom Paddington just pushed out hands and heels by Jamie Osborne. Six, seven lengths, could be a bit more. The Gene Genie goes into second place from Master Caster and Noble Demand, but racing for the line, a highly impressive debut over hurdles for Tom Paddington, clear of the Gene Genie, Master Caster in third and Noble Demand fourth. That was an impressive debut over hurdles for Tom Paddington, trained at Newmarket by Huey Morrison, given a confident ride by Jamie Osborne, and has won in, in good style, hasn't he, Roger? Mm, he'd be winning again after that, wouldn't he? He's, he's had a, a lovely introduction, hasn't he? Nice run around the outside. Um, fine performance. No previous experience. A no. rare runner over hurdles for, for Huey Morrison, who did well on the flat this year. And you can see there from the head-on shot, putting well clear of... Mm. Run away with them, just hands and heels, isn't he? Certainly has. The Gene Genie and Master Caster, second and third. Here's the SP. Yes, the winner there, Tom Paddington, was the 5-1 to one chance, second favourite. Second, number 12, the Gene Genie, 8-1. to one. And third, number 6, Master Caster, 10-1. to one. Leave Jamie Osborne coming in there, and uh, we can go to Leicester, where we've got uh, a horse that's quite well fancied, Prospero, trained by Amanda Perrett, and uh, your nap, Roger, so we can hear about him. There's uh, Rupert talking to Mark Perrett. Thanks, Robert. Yes, Mark with me. Prospero, good hurdles for him 12 months ago against Song of the Sword. Good enough to win this race? Hopefully so. It's a novice chase and anything can happen. <laughs> but the feeling is, do you, you think he's going to run well? Yes, hopefully so. He's been schooling well at home. Um, if he performs like he has been at home, hopefully he'll run a big, real big race. Do you think he's a decent chaser in the making? Is this a stepping stone to, to better things, you think? Well, hopefully so. He's always promised to be a better horse with a bit of time, and we've given him plenty of time, and he's just really coming to himself now, you know. So you might be a little disappointed if you're not in the first three? Well, we could fall at the first, you never know, but... We hope we run a big race. OK, good luck, Mark. Many thanks for that. Thanks. That's Mark Perrett, hoping that uh, Prospero's going to run a big race. Let's have some betting then as how, uh, to how Prospero's featuring in the market. Well, Prospero is second favourite at 7-2. to two. Favourite is Sarah Delight, trained by David Nixon in 6-4. to four. 15 Prospero is second favourite at 7-2. to two. Then they go 4-1, to one, about 4, Cara's Rose. 5-1, to one, about number 6, Chater Gold. And 11, P. Whitbridge. Number 14, Mon Monsoon Man, is a 7 to 1 chance. Number 1, about turn, is 12. Then they go 25 to 1, 7, Corn Exchange. Number 13, Chief Chippy. 33 to 1, 2, Boulevard Bay. And 3, Bubbles Galore. Also 10, Muckle Jack, is a 33 to chance. And 5, Casey Casey, is 100 to 1. Sarah's Delight is the favourite at the moment at 7 to 4. Uh, Prospero, your nap, happy with 7-2? to two? Yes, yes, I, I don't think he's a bad price at 7-2, to two, I must say. I know um, Maiden Chases and... First and if you're in good fences. company, John Hunt, who presents this programme quite often, he's one of the uh, Napsters in the Racing Post Naps table, and he's, only, he's almost holding up the table, he's won from the bottom, he's desperate for a winner, he's Nap Prospero. Hmm, doesn't, doesn't Worrying, sound too good for me, does it? <laughs> there was a fair chance if Prospero gets beaten and the chap below him, the Nottingham Evening Post wins with Bowcliffe Court. Ah, Mr Hunt could be bottom of the league, which would be most worrying. Yes, and I shan't get invited back. But we heard from Adrian Maguire earlier about his ride on Errigal, but now we can uh, resume that conversation with Rupert as he tells us about Sarah's Delight. Adrian, Sarah's Delight, good run last time out, first time up this season. That hints that uh, this could be a race of the taking. Hopefully. Um, maiden chase. Nothing like what it was the last day um, that the horse ran around here. Um, it was a good run, jumped, jumped soundly, and uh, reproduced that, that form. Um, hopefully we'll draw. And this is a good fair jumping track, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, down the back, 
I don't know, the fences around Leicester, they're a little bit upright. Um, the ground runs away from the back of them, down the back straight. So it catches out novices. But um, like I say, mine jumped soundly the last day here. And uh, hopefully we'll continue. And the feeling is we'll obviously strip a good deal fitter for that. So you must be quite bullish. Yes, we'll uh, strip a great deal fitter for the race. And um, like I say, Maiden Shea is coming down a lot from what it ran here the last day in the grade. So hopeful, very hopeful. Adrian Maguire, very hopeful of a good run with Sarah's Delight, and um, as the point was made there, he ran in a handicap chase here at Leicester before. He's got chasing experience, which, which your nap, Prospero, doesn't have. Yes, that's, that's the one worry, isn't it? Um, but I think he's always travelled well enough in his races. Um, I think horses tend to make experiences when they're off the bridle. Um, this horse, I think, will travel very well. People start making the argument about ratings, but uh, Sarah's Delight rated 91 over hurdles, Prospero 107. Well, I think you could read a bit too much into that, couldn't you? Mm, yes. Yes, I, th I think you can. Um, I prefer to have it uh, on my side than against me. Um, but yes, once you start over the big fences, I think that the, some of the hurdle ratings can just go out the window, Bob, can't they? We've got our talking horse, of course, here, um, Cara's Rose, trained by Jenny Pittman. And uh, she's uh, shown a bit of... He's shown some um, experience over fences. Third at uh, Utoxeter behind Rakib, who's uh, run quite well since. Ran quite well in the showcase race the week after, so that may be quite yes. useful for him. You yes, can see yes. the grey there in the Hitchens colours. Yes, Jenny's horses quite often are, are better for their, for their first run of the season. Um, it's her local track. She's a Leicester girl. <laughs> yes, that's right, yes. Yes, I, I can see this um, coming back to haunt me. Well, good luck with Prospero. Uh, let's go across to uh, commentary, a bit of a ragged... Ragged line there. Just been nibbled at on the uh, off there or b before the off. Seven to two into three to one Prospero, but Sarah's delight going to go off favourite currently seven to four. Here's Graham Good. It was just uh, Muckle Jack that tried to uh, break the tapes there. There he is. In the diamond jacket. A little bit of uh, parish notice for the colour change on number 14. That's uh, Maroon with the white chevrons, clearly visible from that camera angle, was uh, number 14, Monsoon Man. Not maroon and pink, but maroon and white. Moving up on the outside about turn, that looks about it. Oh, no. All is not well. Lining up down at the start, bit of a problem with the tape. Being fixed now. A little bit of tension adjusting on the far side. They're under starters orders, they're off. About turn was a little bit slow to go despite trying to get a prominent position early on. And P. Whip Bridge, the horse that was very free going down to the start, is striding on at a real rate of knots as they come into the first of 18 fences. Stutters into it but gets over in the lead and oh, very nearly went there was uh, Cara's Rose but the jockey did particularly well to keep the partnership intact they come down towards the second and it's Peewit Bridge with up on the outside Chief Chippy in a company with Muckle Jack and Prospero the inner making a line of three for second place half a length down Corn Exchange runs the inside of Jewelers Wells oh and a bad fall there was uh, Peewit Bridge and it looks as if it's brought one down. Sarah's uh, delight has gone as well. That was brought down by the fall and a very awkward fall it was. Come down towards the next one and it's now Muckle Jack that's sent into the lead to Prospero the inside going one and two as they begin the turn and make the way towards the uh, cross fence. Going into third place is Monsoon Man. After that we've got Corn Exchange followed by Jewelers Wells and they come to the uh, cross fence now over which the loose horse is causing one or two problems and we had a faller at the back, could have been Boulevard Bay that one they make their way down towards the uh, turn into the home straight for the first time and as they do so it's Muckle Jack on the inside of Monsoon Man who's ship one and two Destler's Devil goes into third place the uh, pink cap of Bubbles Galore is showing up now the inside with uh, Prospero hugging that rail. Then we have Corn Exchange, followed through by Chief Chippy as they take the first in the home straight, where Jewelers Wells is towards the back. Come down towards uh, the middle fence in the home straight, in number seven, and it's Monsoon Man that shows the way. 
to Desler's Devil and Muckle Jack and on the inside Prospero uh, really hugging those rails under Graham Bradley. After that comes Corn Exchange followed at a length and a half by the slow to go about turn who jumped it well. So they make their way down towards what will be the last next time round and as they come down to it it's going to be Prospero on the inside of Monsoon Man with up on the outer Muckle Jack. They're one, two and three. Wide on the course is Desler's Devil, that's in four. Bubbles Galore racing five. Casey Casey, the rank outsider, is just pottering along in sixth place, a half in front of about term. Then we have the blinkered Chief Chippy towards the back, Cheta Gold towards the back, and so as they race up past us with a circuit to go, there's only about uh, ten lengths between all of them. Indeed, it was Boulevard Bay that went at the top of the hill, and it looks as if they're going to have to bypass the uh, last but two fence on the no, the the, the uh, markers have in fact now been taken out at one stage the markers were in the fence on the far side so they level up down the back straight and two horses have uh, thankfully gone onto the hurdles track at this stage and it's Muckle Jack and Prospero that go one and two as they take the water and they've skipped over it well at the back of the pack now is Monsoon Man, who's uh, weakening rapidly and losing uh, any chance whatsoever. Head down towards the open ditch, or at least their second open ditch. And as they take it, we've got uh, Muckle Jack that leads. Muckle Jack with a length advantage now to Prospero. And having been very quiet, Cara's Rose has come through into third place. That's uh, been very, very quiet indeed. Then Delsa's Devil behind these, then Casey Casey. Over the next one, it's Muckle Jack that just has the lead to Prospero the inside. The grey Cara's Rose striding up now. Delsa's Devil on the outer. These are followed through by Casey Casey in about turn. After these, Jewelers Wells. Then Corn Exchange followed by Chief Chippy who made a mistake there. Chater Gold is out the back now and they've got under a mile to race. Two more to take on the far side and it's Prospero leading into the 13th. Muckle Gold the outside and Cara's Rose there, one, two and three. Casey Casey is in four. Desler's Devil the outside, five. A length behind these about turn um, and then Corn Exchange. They take the last on the far side where Prospero wasn't as fluent as he has been at some of the others and they begin the turn then towards the cross fence and it's Muckle Jack that has the edge here. Muckle Jack with the call to Cara's Rose in second then on the inside, Prospero tries to come back into the action and jumps that open ditch well. Followed by Casey Casey and then Desler's Devil about turn corn exchange and the rest are tailed off. They start the turn in and as they come down towards the home turn, three more to jump in the John and Gaunt Maiden chase. It's Muckle Jack for Jim Cullity in the dark blue. Light blue on the outside is Cara's Rose for Jenny Pippman and uh, Brian Harding. On the inside, the blue and white Prospero and Graham Bradley for Amanda. Here we are, three out. Muckle Jack just has the edge, but Cara's Rose is moving well. Prospero under pressure, and the rank outsider, Casey Case, is coming in there in the black colours and coming home well. Here we are, two out. It's going to be Cara's Rose that just has it to Casey Casey, the inside. Prospero under a determined ride from Brad is coming back for another cut and coming home well. But Cara's Rose possibly just holds the aces here. One more fence to jump. Back in second place. Casey Casey and then Prospero then Muckle Jack and then about turn one fence to jump and it's Cara's Rose for Jenny Pittman comes to it ears pricked and is over safely in the Robert Hitchens colours Casey Casey's in second place Prospero is in third after these comes Muckle Jack and about turn inside the last 150 yards could be another chapter in the book here Cara's Rose coming home well clear Cara's Rose takes it ears pricked and wins easily to a second place Casey Casey Prospero pushed out for third in front of about turn and the rest. A victory for the uh, one of our talking horses today, Cara's Rose, trained by Jenny Pittman in the colours of Robert Hitchens, ridden by Brown Harding, beating Casey Casey, a big outsider there, and Prospero only a third. Sorry about that, Roger. Yes. Yes, shame. No, but... we're heading to Windsor because uh, time moving on. The runner's done at the start for the 140 race. Let's give you a share of betting. Yes, Kim Bailey's newcomer, number six, Floriston, is favourite, seven to four. Then they go nine to four, number four, Copper Coin, then out to five to one for five, Dragon Lord. 
Then it's 14 to 1, number 9, Slipstream. That one now out to 14 to 1 from an opening 10. Then it's 16 to 1, number 12, Double Flight. 20 to 1, about number 1, Banjo Hill. 7, Poker School. And 2, Bron Hallow. Then it's 25 to 1, 3, Camden Road. 50 to 1, about 8, Rorge Carlton. Number 10, the Polymath, and 14, Ultra Potem. And the outside of the lot is, is 66 to 1, number 11, Velmez. Now we can clear up that maiden chase. At Leicester, the 131st was number 4, Carus Rose, 5 to 1. Second 5, Casey Casey, outside of the lot, 100 to 1. And th third horse home was 15, Prospero, 100 to 30. 15 ran. So five to one, that winner there at uh, Leicester, Cara's Rose for the talking horse. Floriston is a short price favourite here, 11 to eight, opened at two to one. Copper coin, five to two for the Henderson stable. Uh, six to one, double figures the rest. So it looks to involve these top three. Mm, yes, yes, that's right. These, these do look like they're going to be the horses, don't they? Let's quickly hear from Kim Bailey. Floriston, first time over hurdles. In our third race, the novice hurdle, you ride, uh, you ride, you run Floristan. If only you could ride it. Uh, you run Floristan. Uh, can you give us any light on this one? Yeah, he was a horse trained by Luca Kamani. Um, he went to the horses and training cell. I bought him back for some of the owners who were originally involved in him. He's a half brother to Ardros. He had three runs on the flat, showed promise, um, school well. I'm very pleased with him and I expect him to run very well. In a nutshell, there, Kim Bailey talking about Floristan, who's gone off the five to four favourite. Here's Derek Thompson with them in the early stages so is slipstream one pulling quite free on the far side is the polymath towards the stand side is dragon lord and also right up with them is velmez on the heels of the leaders is silvery and they're not going too fast as they come down towards the first in the home straight the first of the eight flights and they're all safely over that with bron hallow the back marker coming down towards flight number two and copper coin in the orange colors disputes it with slipstream in the green colors on the far side the blue colors this side dragon lord these three virtually stride for stride silver is going to jump this in fourth and behind silvery towards the far side in the stripes is polymath behind this one uh, is uh, at this stage is velmeth behind velmeth runs double flight behind this one comes the favorite floristan in midfield at the moment then comes poker a school behind this, then comes Ultra Pontum, in the red colours Banjo Hill, then Camden Road, behind Camden Road is Bron Hallow, and the back marker passing the stands with a circuit to run is Royal Carlton. So there they go, out on their final circuit, mile and a half left to run, pretty tight up front, but on the inside, Slipstream, just the leader, from on the far side, Dragon Lord, no, virtually stride for stride, these two, right behind in third is the second favourite, that's Copper Coin, then comes Silvery, behind Silvery is Polymath, behind this one comes Velmez, then comes Floristan, the favourite, and Double Flight. That's the leading group as they go down and jump the first on the far side. This is flight number three, and they're all okay over that. A little bit of a mistake by Dragon Lord, but he's still up there disputing it with on the inside Slipstream. These two are stride for stride. Copper Coin moves easily in third, then comes the Grey, Silvery, right in touch in fourth. Behind this one, making ground towards the leaders all the time, is the flavoured Floristan as they jump that one. Floristan was a bit slow over that, but he's continuing in about sixth place. Also trying to get into a challenging position is Velmez. Going down towards the intersection of the course at the halfway stage, a mile left to run. And still up front, Dragon Lord leads. In second place in the green colours is Slipstream. Right behind in third is the grey Silvery, who disputes third place with Copper Coin. Then comes Floristan, Polymath. On the far side of this one comes Velmez. Velmez. Behind Velmez, Ultra Pontum's on the heels of the leaders. Then taking closer order is Bron Hallow, and behind Bron Hallow is Poker School. That's the order as they go down and jump flight number five, and a lovely jump by the leader in the blue colours. That's Dragon Lord, and he leads as they go towards the bend at the far end of the track. Slipstream is second on the inside, Copper Coin is third on the far side, and right behind in fourth is Silvery. That's the leading group with Floristan right up there looking for room on the inside. Here they swing round towards the home straight, and making significant progress on the heels of the leaders is Bron Hallow. Here they come round towards the home straight, and plenty going well at this stage, as they swing at the home straight with three flights left to jump. Dragon Lord the leader from Copper Coin and Floristan, then comes Silvery the Grey, and right behind is Bron Hallow. Then just lose Losing a little bit of ground now is Slipstream. This is three out. Copper Coin did the better jump there and now goes on. The one who made a mistake was the favourite Floristan and he's beginning to weaken. It's Copper Coin now who goes on by about four to five lengths. 
Silvery disputes second place with Dragon Lord. Then comes Bron Hallow, and these four seem to be clear. Camden Road is staying on to, from the rear. Here they come down towards the penultimate flight. Dragon Lord, the stand side, on the far side, Copper Coin. And just this side, it's Dragon Lord, the half brother to Collier Bay. On the far side, it's Copper Coin. Who's going to show the sprint finish? Copper Coin on the far side. Towards the stand side, it's Dragon Lord. Copper Coin just the leader as they come down towards the final flight. They're in the air together. Copper Coin jumps it the better from Dragon Lord in second. These two are well clear of Bron Hallow in third. It's Copper Coin on the far side who's beginning to assert. Half a furlong left to run and Copper Coin is coming away. But on the stand side, Dragon Lord fights back. This could be close. Dragon Lord might get up close home. Copper Coin and Dragon Lord, that's one for the judge. In third place, we had Bron Hallow. And in fourth, Camden Road. I think you're okay there, Roger. That was for Roger Curtis' next best copper coin, holding a renewed challenge from Dragon Lord, who just wouldn't go away, would he? No, it ran very well, didn't it? I'm sure um, Richard Rowe will be, be thrilled, because he could do with this horse. He's just running into form now. The judge there at Windsor has called for a photo, but I think we'll find him announced that, uh, or her, that uh, copper coin has held on there from Dragon, Dragon Lord. Yes, nice, nice double for Mick Fitz and for Nicky Henderson. Good day's work there, Grecian Dart and Copper Coin. Grecian Dart was going to be on that, but you were right going for a sporting one, <laughs> albeit yes. a loser. Give you the outcome of that in a moment. Uh, now, Wing Canton, we've got a, a, our smallest field of the day here. Richard Dunwoody takes over on Sissinghurst Flyer, who's going to be uh, disputing favouritism, one suspects here, with um, Fortria Rosie Dawn. These are the two form horses here in this mayor's only novices chase but there's the winner and a good uh, as you said a good day for nicky henderson and mick fitzgerald yes they're flying aren't they flying now we've got wing canton coming up next let's give you a show of betting before we go uh, live to the action yes wing canton the 150 there, novice chase. Just to remind you, Richard Dunwoody does ride Sissinghurst Fly instead of Andrew Thornton. And uh, his mount, Sissinghurst Fly, is favoured, 11 to 8. For Trier, Rosie Dawn is 6 to 4. 5, Salazi is a 9 to 2 chance. Number 4, Cologne Rivers, 12 to 1. And 2, Pearl's Choice Outsider, 14 to 1. We know how patient owners can be because Brian Clifford, the chap who owns Sissinghurst Flyer, won first time out earlier this season and he'd waited years and years for his first winner when the horse, uh, after unseating, won again. Can he win for the third time? Well, let's find out from Sissinghurst Flyer's trainer, Robin Dickin. Robin, Sissinghurst Flyer has been in great form um, this term. She's won two from three for you. Lovely big grey mare. Yeah, um, she's won novice handicaps and she's very well handicapped. And I'd be slightly nervous about her coming here today, basically £10 wrong with Venetia Williams's. Mm -hmm. And uh, the form Venetia's in with her horses, I mean, if they had long ears and a grey stripe, <laughs> they'd have a chance of winning. Uh, so I'd be nervous of hers. Uh, but she's a very good jumper, and although we're here £10 wrong with that one, it is a mare's only, and she's as nice a mare over fences as I've seen this time. And. Uh, Expect her to put up a very good performance. I think the other bonus too, you know, we've got Richard Dunwoody on top because Andrew's ankle still isn't quite right. Mm. So he's taken another day off, but Richard Dunwoody as a sub can't be bad. I also see it, I've got Richard Dunwoody up in a boys race. <laughs> That's rather a lovely thought. Uh, very best of luck here. Let's hope this mayor can win for you. Thanks, Robin. Thank you. All on Richard Dunwoody now. Thank you. <laughs> Robin Dickin talking about uh, Sissinghurst flyer there. Uh, receiving weight from Fortrio, Rosie Dawn, who gets another five pound allowance because Shane Kelly gets the five claim. Which one would you choose between these two, Roger? Um, I think I'd have to go for Sissinghurst Flyer um, until Fortrio, Rosie Dawn gets gets her act together, really. Um, does seem a, a fair sort of horse, um, but has been prone to, to the odd mistake, hasn't she? Can you see any of the other three getting into it? So let's see, nine to two, first time out this season? Uh, no, not without a run. So two horse race and you go for Sissinghurst Flyer. Yes, just. I think so. Yes, I think so. Richard Dunwoody taking over from Andrew Thornton who had a fall yesterday. But uh, they'll shortly be coming into line, so let's go. Oh, in fact, just before we go, Judge Smith has called the result at Windsor, I hear. 
Yes, and Copper Coin got the verdict there. Five to two, second favourite. Second five, Dragon Lord, six to one. And third was number two, Bron Hallow, 20 to one. 14 round. Thank you, Luke. The starter up on her rostrum there at uh, Wing Canton, about to call them in, so we can go back to Simon Holt. Rather amused, uh, Robin Dickens' comment about uh, Richard Dunwoody riding in a boys' race there, Bob. Three of the jockeys are certainly conditionals here, but there's a certain Jay Frost riding number five, Salatia. I'm sure Jimmy would uh, find it surprising to still to be described as a boy. Certainly one of the veteran members of the weighing room. Still riding well, riding for his father on Salatsi. For Tria, Rosie Dorn was just a bit um, reluctant to cross the course. She had to uh, get a lead eventually and uh, wasn't very cooperative on the way down. They're under starter's orders, they're off. Away then, two miles the journey this time, Cologne River and Sissinghurst Flyer, the first two as they race to the first, taken slightly downhill, can be a tricky fence, they all jump it safely, Cologne River, just the leader, tried in blinkers for the first time today with Robert Widger aboard, Sissinghurst Flyer under the deputising Richard Dunwoody in second, for Tria Rosie Dawn, Pearl's Choice and finally Salazzi as they head towards the second fence, one of three in the home straight. Well over a circuit in front of them, and it's Cologne River who shows them the way. From Sissinghurst Fly, the inside jump well there. For Trier Rosie Dawn with a nice clear view towards the outside from Pearl's Choice, and five lengths last to Salazzi. At the next, the leader just uh, fumbled going into that Cologne River. And now we've got almost four in a line right in front of the stands approaching the next. And they all jump it adequately. They come out uh, practically together, all four of them. So let's see the only one a little remote. But it's Cologne River that once again assumes the advantage from Sissinghurst Flyer on the inside. Between them in a noseband is Pearl's Choice. And then out wide is for Trier Rosie Dawn as they take this right-hand turn, and Salatsi still remaining last of the five. Along the side of the course now, and heading towards the water jump, and the pace looks quite a strong one, being set by Cologne River. A couple of lengths in front, approaching the water. A bit cold in there this afternoon. Salatsi was very careful at it in last place. Didn't fancy getting her hooves wet. I don't blame her. They're about to swing right, in, handed into the back straight now, and Cologne River continues to make it from Fortria, Rosie Dawn, Sissinghurst, Flyer and Pearl's Choice. The first down the back, a plain fence. And uh, at that one, Pearl's Choice was less than fluent. Drops back into fourth place. Cologne River having to be shaken up now to uh, try and hold on to the lead, but Fortria, Rosie Dawn is doing rather better on the outside and now takes over at an open ditch. And a good jump by Fortria, Rosie Dawn. Gained her three or four lengths over Cologne River there. And then Sissinghurst flyer towards the inside, followed by Salazzi and Pearl's Choice. Another plain fence for Tria Rosie Dawn. And just got in a bit close, but came up OK. A bad mistake there by Salazzi. Jimmy Frost calling on all his experience and sitting tight. And meanwhile, the leader's getting away from them as they head towards the last in the back straight. It's an open ditch for Tria Rosie Dawn. Sails over it. And, uh, and this time, Salazzi has fallen. Uh, giving Jimmy Frost quite a heavy fall there. The mare has got up all right and Jimmy is sitting up, so hopefully no damage has been done. But meanwhile up front, there's only one horse in the picture for Tria Rosie Dawn. She's gone a good 12 lengths clear of Sissinghurst Flyer, who's conceding plenty of weight to the leader. And then Pearl's Choice in third and a very remote fourth is Cologne River. Down towards the next downhill for Tria Rosie Dawn. Jumped it well. Sissinghurst Flyer likewise in second. Pearl's Choice continuing in third place at the one pace and then in last place Cologne River. Quite a long run till they jump the third last. Three up the straight left to go and for Tria Rosie Dawn with a good advantage over Sissinghurst Flyer who's got a big job on to close the gap on the leader who's still travelling strongly and the rider Shane Kelly looking round for dangers as he heads towards the final three fences. For Tria Rosie Dawn, a good jump there. That's one of them out of the way. Sissinghurst Flyer lands in second. Pearl's Choice comes to it in third place. The second last now for, for Tria Rosie Dawn. 
and uh, very safe and very sensible. Sissinghurst Flyer reached for it slightly in second, but Richard Dunwoody has accepted things. The last fence for the leader for Trier Rosie Dawn put us oh hit it hard and has unseated the rider there. It wasn't that bad an error, but the head went down and poor Shane Kelly didn't have much chance of staying on board. And Sissinghurst Flyer has been left clear to gain a very fortunate victory. And Sissinghurst Flyer comes home clear then from Pearl's Choice in second and Cologne River last of three finishes. You were quite right there, Roger, weren't you, Sissinghurst Flyer? <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame, though, isn't it? That, that horse has got stacks of abilities and it's, it's put in an almost faultless display of I jumping dared under say, no pressure. In the home straight, he jumped yeah. the first two in the home straight, and I thought he didn't even touch a twig on no, those two fences. No. He jumped superbly the whole way around. One mistake was at the final fence, and, and down that. she comes. Let's see yeah. it again. There's the uh, very lucky winner, the grey, Sissinghurst Flyer, down to the last. Yes, under no pressure. Yep, dives through didn't the really top make a terrible mistake, did she? No, nope, dives through the top and just didn't get a leg far enough out in front of her, did she? Shane Kelly hops off. He's OK. Disappointed. Richard and Woody, a wry <laughs> grin on his face. A, a chance ride and uh, a chance winning ride yes. for uh, Richard Dunwoody. Happy news for favourite backers. Yes, Bob. First, number one, Sissinghurst Flyer, 11 to 8 favourite. Second was number two, Pearl's Choice at 16 to 1. Five rand. So only a small field there at uh, Wing Canton. Difficult finding winners though. Favourite wins, somewhat luckily. We've got a big field next race at uh, Leicester uh, for the Barkby Selling Handicap Hurdle over two and a half miles. And uh, for a few clues to how to find the winner, let's go back and rejoin Rupert Bell. And, uh, that's a shrewd man, a good man to have on your side in a selling race. David Wintle, what's he got to say, Rupert? Well, we'll find out. Yes, uh, Robert Cooper singing your praises in selling races. Uh, but Southwest Express, is it going to be Express Express one today? We hope so. <laughs> yes. I think he's got a great chance. He, he's got a big each way chance. I'll be very disappointed if he's out the first four. He had a good pipe opener, didn't he, this uh, first run of the season? Plumpton, yes, he did, yes. No, he's very well. You know, he's ready. So hopefully uh, he'll do the business. It is a competitive yeah. race. One or two sort of whispers lurking around the uh, weighing room. Yes, it is very, you know, but uh, the ground's right. I think I'll walk around the course, the ground looks right. So hope for the best. And horses for courses, you know he runs well here at this level. Yes. So let's keep our fingers crossed. And I see you've got a lot of the owners here. Are they all, yes. get, are they all getting on? Yes. Yeah. Are you? No, I still have a bit each way, yes. Yeah, each way bet. OK, right, thanks very thank much, you. David. Well, David's off now to have an each way bet on South West Express. Let's, let's find out. In a moment or two, we will find out whether there's going to be a bit of each way value about South West Express, but a competitive one coming up shortly. Thank you, Rupert. Good to get uh, the views of David Wintle, but he was doing all the trainer thing, keeping his cars close to his chest. We'll hope for the best, keep our fingers crossed, all the things that you, <laughs> you, you tell us reporters, Roger. Yes, that's right, yes. Um, <laughs> um, David does always play his cards close to his chest, and um, I would think it, I'd probably oppose him with, with his old jockey, um, Tony Carroll. Oh, of course, yes, they, <laughs> they won many races together, Yes, that's together, right, they? yes, yes, yes. They he's both... turned into rather the same sort yes, of trainer. Yes, they both keep stum, don't they? <laughs> yes, and you suddenly see, you'll suddenly see a market move for one, 14 to 1 into 8 to 1, and uh, that's what happens with some of these David Wintle or Tony Carroll horses, so we'll keep a close eye on the betting when the uh, prices finally filter through, which I think they will be quite soon. Southwest Express is written by Jodie Mogford. This was the chap who Richard Pittman for a long time thought was a girl. <laughs> I had to produce him on the racing channel to say this is a man. But we have now got a betting show at Leicester. Yes, Bob, got joint favourites here. 10 Southwest Express and 11 Killing Time favourite there, 11 to 4. 12 Balmoral Princess, that's a 7 to 2 chance. 3 The Minders, 5 to 1. 4 Be Brave is a 6 to 1 chance. Got 3 of them on 10s, 2 Star Mover, 6 Apache Park and 13 Brookhampton Lane. Then it's uh, 12 to 1, number 7, Sweet Trentino. 14 to 1, about 5, Captain Marmalade. Number 1, Trade Wind is a 16 to 1 chance. That's 25 to 1, about 8, Northern Ace. 9, Crazy Horse Dancer. And it's 33 to 1, number 14, Parisian. 15, Orchard King. 19, Connell's Croft. And it goes on. 16, Silver Sumal is a 50 to 1 chance, uh, as is number 17, Rosevere. Same price about number 20, Fardy, and I've one to go, 18, Hustle and Bustle, 100 to 1.
Oh, he's finished. That was great. It was a comprehensive show. He loves, he, he, he likes the long price ones. It's yes, great. Well, well, I suppose on a day when there's 50 to 1 winners, Luke, Luke feels he's got to mention them. I think he's just, you know, he's earning his, earning his corn. But uh, it's rather interesting with David, David Wintle and Tony Carroll. Obviously, they used to, Tony Carroll used to write for David Wintle. Joint favourites, these two. Southwest Express and Killing Time. Yes, I don't know where else to look for a winner, I must say. Well, one of the longer priced ones, but it's going to be very, you've got to be pretty brave, haven't you? Was Tim Etherington sent down Be Brave, um, who's um, six to one. The Minder. I think we could pick six each here, Bob, and still not find the winner, couldn't we? Balmoral Princess has been uh, in pretty good form. Timmy Murphy. He had a terrible form fall earlier. In fact, he's given up the ride on that one after that nasty fall from the, from the pipe horse. Calvin McCormack, Calvin McCormack rides that one. I hope Timmy's okay. But uh, no real market moves. I think the bookmakers, all this chalking up prices 10 minutes before the off, it's rather gone by the by since, the, uh, since this was introduced. They started and they were much quicker. Leicester is one of the places where they've always put up the prices up very late. And we've only just got this show through and we've got no real market, market guidance, have we? No, there's, there's, there's not a move there at all, is there? But uh, Luke can tell us if there have been, uh, don't give us too many price changes, but uh, the, just the, the, meat and the, the meat of it. Uh, Luke, what's going on in the betting ring? Just because you're not keen, Bob, I'm very keen. 10, Southwest Express's favourite, joint, uh, was joint favourite, is now outright favourite, 3 to 1. 11, Killing Time is a 4 to 1. 12, Barrymore Princess, 9 to 2. 3, The Minder is a 6 to 1 chance, and it's 10 to 1, bar those. We must apologise, you may see the, uh, the picture of just blinking and breaking up every now and again. We're having a, what they call a lynx problem from the track to um, here. So, uh, uh, I'm not much of a technical maestro, but that's, that's what's been happening. There is a, there's, we've got a lynx problem, so the pictures are slightly on the blink. We apologise for that. But they're coming into line. 7 to 2 favourite at the moment is Southwood Express. We can go and join Graham Good. All walking in. Here we go. Well, they're all lined up. Goodness only knows why they're not going. Here we go. They're under starters' orders. They're off. Race away over two and a half miles and uh, quite a step on before they come to the first of the four flights. They have to jump on the home stretch for the first time round and Brooke Hampton Lane through on the inside under Adrian Maguire uh, takes an early lead with um, not that far away killing time looks like and up on the outside Northern Ace just a half a length behind these Fardy the outside of the mind up tucked away on the inside is Silver Sumal but they come down towards the first over which it'll be Brookhampton Lane that shows the way at the first now and uh, they jumped it safely all 20 of them Northern A sits in second place and then Killing Time going into third Silver Sumau the inside is racing four Star Mover is close to the action Tunnels Croft, Balmoral Princess in a midfield position Apache Park on the outside as they leap over the next come down towards the third and it's going to be Brookhampton Lane that has the call Orchard King making a bit of ground on the outside to share a second place now as they come to the third flight of hurdles slight mistake there midfield looks like uh, Southwest Express was not too fluent at that flight down towards the fourth and on the outside Orchard King has uh, come uh, with enough pace to take the lead goes on by about half a length to Brookhampton Lane in second. Sitting in third, we've got Northern Ace, and on the outside goes Apache Park. Silver Sumal and Fadi are behind these. Southwest Express sitting about seventh or eighth, just in front of the Minder, with Connors Croft the inside out wide, be brave. A half a length behind these uh, tracks Star Mover, whilst inside Star Mover is uh, Rosavar. Then comes Captain Marmalade. Sweet Trentino behind these. And the back markers uh, now include uh, Trade Wind, also Hustle and Bustle, and also towards the back at this stage, Balmoral Princess, and on the outside of Balmoral Princess is Parisian. Head down the back straight, 
and it's still Brookhampton Lane that shares the work here with Orchard King. Connells Croft is getting a bit closer now and Apache Park on the outside bunching in behind. Then we have Northern Ace with uh, making a stride or two on the very wide outside Fardy. They head down towards flight number six and Southwest Express is up in the firing line as well. The one that's starting to lose touch and getting behind halfway is Hustle and Bustle. But four stretched across the track for the lead now and they are Fardy, Southwest Express, Apache Park and on the inside Connells Croft. Only half a length behind these finds Brookhampton Lane trying to get going again. Silver Sumal, the minder starts to pick up but it's not Taunton. Then we have Fardy on the outside, Rosevar with a bit of a run. Balmoral Princess has been very quiet but starts to make ground too. Sweet Trentino can be given a chance now as they head to the last on the far side over which uh, B Brave comes through for a view of the front. B Brave and Connells Croft go one and two. Then into third place is a ridden Apache Park. Four is Southwest Express. Five Rossovar, six the Minder, seven Sweet Trentino. Balmoral Princess behind these looks as if his rider has lost his cap but they've got just over half a mile to go. B Brave under Russ Garrity, the outside of Connells Croft are the two that show the way as they continue the turn for home. Apache Park is in third place. They've got still more floor, four flights of hurdles to jump when they level up for home in the cellar. Rosavar is picking up from the back and then we've got Southwest Express and then Balmoral Princess picking up now down the centre of the track. Half a mile to get into this, four to jump. B Brave leaps it like a good one, the leader, to Connell Croft, the lightly weighted one in second place. Apache Park really being rousted along under Tim Ely, but that work paying dividends as Apache Park comes through uh, for a closing second as they come to the third last. B Brave, two lengths of the good over a hard ridden Apache Park. Then Connell Croft is in third place, and these have pulled a long way clear of Rosevar. They've got one more, two more flights of hurdles to take. B Brave lives up to his name, a length and a half of the good still over Apache Park. It looks like a head-to-head -head between these two as they take the second last where B Brave was more fluent than Apache Park. Connells Croft still holding on for third place. Rosevar behind these. Come down towards the uh, final flight now. On the left, the blinkered B Brave. On the outside in the yellow Apache Park. There's only a half a length in it. and It's going to be a struggle to the line. Balmoral Princess has come running through the, for a place yet again. Rosevar behind that and Connell Croft. But head to head they go. B Brave Apache Park. What a ding dong it is. Apache Park possibly. B Brave fighting back at the line. Apache Apache Park, be brave, a long way clear of Balmoral Princess, who is placed, and Rosevar, who comes home for. That was a war of attrition, and uh, I think the celebrations in the Ely household, because Tim Ely was the, uh, wanting, uh, the winning jockey. I see that the owner is also an Ely, so um, I think there might be a few celebrations there. Andy Street, whose horses have been in good form, a couple of winners last week. And a winner here just wore down Be Brave in the yes. shadow of the post. Yes, again, Tim, Tim Ely, hard at work, wasn't he, from a long way out. Um, paid dividends. And a long gap back to the uh, third horse, which was Balmoral Princess. Let's see the, the head-on angle. On the right of the picture in the yellow colours, Tim Ely there, flat to the boards on Apache Park, who's had a few chances. And... Uh, gosh, they're strung out for they two or like three flights of hurdles. Yeah, they look like they? they've been around here six times, didn't they? B Brave certainly is on the left, doesn't give way at all, B Brave, but just, just collared in the final few yards there by, by Apache Park. It is officially a photo, though. Good finish? Yes, yes, good finish, wasn't it? We knew it'd be hard to find the winner. <laughs> yes, that's right, yes. And wouldn't have picked them either. Let's go to Windsor. There's a uh, winning uh, jockey, Tim Ely, and the runner's done at the post at Windsor for this 2.10, the BDO Stoy Hayward Handicap Chase. Let's see if uh, Luke can give us a show, and all five here you can do, Luke. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bob. Joint favourites here, four Buckland Lad and one Robin's Pride. Joint favourites at two to one. Then uh, three to one, about two beyond our reach. Thirteen to two, five River Levin. And uh, three Macalinis, a twelve to one chance. Was fourteens, now twelves. Trainer's horses have been running, hasn't had that many winners, but they've been placed, they've been running into form. Is Gardy Grissel, Buckland Lad, an interesting one here, first time out. Um, and that one's the joint favourite with Robin's Pride, but what are your observations here, Roger? 
Um, yes, Cardi's, Cardi's horses, as you say, they have been, been running very well. Um, some of them have been running placed rather than winning, but they've all been running well. Um, I, I would, though I, I think that is the danger, I think I'd go with um, Ron Hodge's horse. Beyond Our Reach. Beyond Our Reach. Mm. Also having his first run of yes, the that's right. campaign. Three to one at the moment. The other joint favourite, Robin's Pride. Chris Popham, who's had a couple of runs, but hasn't managed to get round in two runs so far. No, no. no I, I think um, Beyond Our Reach, if, if he's fit, and, and he's by reach, and the, the only reach horses I've been involved with actually have come to hand quite quickly. So if this horse actually... Is, is fit on the day. I think he'll be good enough. Chris Popham's horses seem to be in, in quite good form. There's Beyond Our Reach in the uh, orange colours, ridden by Jay Harris, who's ridden uh, quite a few winners for Ron Hodges. Bit of money for the outsider. Macellini was uh, opened at 10, went out to 14s, it's come into uh, 11 to 1. Tom George has also been in quite good form, had a good day at uh, Utoxeter the other day. Does particularly well at Utoxeter. There is Macellini. Written by Carl Llewellyn, who's had, he hasn't had a tragic day, but he had rather an unfortunate start to the afternoon. Golden Fawn yes, he's, left he's, him behind. Yes, they're two horses that haven't been the easiest of rides. Now, and another one later on. But they're off and running. Here's Derek Thompson. So, here we go. Two miles and 12 fences, and all five runners well into their stride. River Leven and Robin Spride, the first two to go on. From on the far side, Matt Cellini, all safely over the first. And a good jump by Buckland Lad jumps up to the front. The back marker at this early stage is beyond our reach. Here they come up the home straight for the first time, coming towards fence number two, and uh, only about three lengths between the five runners as they jump that. They're all safely over that. Beyond our reach was a bit sluggish over it. Coming down towards the next, and on the far side, Macellini disputes it with River Leven. In third is Robin's Pride, a close fourth is Buckland Lad, and the back marker is beyond our reach. That's the order as they jump what will be the last next time round. Here they come past the stands with a complete circuit in front of them, and Macellini and Carl Llewellyn take them along, and they're going a good clip. River Leven in the red sleeves runs second. Third in the yellow sleeves is Robin's Pride. In fourth is Buckland Lad, and the back marker is beyond our reach. That's the order as they go out with one circuit in front of them. Swinging left-handed, going down towards fence number four, which is a plain one, the first on the far side. And Macellini leads by about a length. In second place is River Leven. A close third towards the outside is Robin's Pride. Right behind in fourth is Buckland Lad, and still the back marker beyond our reach. Going down towards the first on the far side. Three horses virtually in line as they jump it. And a good jump in the middle of the track by River Leven, who now leads by half a length from Robin's Pride in second as they go down towards the water. Running third is Macellini. And jumping this in fourth is, and just clipped his heels there, in fourth is Buckland Lad, and about four lengths adrift. Fifth and last is beyond our reach. Going down towards the first of two open ditches, they'll be jumping in this. River Leven and Stephen Wynn's going to give the five runners a lead over it. Pops over in the lead. In second place, just on the far side, Robin's Pride. Here comes Macellini on the inside. In between these two is Buckland Lad. And still a gap of five to six lengths to beyond our reach. Going down towards another plain one, fence number seven. A good jump there by Buckland Lad. Goes up to dispute it with River Leven and also Macellini. One who made a slight mistake there was Robin's Pride. But he's getting back in touch with this leading trio. The one who's struggling is beyond our reach. Going down across the intersection of the course as they jump the next one. And uh, up front, it's Buckland Lad who has the lead. From in second place, River Leven. In third place is Macellini. And a close fourth is Robin's Pride. That's the order as they go down towards the bend at the far end of the course with over half a mile left to run. On the inside, River Leven. Up on the outside is Buckland Lad. A close third now is Robin's Pride. And right behind in fourth is Macellini. That's the leading quartet. And there's only three lengths between these four as they come up the home straight with four left to jump. The first one in the home straight is the last of the ditches. And as they come towards it, River Leven the leader. On the far side, Buckland Lad comes up to dispute it. Right behind in third is Robin's Pride. And a close fourth is Macellini. This is four out. This is the last ditch. And a beautiful jump by the the leader, River Leven, but on the far side, Buckland Lad goes very well. Under pressure now in third is Robin's Pride, and getting reminders is Macellini, a gap to beyond our reach. This is the third from home. 
and the leader over that is Buckland Lad. Buckland Lad now goes on under Barry Fenton, the leader by a couple of lengths. River Leaven under pressure in second, a gap to Robin's Pride in third, Macellini is fourth. Two left to jump in this handicap chase. Buckland Lad pops over in the lead, two in front of River Leaven in second, and uh, they've got to go to catch Buckland Lad, who comes down to the twelfth and final fence. He's seemingly going the best. Right behind, though, in second, trying to challenge again is River Leaven. Here they come down towards the last. Buckland Lad, the leader, from River Leaven, two lengths back in second. A bit of a mistake by Macellini, but he's staying on in third. On the run in, half a furlong left to run. And it's Buckland Lad. He's only two in front. Macellini's coming with a good run. So is River Leaven this side. Three horses virtually in line. And this is going to be close. That's a photo. Very close. Buckland Lad might just have got it from Macellini. That's another one for the judge. Oh, you always get these thrilling races in uh, thr th thrilling finishes <laughs> at Windsor, don't you, over the jumps? <laughs> what a cracking race with the three in line. Mm. Only for another hour and 30 minutes, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> Buck yes. and Ladd and Macellini. <laughs> and the winner for Gardy Grissel, yes. it seems. Yes, lovely. That's how clear. Yep. Well, we've got, I think it's Judge Smith in action there. He's had a busy day with his little camera. <laughs> Yes, that'll be good enough as a winner for Barry Fenton, I would think, isn't it? He's called it the judge there, Buckton Lad. Macellini. We will in fact we'll catch up with they won't be Luke. He's good. Luke's on his Luke's on his way down here. And uh, we've got Darrell Williams taking over very generously for the next half hour or so. And I think we've got a result also to come at Leicester, but uh, he can give you the latest. Thank you, Robert. The Windsor result called, as you say. Buckland led the winner there was 13 to 8 favourite, and second horse, Macalini, sent off at 11 to 1. And over at Leicester, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 are in for the seller. Apache Park, home in front at 12 to 1. Be Brave, the second, was a 9 to 1 chance. Back in third, number 12, Balmoral Princess, at 9 to 2, and 17, Rose Veer. Finished in fourth. That one returned at 50 to 1. We said last time we were at Leicester there may be a few celebrations in the uh, Ely household because Tim Ely has uh, won the previous race on Apache Park, owned by Mark Ely, and both Ely's are with uh, Rupert. In indeed they are, yes. Cause of celebration, Tim. Any, any more pressure riding for your brother when he when, getting that horse to win Apache Park? Well, it's been 12 months since we've had him and the pressure's been getting a bit more and more. And I, I mean, the horse has he's ran, well, every time he's ran some better races and some not so good races, but, you know, it's just a ge delight to ride a winner for your brother. I, um, I rode him at Warwick last time. I turned down a ride of John Mackey's Northern Maestro to ride for him because I really want to win for my brother. And, Thankfully today it's come good. Uh, and Mark, um, were you never lost faith in your brother? No, not at all. How can you lose faith in your brother after all? He's tried hard, Andy's tried hard, everyone's tried hard and we needed a little bit of luck to change us and today's done it. And, well, I'm delighted totally. Pleased for me and my brother. And for you, your first ever winner as an owner? Oh, fantastic. Show me the champagne bar. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I'm, I'm pleased. So brotherly love. Uh, no, so yeah, like... we're friends again now. Yeah, we're friends. <laughs> were you thinking of booking Tony McCoy when he comes back? <laughs> Um, he has mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> but not now, not now. No, no, no. Champion jockey again in my eyes. <laughs> OK, we're going to have a good celebration. Enjoyed it. Were you worried about the photo at all? I mean, no, you... no, no. Well, I, well, I was. It. I mean, on the television and I looked across, I thought I'd won by a neck. I mean, when it takes a long time like that, it's a bit nail-biting because I want the result my way. But thankfully, it was right. And uh, so this is a good day in the Ely household and it's going to be a good night as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, my mother and dad, they haven't come today. Normally, they come and that's probably him on the phone now. I mean, he, he'll be ecstatic. OK. Well, well done to both of you. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you very much. Cheers. OK. We've got to go now to Wink Canton, where I think we've got a show. And there's the favourite as they go down. The Cockatoo, top of the market here. 11 to 10 chance uh, from 5 to 4. It is then 3 to 1, number 4, Kinahalla. Has been uh, 7 to 2 and 11 to 4, you can see. 11 to 2, number 5, Ekeus on the slide from 9 to 2. On 12 to 1 is 7, Coup's Promise. It's now 14 to 1 out from 10, number 1, Dyseborg, 16 to 1, number 2, Kilmington, and also number 3, Sharp Tyne. Warm priced, uh, warm favourite here is the Cockatoo. <laughs> Excuse me, the Cockatoo, 11 to 10, trained by Robert Allner. I was at uh, Southall a couple of runs ago, 
They ran in the first race of the day. I think there was a monumental gamble on this one, and it obliged, jumped very well, and has run well since. So the obvious form choice here, the cockatoo. What do you think? Do you think it would be, be the obvious um, forecast to have the cockatoo and coos promise? Oh, yeah. Well spotted. Makes the mind boggle, doesn't it? Yes, the cockatoo and coos would be, could be a difficult one for Simon Holt here. But Kinahalla is the, probably the logical choice for the forecast slot, do you think? Um, yes, and, and Echius. Um, that, that, to me, always runs well. Or, or, I don't think that would be far away. I think the cockatoo is the one to beat, though. A jockey to keep an eye on here is Barry Keneary, who rides Kinahalla. He's impressed me this season. Have a close look at him, Roger. Rides very well. Last look at the betting. Any further news? <laughs> Uh, no, still getting 11 to 10, the Cocker 2, the favourite, has been well backed, 3 to 1, Kinahalla and 11 to 2, Bar. Let's go and join Simon Holt. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> he spluttered <laughs> as they begin to line up then. The Cocker 2, who ran well here the other day, looks a worthy favourite. Joe Tizard riding this afternoon. I think Andrew Thornton rode him around here last time. Andrew's taking a day off. And here we go. They're lining up. And now asked to take a turn. quite sure what's wrong with that line but uh, the starter's not happy ever the perfectionist clearly they've only got three miles and a furlong and a half to race oh, yeah. they're under starter's orders they are off and eventually de cyborg was the first to jump away on towards a line of three fences up the straight over two circuits in front of them de cyborg Ikeus, and the cockatoo as they take the first Kinahala was next Coos promise out wide with Kilmington and sharp tine towards the inside on towards the second De Cyborg good jump from the cockatoo and Ikeus sharp tine Coos promise Kinahala and Kilmington as they take number three now and the leader just put himself right going into that De Cyborg and Jer Supple lands at two or three lengths in advance of sharp tine and Ikeus and then the Cockatoo in fourth position, followed by Coos Promise, Kinahala and the Grey Kilmington as they take a right-hander. Heading towards the water jump, which is uh, number four of 21 in all that they have to jump this time. And De Cyborg at what looks to be a reasonable pace to Sharp Tyne in second, Ikeus, the Cockatoo. So they take the water jump and the Cockatoo wasn't too clever at that followed by Kilmington, the last two, Kinahala and Coos Promise, as they begin the run down the back. De Cyborg, under a 12-stone welter burden here, making the running still to Ikeus towards the outside. Big jump, uh, less good jump by Sharp Tyne, who uh, was down on his nose in third position towards the inside under Robert Widger, picked him up well. Kilmington follows from the and then Kenahala and Coos Promise. This is an open ditch and Sharp Tyne has, uh, seems to have suffered a lapse of confidence at the last two fences. Really had a, a good look at, into the ditch at that fence and uh, came out of it just about last. On towards another plain one. De Cyborg over in front from Ikeus. And then the Cockatoo from Kilmington, Kinahala, Coos Promise and uh, Sharp Tyne has dropped away to be last. Another open ditch on the far side, the leading group all take it well, but they're getting a bit strung out now, and it's De Cyborg by about three or four lengths to Ikeus. Uh, sharp remind reminders for Sharp Tyne in rear. It's just uh, not picking up at this stage as they swing right-handed and begin a downhill run. The fence on the side of the course coming up, and De Cyborg intent on making this uh, a good test. A good uh, six or eight lengths clear now of Ikeus in second place. 
as they jump this one, Leader skips over it. The Cockatoo, a good jump into third there from Kilmington and Kinahala. And then a gap to Coos Promise and a little shorter margin then to Sharp Tyne, who's under pressure. Straightening up, about to pass their departure point then. And on now towards fences 10, 11 and 12 in the straight. And it's Desiborg trying to make every yard of the running. It seems Ekius, the second horse on the inside. And then out wide, the mare Kinahala, the cockatoo, the favourite, and green and white, the grey Kilmington has moved up a little bit as they take that one. Coos Promise and Sharp Tyne remain the last two. Another plain one. The middle one up the straight on this circuit, and the leader really stood off that. Desai Borg, a fast leap from Ekius in second. As they take the next, the one where the leader departed. So Dramanda Cockatoo has departed this time. I was going to say the leader to part in the last race and the favourite down there, the Cockatoo. That fence uh, taking a few casualties this afternoon. They've got a circuit to go and uh, Joe Tizard up on his feet all right and the Cockatoo apparently unharmed cantering after the other runners. Not with a great deal of enthusiasm but they swing along the side of the course once again, the remainers the remainder rather and De Cyborg by only two to three lengths now to Ekius. Coos Promise in third and then Kinahala. A gap to Kilmington who was uh, hampered by the Cockatoo at that uh, fence and Kilmington was nearly down and has unseated the rider at the water jump. Nodded badly and Owen Burrows went out the side door as they now run down the back straight and uh, up front De Cyborg almost joined by Ekius as they approach this next plane fence. Good jump by Ekius there. Coos Promise up into third from Kinahala is being pushed along, and then Sharp Tyne is the only other one now as they run towards an open ditch. And it's Ekius the inside of De Cyborg as they approach this one. They both take it well enough. Coos Promise uh, missed it out, rather guessed in third. Kinahala in fourth, and Sharp Tyne is jumping very ponderously in rear. Two more to take in the back straight then. And De Cyborg and Ekius, they're just beginning to draw away from the other two a little bit. Coos Promise, a good six or seven lengths down, maybe a bit more now in third. And Kinahala, not making much impression at this stage. Meanwhile, the front two head towards the last open ditch, and De Cyborg came out of this one the better from Ekius. Ekius, a pretty resolute galloper, the second horse, should keep going. Coos Promise back in third. And then uh, Kinahala struggling on in fourth place. And then a long way back to Sharp Tyne. De Cyborg then has uh, gone away again from Ekius. And uh, then both Coos Promise and Kenahala trying hard to get back on terms. Could be quite a war of attrition this up the straight. They went quite fast early. It'll take some seeing out. At the fourth last, De Cyborg who's made so much of the running. Keeping going, gamely in front. Four, five lengths clear of Ekius in second. Then Coos Promise and Kinahala as they swing this final turn. Sharp Tyne only just coming to the bend. And it's De Cyborg with 12 stone on his back. It'll be a very game effort indeed if he can hang on. But both Coos Promise and Kinahala are running on well now with Ekius on the inside struggling to muster any more speed. Down towards the final three fences then. And it's quite a wide open race with all getting a little bit tired now. De Cyborg, Kinahala the outside, Coos Promise and Ekius over that one. De Cyborg trying desperately to hold them all off. He's still got three lengths on them. Kinahala now goes into second place at the second last De Cyborg is jumping, is keeping him going Kinahala trying hard to bridge the gap in second place, drawing closer, the final fence coming up De Cyborg by two lengths coming to it a good jump again, Kinahala's got two and a half lengths to find on the running and getting there slowly but surely but can she get there in time De Cyborg's out on his feet, Kinahala coming home the stronger and Kinahala edges ahead in the final 50 yards to win from De Cyborg oh just ran out of steam second unlucky third coup's promise then he kiss and sharp time well good race there to cyborg looked like winning for a long way but uh, we've got to get on now oh, straight over to leicester for their 230 only four runners go to post but uh, there is a show through we can get that now and cap and ray is the on favorite here although has eased from four to seven to four to six as they come back for kamitroff who's now two to one from nine to four Six, uh, six to one number four, Bally Line, and 50 to one number one, Cyborg to Beaufay. That one now written by Graham Bradley, the favourite Cap and Ray, eight to 11. Wincanton, the SP, three to one second favourite, Kinahalla, the winner. 
to Cyberg, 16 to 1 in second. Well, there in vision is Kamatrov, trained by Henry tonight, and she is with Rupert Bell now talking about this horse's chances. Well, looks to be a tall order to beat Cap and Rye, but Kamatrov, on his best form, he's a really good horse. Yes, he was a very good horse when Simon Christian had him, and then he's had a few training setbacks since. He's in great form at the moment. He may just need another run. Um, we love having him in the yard, and we're very honoured to train him this year, and I hope he'll run well. What's the feeling? Do you think he's, got a, he's showing his old sparkle again, do you think? Yeah, he's definitely coming back. And he's only eight, so he's got his whole life ahead of him. An exciting horse to have. And do you think then you can beat Cap and Rye, or you just think uh, his day will come maybe later on in the season? I'm inclined to think that Camatross Day will come another day. I think Cap and Ray is a very good horse, but uh, we'll certainly be trying. Good luck. Thank you. I don't know about you, Roger, but I think he's the value of the race, Camatross. Yes, he, he surely is the, he's the only one that's likely to, to bustle up Cap and Rye, isn't he? Um, I must say, uh, I'd go with the favourite, but I, I wouldn't back on Son. <laughs> no way, you couldn't, but he's, he's, he's been very impressive, hasn't he? Yes. And, you know, win, it, win at Cheltenham, but he did just struggle to get home, I thought, last time at Cheltenham. Looked like he was going to win, but uh, they're coming under orders, so we'll go straight over to course, commentator there, Graham Good. Thanks very much, Luke. Lining up for this uh, 49ers Mallard Pawnbrokers Handicap. £10,000 on offer, runners four. If you're an owner and looking in this afternoon and you've got a two and a half mile handicap chaser on good ground, good to soft ground. Excuse me, Mr. Trainer. Did we enter? That's about it. Lining up, coming in again after a fashion. Kamitrov could make it. They're under starters there. orders. They're off. Head away down towards the first of 15 fences, and it's Kamitrov on the inside of Bally Line, striding out with uh, a lot of vigour towards the first fence, which they're all over safely. Cyborg, or Cyborg de Beaufort, the outside, and Cape and Ray just at the back of the pack. They swing right-handed and across to the open ditch, and it's Kamitrov who has the edge here, comes to it, measures it well. Cyborg de Beaufort jumped well as well, the outer. Bally Line, Brendan Powell just had to encourage the horse to start makes a line of three and they show the way to cape and ray who's fourth of four certainly not hanging about here but it's uh, kamitrov who probably just has the edge the stables edredon bleu won the race last year by a bold front running display kamitrov probably just has the edge here to bally line but uh, seaborg de beaufet on the outside and within half a length we have uh, cape and ray come down towards fence number four and uh, the top weight, Seaborg de Beaufort has the edge here and clearly Brad is very anxious to let this one stride on. Bally Lyon sits with uh, Kamitrov and the 50 to 1 outsider has a good look at the fence, measures it well, gets away well and showing a lot of enthusiasm and sparkle to come clear of the pack as they come down towards fence number 5. Brank outside of this, Seaborg de Beaufort has the edge to Kamitrov, the inside of Bally Lyon. Crossing the next, and don't these French horses jump well? Cibor de Beaufort has it to Bally Line in second place. Kamitrov back in third now, but still a half in front of Cape and Ray. Come up past the Seine with a circuit to go in this 49ers Mallard Pawnbrokers handicap and the green jacket of the top weight Cibor de Beaufort lead. Bally Line is in second, and then uh, Kamitrov is in third, and then Cape and Ray is in fourth, and they start the run to the back straight. They have six fences to jump on that stretch of the track, starting with a water jump, then a ditch, and then four plane. Seaborg de Beaufort by about uh, three parts of a length to the wide-running Bally line as they cross the water. Oh, and a bad mistake there by Kamitrov. Dropped his hind legs in the water and drops out to be fourth of four. Head down towards fence number seven, the ditch. Seaborg de Beaufort has it by a length and a half to Bally line by a length and a half to Cape and Ray, by a length and a half to Kamitrov. The next four they take are all plain fences. Seaborg de Beaufort has it to Bally Line in second and then Cape and Ray bidding for a hat trick in third place and closing in and jumping well. Kamitrov just starting to lose touch after that mistake. Now detached by about four lengths, taken on early. And they've got three more to take on the back straight. And it's Seaborg de Beaufort leading, comes to it, takes it well. 
Valley line the outside. Uh, Cape and Ray Tanya Dobbin have been very quiet on that one. Let's have a peek over the shoulder there to see what's happened to Kamitrov. And Kamitrov is trying to get back into it, but still the rank outside the leads with Kamitrov rushed to the top of that one and uh, might get a reminder soon. They go to the last on the far side. It's Seaborg de Beaufet with Bally Line the outside sitting one and two. Separated only by about half a length, and the length and a half behind these comes Cape and Ray. A gap then of four, five, possibly six lengths opens up to Kamitrov. They come to the ditch at the top of the hill. And for the first time, Seaborg de Beaufet was out jumped, and that uh, honour goes to the Scottish Raider Bally Line. They're one and two. Then we have Cape and Ray just sitting on their heels in third, and Kamitrov is coming back for more. They come to the top of the home run. They've got three to take, and it's uh, Seaborg de Beaufet the inside of Bally Line. Cape and Ray gets the split between these two, and again Tony Dobbin looks round to see Jim Collity shoveling the coal on. Here we are, three out. Cape and Ray takes the lead now. Cape and Ray by an easy half length to a ridden uh, Bally Line in second. Kamitrov is very game, is plugging on, is gone third. Seaborg de Beaufet is back in four. They come down towards the second last. And it's Cape and Ray who just has the edge of the inside. Bally line the outer and Kamitrov is coming back to be within a length of the lead two out. Make that two lengths. But uh, nods on landing and all but pass company with Jim Cullity. That puts pay to his change chances. It's Cape and Ray with a clear unassailable lead if it wasn't for the final fence. Still to negotiate but he's jumped perfectly so far. Cape and Ray to Tony Dobbin. They come to the last. Gets away well to Bally line over in second. And then jumping in third is Seaborg de Beaufet. Fourth of the four is an ease down Kamitrov, but money for turning up. And as they race up towards the line, the progressive Cape and Ray is clear of his field and coming home by a comfortable 12 to 15. He's down at the line. Cape and Ray is the easy winner to Bally Line in second and Seaborg de Beaufet an honourable third. Cap and Ray continuing his good run. That's three from four this season. But uh, further ado, we're straight off to Windsor. Racing coming thick and fast now. There, 2.40. This is a mare's only handicap hurdle over two miles. Um, slightly disappointing turnout, Roger. Only four runners. Um, yes, I think the way Hart's been running, it, 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 it absolutely ran away, didn't it, at um, Haydock last time. And I suppose people are just a little concerned about taking it on. She, she seemed to have had her chances before. Um, but this season, I, I rode in the race when she won at Stratford, and uh, you know, she seems very progressive this year. Mm, well, I thought that after she'd won the first, um, I took it on at um, Haydock and got to her between the last two, um, and she just ran straight away. Well, I think she's sure to be favourite, but um, let's have a look at the market. Not just favourite, uh, very warm odds on favourite, in fact. Uh, she's in at four to seven, Luke, number one, Hart. It's two to one, number two, Queen's Ride. Six to one out from fives. Number three, Miss Penny Hill, and the complete outsider is number four, Rose Hall, who stands at 25 to 1. Didn't it? Give you the Leicester result, Cap and Ray in the end, uh, proving to be a 4 to 5 winning favourite. Opened at 4 to 7. 4 to 5 was the returned SP. Bally line at 7 to 1 in second. Well, we're not going to be boring and tip odds on, are we? Let's, let's go for something else. Queen's Ride. <laughs> Everything Henry Dale has been running has been needing a run. That one's had a run, but uh, that was at Toast, a completely different course. Mm, yes, um, Steve Wynn riding for him. Um, I'd be I'd be scratching around if I'm trying to to oppose Hart, but I suppose if you were going to stick one in the forecast, it would have to be that one, wouldn't it? Yeah, King's Ride. He hasn't really taken off King's Ride. I thought he was going to be the sort of looked like being the next strong girl for a while. Well, didn't, didn't they? they? Yes, every, everybody had their King's Ride, and when they when they were youngsters, everyone said how good they were going to be, and a lot of them just haven't really ever progressed. No. Let's look at some of We've got an Irish horse here. Sounds a real Irish name, doesn't it? A. Saddick. <laughs> yes, it's, it's very, very Irish. Yes, I don't know, Mr. Saddick, I must say. Um, obviously, Tony Martin knows his way around. Yeah, well, see, that one normally, normally has um, headgear on. Hasn't today. The other one there is Rose Hall. That one, not particularly. There's a favourite in shot there. Liam Cummings. He's picked up really well, Liam. Hasn't he? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And Jamie Goldstein on Missing Pilkington had his, his first winner at Plumpton yesterday, around his old man's favourite course. I was going to say, so, he yes, read a few right. for you, Ray, around there, <laughs> yes, didn't he? just a few, yes. The only man brave enough to push all the way down the hill at Plumpton. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> yes. Well, 
Well, we just had news through that uh, Mick Fitzgerald, who's been in the wars recently, will not be riding in the last two races. Took a fall earlier on in the afternoon. He's obviously still a bit sore. Took a crashing fall yesterday at Plumpton on uh, Lightning Lad. So, hope there's nothing too serious. But it shouldn't be too long now before we're on the way here. As usual, I got it wrong. He didn't fall earlier on. He's just not feeling particularly well, probably due to that fall yesterday. Well, we can go over to Windsor now, and our commentator, Derek Thompson. Thanks, fellas. And Mick Fitzgerald had a, a good day anyway. He's had two winners today on the last day's National Hunt Racing. That age Sadik, by the way, is a guy called Ettrick Sadik. He's Cypriot-born, but he was based in Ireland. He's now at Kidderminster. Tom Martin rides in the green and yellow diamonds. It'll be Tom's one and only ride under National Hunt rules at Windsor. That's for certain. Now, can Miss Penny Hill do it? Can Rose Hall spring a surprise? Or will Hart pull off the hat-trick in the colours of uh, Chris and Shirley Brasher? Chris, the former Olympic gold medalist, and his wife Shirley, a very good tennis player as well. And Liam Cummins, who's riding very well. Good value for that three pounds on board trainer Henrietta Knight. They got down to the post in good time, but as you can see, it's now post time. It's 2.40, and I think uh, Bill Reese will say, come on, guys, line up, let's get this race off and running. bitterly cold day here today. Not a bad crowd, but not that big considering it's the last meeting ever to be run under National Hunt rules here. You'd think there'd be a lot of old timers wanting to, you know, dig up a bit of turf and all that sort of stuff, but uh, not too big a crowd. Anyway, they're being called in. Four runners being called in. They're under starter's orders. They're off. And here we go with two miles in front of them this time. Let's see who's going to take them along in the early stages. There's not much pace on early on. Queen's ride the grey on the far side. In the black colours, Rose Hall. Running quite free in the green and yellow is Miss Pennyhill. The back marker of the four is the favourite, Hart. Here they come down towards the first of the eight flights. They'll be jumping in this Omega Mares Only handicap hurdle. This is the first. And they're all safely over that with the favourite, the back marker at this very early stage. They're still going pretty sedate pace as they come down towards flight number two. The leader possibly under sufferance is Miss Penny Hill in the green and yellow diamonds. On the far side, the grey Queen's Ride. Between the two is Rose Hall, and the back marker as they jump it is Hart. All four runners safely over the first two. So here they come past the stands with a complete circuit in front of them. And Miss Penny Hill leads from in second place now Queen's Ride, the grey on the far side. In third is the outsider, Rose Hall. And bringing up the rear, the red-hot favourite, Hart, who's on to the hat-trick. So, passing the stands with a circuit in front. And Miss Penny Hill and Tom Martin take them along. Second place now on the inside is Queen's Ride, Stephen Wynn. In third in the black and white is Rose Hall, Jamie Goldstein, and still the back marker, the red-hot favourite Hart and Liam Cummins. They've quickened it up a little bit as they go down the far side and go towards flight number three of the eight they'll be jumping in this race. And still Miss Penny Hill, the leader, the by about five lengths, and the other three disputing second place on the inside as they come to it is Queen's Ride, then comes Rose Hall, and uh, just on the outside is the favourite Hart. All safely over that, going down towards flight number four, coming towards the halfway stage in this 2.40 race here at Windsor. And the leader, Miss Penny Hill, and the other three right behind. The favourite heart now takes closer order to go second. Queen's Ride just third as they jump it, and just fourth, and very close up is Rose Hall. So they're beginning to close up on the leader, Miss Penny Hill, and there's now only two lengths between the quartet as they go towards the intersection of the course with just over three quarters of a mile left to run. And just the leader, Miss Penny Hill, but the other three right behind in second, third and fourth. Second in the yellow colours is Hart, third in the light blue is Queen's Ride. And just be niggled at now by Jamie Goldstein as the outsider, Rose Hall. They go in a good clip now as they go down towards the next. And uh, Miss Penny Hill being joined on the far side by Hart. They're in the air together. These two now opening up a gap of about two lengths to Queen's Ride, who's been ridden along in third. Rose Hall is fourth. Making the bend at the far end of the track with half a mile left to run. And going through on the inside is the favourite Hart. On the outside in second is Miss Penny Hill. Third is Rose Hall. And the back marker is Queen's Ride. But still only two and a half, three lengths between the four runners. Here they come round towards the home straight with three flights of hurdles left 
have to jump. And it's Hart and Liam Cummins, the favourite, seemingly going the best of the quartet at this stage. Miss Pennyhill is a close second. Third towards the outside, beginning to stay on again, is Queen's Ride. And a very close fourth is Rose Hall. Here they come up the home straight. This is three out. The favourite pings it, pops over in the lead, and goes four clear now. Hart now beginning to go clear, the favourite. There's a gap, and a lengthening gap developing to the second horse. That's now Rose Hall, who's been ridden along. Under pressure is Miss Penny Hill, and a close fourth on the outside of these three is Queen's Ride. But there's only one horse in it at this stage, as they come down towards the second last, and that's the favourite Hart. She's going for the hat-trick. This is two out. Gets a bit close to it, but she's okay. And uh, Liam Cummins looks round. He's about, uh, ooh, 12. Make it 15 lengths, if you want, to Rose Hall, who's winning the race for second place. But there's only one horse in it as they come down towards the eighth and final flight. And it's Hart, the favourite, going for the hat-trick. This is the last. She is over safely, pops over, and this is another lovely performance. In second place is the outsider, Rose Hall, who's running a big race in second. But this is a good performance. It's three out of three for Hart, and she's doing it in the best possible way from the Henrietta Knight stable with Liam Cummins on board. Hart is the winner, and very impressive as well. In second place is Rose Hall. Staying on to be third is Miss Penny Hill. Fourth, Queen's Ride. Well, Hart keeping an unbeaten record there. Rated 93 at the moment. I think she'll be going up a bit now. Yes. Um, she's done it nicely enough. I'm not quite sure what she's beaten. I think... Um, not a... Yes, Jamie Goldstein was off the bridle for at least a mile, wasn't he? And stayed on for second. So um, I don't think that'd be too hard on her for that. Well, a man I think who would have even won on that horse is Mark Richards. And he's at uh, Windsor reporting for us. And he's talking to Barry Fenton now. Well, Barry, a little bit of an up and down day for you so far. Uh, picked up a four-day holiday on Dragon Lord in our third race, and uh, well, the horse has run a cracking race. That's right, Mark. I mean, the horse has first run over hurdles, um, jumped a bit, and obviously throughout. Um, in front, going to the second last, felt I had the upper hand. It landed two lengths down after the second last, giving him a couple of smacks going down to the last. Felt I had it in the bag again, going to the last, and just jumped as slow again. Ended up two lengths down again and give him five cracks of the line. I mean the horse has responded to every smack I've given him, tried his heart out. Just at the end of the day he got beat through being a bit novice over his jumps and unlucky enough to pick up a four day ban for my efforts. Well that was a bit of an unfortunate uh, start but they didn't take long in getting things right because our very next race, uh, nice win there on Buckland Lad. That's right, he'd done it very well. Um, Speaking to Mr. Grizel beforehand, he felt he might have just needed a bit. But he's jumped so well, you know, I was able to sit on him and let him travel. And he made three lengths at every jump. Idled a bit when he got to the front, then after the last, and ended up receiving another caution for my stick. Um, a bit of an up and down day. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly the old horse looked as though he had it in the bag, actually, after going to the last. I was surprised how close the second horse got to you. Would that just be a case of needing the run? Um, yeah bit of needing the run and just he just idled a bit when he got to the front I mean I thought I've seen the, the second horse come to me and I thought oh he's just going to shoot past me here but he's left him get the head down and the next thing the old horse has stuck his head out and tr really tried for me he looks like a real game sort one that uh, ought to go in again for you that's right definitely definitely he'll win more races this year in our last race you ride Dragon King uh, went on him earlier on in the season and uh, also he's fairly consistent these days isn't he that's right he's a game little horse um, he won around here two runs previous um, over two miles and felt that day that he'd probably be better off over two and a half which it is today um, I think he only got up to win ahead the last day you know the w second horse has quickened away from him up the straight and he's kept putting his head out for me all the way up and just got up in the line so hopefully he'll go close here in the last well very best of luck and uh, keep that stick down for the last race now I'll try to thanks Mark that was Barry Fenton, who's been in good form there at Windsor. And we can go on to Wincanter now for their next race, which is the 2.50. And we've got a show through there with Daryl. And it's pretty open at the top, Luke, here. Co-favourites three ways at 5-2. to two. They've put number three, Devonshire, four, Dunbury Flyer, and 11, Upham Lord, all in, cross the line, 5-2 to two each of three. 4-1, to one, that is number nine, Steeples Lad. On 8 to 1, number 8, Silver Sirocco. 10 to 1, number 12, Yeoman Sailor. Big break then to 25 to 1, number 7, Seif. Also 25s, number 10, The Islander. 33 to 1, number 6, Guru Rinposh. On 50 to 1, number 1, Kenair. Together with 5, Eastern Gold Dust. Just going 100s. 
is number two, Churchfield. And in the middle of those, at 66 to 1, number 13, Queen of the Shur. Give her the full result at Windsor now. Hart the winner, and uh, she returned 8 to 13 favourite. Rose Hall the second, 33 to 1. Right, Rog, let's see if we can get the winner of this. I fancy Dunbury Flyer, third first time at Exeter. A um, couple of Jim Olds horses just been needing their first runs, um, just to sharpen them up, and um, I, I quite like this horse. Yes, I think I think it's got to go very close, isn't it? Jamie's not having a too bad a day, is he? Um, after, after his diversion in the first. Yeah. Um, yeah it's got um, up and lord, hasn't it, to beat, um, I would think, Philip Hobbs horse. Um, yeah. I, I think, mean, that, that was a good run, I thought, for Up and Lords over course and distance last time behind uh, yeah. Buck's Place. <clears throat> um, Hobbs's, Philip Hobbs' horse been running really well, haven't they? Yeah. So those two obvious chances, you, as has uh, Devonshire. Yes, you can You can never rule out the um, pink and mauve checks, can you? <laughs> <laughs> no, Robert Ogden. I see he's sending some horses to Ian Williams. Yes, the that's right, yes. Yeah. They haven't given you a phone? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'll have to check the answer phone when I get back. <laughs> But um, you'd think Devonshire, would you give that one any sort of chance? I'd give it a place chance. Um, I do think that um, it's going to be between Dunbury Flyer and Upham Lord. Yeah. Well, well, let's see where those all figure in the market. Daryl. Dunbury Flyer is holding steady at 5 to 2. The clues might be there. 3 to 1 now, number 11, Upham Lord. Devonshire, quite easy to back. So a point bigger, 7 to 2. 9 to 2, Steeples Lad, and it's 10s and bigger the others. Well, there they are, milling round at the start. Bob Cooper will be back with you in a very short time. Uh, we can go over to course there, and the commentator is Simon Holt. Thanks, Luke. Yes, Bob will be back if he's stopped giggling. Um, this looks quite an open novices hurdle. I think uh, Devonshire for Venetia Williams is surely going to be thereabouts. They were very unlucky earlier on with that uh, mare for Tria Rosie Dawn, who fell at the last. We've had a Bit of excitement here today, what with her coming down and then poor old De Cyborg in that last race set a really strong gallop and uh, made every yard until the dying strides. It's always painful if you've uh, backed a horse like that and it gets just caught out. It's even worse if you're the owner. But uh, he ran well for, for a Helen long way. Syrett. That's a call for Helen Syrett. It's a bitterly cold afternoon down here in Somerset, and would you believe it, we've actually got an ice cream van on the course today, and he's not doing much business. I've not seen too many double 99s being sold. Quite extraordinary decision to come here and proffer his wares on uh, what is the coldest day it's racing that I've been to so far this winter. Could just be a cold snap coming, I wonder. Girth still being checked, looks like Silver Sirocco, the grey, is being held. Warren Marston's mount, just uh, having a look at Silver Sirocco. The starters have been very pernickety here this afternoon, in uh, looking for almost a dead level start for each race. Very particular. Let's see uh, whether Judy Grange is again uh, going to be so precise this time. Lining up. Guru Rimposh turning at the back. Seif has now got his back to the tapes. They're under status orders. They are off. And away to a pretty good start. Seif uh, began pretty well with Dunbury Flyer and uh, Devonshire just on the heels of the leaders as they head towards the first light. Dunbury Flyer from Seif and Churchfield and Devonshire as they take the first and then Upham Lord and behind them. One that's rather detached early is Guru Rimposh and Sienair is one from last as they head along the back towards flight number two. Long way to go. Dunbury Flyer from Seaf and Churchfield and Devonshire, the front four, chased by Upham Lord and then the Islander. Queen of the Shure towards the inside of Yeoman Sailor next in the field, followed by the grey silver Sirocco and then Eastern Gold Dust, a gap to Steeples Lad, Sienair and finally Guru Rimposh 
flight number three coming up then, the last in the back straight. Dunbury Flyer, the inside of Churchfield, who gave it a, a pretty sharp wrap in the blinkers. And then reminders between horses for Seif. And these three are a couple of lengths clear then of the Islander in yellow and Upham Lord in a red and blue jacket. The inside Devonshire as they swing out of the back. Yeoman Sailor is deep in the midfield still with Silver Sirocco. And then Queen of the Shure, Eastern Gold Dust, as they begin the run down the side of the course. Behind Eastern Gold Dust then was Steeples Lad from CN Air and Guru Rimposh. Remains the back marker, about 20 to 25 lengths off the leader, which uh, is still Dunbury Flyer in the hands of Jamie Osborne, who won the earlier novice hurdle on Tom Paddington. And he's in front from Seif in second and Churchfield in third. Devonshire towards the inside then from Upham Lord and Silver Sirocco, the grey, who's got a bit closer now as they head down towards flight number four of 11. And approaching this one, Dunbury Flyer on the inside from Seif and Churchfield. They all land safely and all jumped it pretty well. Churchfield gets a reminder on landing to wake up as they head down towards the next flight number five, Dunbury Flyer. Just cruising along, very well balanced in front on the inside from uh, Sifu wrapped it hard. Silver Sirocco now comes right through to join in the fun. And it's the grey Silver Sirocco that just edges into the lead from Dunbury Flyer. Seif is third, up and Lord four, Devonshire the inside next in five. Six is Yeoman Sailor, followed by East and Gold Dust, who's made a bit of headway towards the outside of runners. And then Churchfield backpedalling as Queen of the Shure gets up on the inside of the Islander and Sea and Air. Steeples Lad is pushed along in rear, and still last of all is Guru Rimposh down towards the next flight on the side of the course. Flight number six then, and as they come to it, it's Silver Sirocco who takes off fractionally in front from Dunbury Flyer, and then in third is Devonshire with a good position from Seif, who's still right off the bit. Yeoman Sailor has made headway together with Eastern Gold Dust, and then behind these in about seventh position is Upham Lord, a couple of lengths to sea and air under a patient ride from Queen of the Shure. Steeples Lad and Guru Rimposh, the Islanders being pulled up, and Churchfield looks as though he shortly will be. Down the back then towards the first of three flights down there and Silver Sirocco with a fractional advantage from Dunbury Flyer and then Yeoman Sailor. Devonshire now is given the office up the inside, really woken up by Richard Dunwoody there and Devonshire responds in good style to join with the leaders as they approach the middle one in the back and possibly just in front there from Silver Sirocco. Dunbury Flyer in third and Yeoman Sailor is four and Upham Lord is on their heels. They're kicking away from Eastern Gold Dust. And then another gap to Seif who's finally cried enough from Queen of the Shure. Steeples Lad still ridden along in rear from CN Air and Guru Rimposh who's never been in it as they jump the last on the far side. Silver Sirocco back in front but only just. Yeoman Sailor coming there towards the outside. The faller back in the field when well out of it was Guru Rimposh and it's Yeoman Sailor, Silver Sirocco and Devonshire, the front three as they swing right-handed out of the back straight. Upham Lord follows these in fourth position. They'll shortly be taking a downhill run. The first four have cut right away from Dunbury Flyer who's uh, faded rather tamely and looks as though he might be pulled up as Eastern Gold Dust goes past him with Steeples Lair. But meanwhile, let's concentrate on the leaders and the leader is Yeoman Sailor. Yeoman Sailor by two or three lengths, Devonshire is pushed along in second. Upham Lord still looks as though he's got a bit of running to give in third place. They're getting away from Silver Sirocco. The others are a mile back, but up the straight then two flights left to go and Yeoman Sailor is beginning to stride on with some purpose. Three or four lengths to Upham Lord in second. Devonshire can't go on back in third at the second last. Yeoman Sailor popped over nicely from in second place Upham Lord then Devonshire pulling up at the back Dunbury Flyer down towards the final flight then and Yeoman Sailor Sailor is running on relentlessly. Upham Lord now under strong pressure in second place, trying to close at the last. Yeoman Sailor and the second horse dived at it. Upham Lord, but he got a bit closer. It didn't stop him. Quite a long run in. Yeoman Sailor by two lengths to Upham Lord, who's still trying in second place. They got 150 yards left to go. Yeoman Sailor hanging on just from Upham Lord on the stand side. Yeoman Sailor running on strongly from Upham Lord, and Yeoman Sailor goes on to win from Upham Lord in second place. They're a long way clear of Devonshire in another county back in third and Silver Sirocco for. 
Another winner for Jenny Pittman. She had a winner at Leicester earlier in the afternoon with Cara's Rose. And here, Yeoman Sailor has won this novice's hurdle when, uh, in a good finish from Upham Lord, who was staying on pretty strongly in a long gap back to Devonshire in third. SP of that one in a moment. Meanwhile, we must head off to Leicester for the three o'clock race. And let's give you a show of betting. And there's Graham Bradley in the... Uh Quarter colours there, spare right here on board Burundi, who is in a second favourite at two to one from seven to four. The market leader is Dasher on fifteen to eight, opened at six to four. Then they bet six to one, number six, Love Man from fives, back into sixes, having been sevens, is number seven, Smart Boy. A big break then to pick up Wheaton C, number nine at fourteen to one, sixteen to one, number three, Bryn Keir. Easy to back the top one, Normanby Road. has gone from 12s out to 20s. A little bit of money for young Mazard, who's been off for a long time. 33 to 1 from 50s, and the rest on 50 to 1. They're 4, Butte Corn, 8, the Lobos, and 11, Sodelk. That result at uh, Wincanton. Yeoman Sailor, the winner there, was 11 to 1 for Jenny Pittman. Upham Lord, the second, sent off 11 to 4 favourite, and Devonshire in third. At 100 to 30. The two dominating the market here at Leicester are Datcher and Burundi, and there's a definite form line here because they met uh, midway through last month, and Burundi came off best, but in a very close finish, only by a head. Uh, what's what's going to happen today, do you think? Well, I think it's going to be the same two fighting it out, but I think the result will be the other way around. You think that uh, Datcher's going to gain revenge? I would have thought so. I would have thought so with the pull in the weights. Now, are these two going to be the only ones, or do we um, look at anything else? I see that uh, there's not much form to go on, but Kevin Morgan's horse, Loveman, has been uh, is 7 to 1, 5 to 1. That's quite fa mm. fancied a bit. Smart boy. Yes, it's. I think the market the market sums it up, really, doesn't it? It's the first two, really, that... 14 to 1 bar. Yes, that have the form. Yep, that's uh, number seven we're looking at, Smart Boy. It's coming out there is the Lobos. So the runner's coming out onto the course. Looks to be uh, another couple, two or three more to go. Let's go to uh, Graham Good. Two more races to come. This novice's hurdle about to start. And uh, now that the sun's going, we actually see what's happening, which is a great help. Young Mazard at the back in the hoops. Graham Bradley rides Burundi. Timmy Murphy walked away from that earlier fall. They're under starter's orders. They're off. Race away then down towards the first of the flights of hurdles. They have to jump two in this home straight first time round. And it's uh, the Australian, the Lobos, leading. The Lobos takes a first in the lead to Ducker the inside, showing in second place with the third place going to Normanby Road. After these, we've got Buchorn going in four and Smart Boy five, and uh, taking a keen hold, Sodelk is six. On the inside, Young Mazard seven. Wide on the track is uh, Burundi, and also a little bit wide, Love Man. They come down through the first quarter mile, and it's Dacher that sets the pace here to the Lobos, who's a one and two. The bright orange cap on the inside, Normanby Road with a pink cap. We've got Buchorn showing up for four. Loveman going five, Burundi wide of uh, Sodelk and through on the inside, Smart Boy saves ground, running the rail. And the back markers are Brink here towards the back, Young Mazard. And the last of all is Wheaton C. Head towards the back stretch then. And a mile and a half just under to go. With Dacher leading. The Lobos on the outside, sit one and two still. Then uh, Buchorn in third, and on the inside, Normanby Road. A length behind these comes Loveman, followed through by Sodelk. Then Burundi and Smart Boy, and then Brinkier. Continuing the haul down the back stretch, Young Mazard and Wheaton C are tail enders at this stage. And the leaders have skipped over the fourth. They're all over the fourth. With Daka leading. To Buchorn, the outside of the Lobos, and then we've got Normanby Road, followed through by Loveman, and then Sodelk, and after that one, Burundi. Smart boy down the back, Brinkier getting a little bit closer on the outer. 
all prefer, preferring to keep very wide on the course as they head down towards the final flight of hurdles on the back straight past halfway and it's probably just Dakar that'll rise into the lead here didn't jump uh, that fluently but safely enough to Bukhorn and then on the inside Norman B Road skipping along nicely the Lobos just being pushed along after these comes uh, Loveman and Sodelk followed by Burundi, Smart Boy and Brinkier continuing the turn out of the back straight and Dakar has the edge here four more flights of hurdles to jump still over half a mile to go sweeping for home young Mazard tailing off it's Dakar that just has the edge to Bukorn and Norbenby Road and then Loveman getting a bit closer the Lobos tries to come back for more Sodelk whizzing round the inside Burundi's wide of Smart Boy then after these comes Brink here come down the home straight four out now Dakar leaks it, uh, leaps it very well indeed Norbenby Road despite this double penalty is running very freely indeed and coming with a good run on the inside these are going uh, together Dakar to Normanby Road the inside then into third goes Loveman followed by Burundi who is starting to pick up now we have one uh, crash through the wing there and that looked like Brink here they come down towards the second from home, the horse is okay it's uh, Loveman who's going to press Dakar close on their heels is Burundi, these are one, two and three Dakar a mistake, that cost it valuable momentum and it's Loveman into the lead, Loveman quickening up all of a sudden Burundi is uh, being raced for pace now down to the final flight, Loveman and Burundi stride for stride Burundi with experience goes on, Loveman back in third Dakar is held as they race inside the final furlong it's Burundi skipping away with this, making it two from two over course and distance. Burundi under Graham Bradley today to Love Man in second, and Dakar will just hold third. Chance ride there for uh, Graham Bradley. Timmy Murphy had a nasty fall earlier, so he missed out on that one. Burundi for Tony Carroll has beaten Loveman with Dakar only third today. Not much separated Burundi and Dakar when they last met here, but uh, Burundi clearly on top today. Mm, yes. Um, Let's have a look at this running out. We saw the, we see the, the wing. Whoops, oh, goes. Adrian oh. McGuire had a crashing fall earlier, oh. and there. When your luck's out, Bob, your luck's out, isn't it? It's not a very lucky course for him, this uh, Leicester <laughs> no. track. I'm sure one no. can't be superstitious. But, Brenda, um, Brenda makes a mistake here, doesn't he, on Dakar, but he was beaten at the time, I think. He's, oh, I don't know. Yes, he's going hmm. well enough, wasn't he? That, cert that certainly was the end of it, wasn't it? I'm glad to say Adrian Maguire got up and walked away from that. Yes, good, because he has his fair share, doesn't he? There, you can just see his legs disappearing there. But um, Burundi has won, retains his unbeaten record. Mm. Struck to his task well, didn't he? Certainly did. Mm. And uh, Kevin Morgan's horses haven't been in great form. I was chatting to him the other day, he said that they'd just been all wrong. But they're just beginning to show signs of coming back into form. There's the winner. Let's get the SP. Winner there, Burundi with two to one, second favourite. Second was Loveman, seven to one. Third was Dakar, fifteen to eight favourite. And the three ten at Windsor now, the novice chase over three miles. Huggy Bear, novice's chase. Favourite there is eight. Tompa two, eleven to eight. Then it's five to two, number three, a Jazzman. One Grass and Nettles, an eleven to four chance. 14 to 1, that's your horse, Roger. 7, Step Aside Boy. 20 to 1, 10, Staticonto. <laughs> Staticonto. <laughs> that one, 20. That one, 20 to 1. 6, Operoto. 33 to 1. 9, Calliope is a 50 to 1. 4, Layston Door is 66 to 1, along with 5, Litrim Cottage. I'm not going to laugh at Luke because he couldn't say Sat Catino because he's been extremely generous. When he was down here chatting to you, he's left his wallet down here, which is rather nice. I think yes. it's just... Yes, it didn't have any money in it, though, Bob, did it? So that'll be well, it hasn't got any money in it now, that's for sure. Now, seriously, step aside, boy, your horse here, 14 to 1. Is that a bit of each way value, do you think? Yes, he definitely is. Um, he's a lovely horse. He won over hurdles over two and a half miles at um, Plumpton in the spring, uh, which wasn't part of our plan, but the owner, the owner got transferred... Uh, to Australia and is now in New Zealand, uh, in Sydney for a couple of years. Um, so we went there and won that. Um, then the ground went, so we gave up with him. Um, he's come out now. We ran him. He was very disappointing, but on on terribly heavy ground. It was really was very holding, 
uh, and we were quite disappointed um, against Over the Glen uh, at Fontwell. Um, he's coming, I was going to run him again in another handicap hurdle, but I've brought him here really looking for the ground. He is a chaser, he has won two point to points. Um, I think he'll jump round nicely, definite each way claims. So you don't think he just needs another run just to put an edge on him here? I think he'll be better for this, um, but having said that, I, I still think he's got a very good chance of getting in the first three. OK, there you are, viewers. 14 to 1, rattling good each way value. Step aside, boy. Trained by our studio guest today, Roger Curtis. But the one to beat, obviously, is Tom Pitou, who's the uh, Twiston Davis runner, the favourite here. This is going to be your chief danger? I think so. I think Tom Pitou. Tom Pitou's got to be the main danger, isn't it? I, I, I understand that um, Kim Bailey's quite sweet on um, grasp, grasp the, the nettle. nettle. Um, and obviously Jazzman of um, Graham McCourt's has got a fair amount of form as well. Here we have the Huggy Bear Novices Chase. Huggy Bear, of course, the uh, name affectionately given to the uh, clerk of the course, Hugo Bevan. Mm. Yes, now, I... generous Luke will give us a show of betting. <laughs> Thanks for the money, Luke. <laughs> That's all right, Bob. Number eight, Tom Patu is favourite at 11 to 8. One, Graf's a Nettle, 5 to 2. Three, Jazzman's a 3 to 1 chance, and it's 14 to 1, seven, Step Aside Boy. Number 10, Sacadino's a 20 to 1 chance, 33 to 1, 6, Operetto, and it's 50 to 1 about. Number 9, Calliope, and 4, Leistendor is a 66 to 1 chance. We have a really technical in interest here because you left your mobile phone with our director in the, in the studio, which is a floor above us. So he's rung mm -hmm. in from, where do you say he's? New Zealand, yeah, Australia? No, in Australia, he's in Sydney. So. Um, Good morning, Paul, because I think it's about three o'clock in the morning there. Your horse is just lining up now at Windsor. And he's going to be tuning into the commentary. <laughs> well, you'll be having a tense a few minutes, so let's go across to the commentary box. Good luck to step aside, boy. Here's Derek Thompson. So here we go in the three-mile Huggy Bear novices chase, and Operetto is going to give them a lead down towards the first of the 18 fences. They'll be jumping in this. Tom Patu, the favourite, up alongside. So is Grasp the Nettle as well, and they jump the first, and uh, they're all safely over that with the back marker Calliope. Now going down towards the next, and this is the water jump, which they'll jump twice. Operetto, the leader, from Tom Patu up on the inside. A good jump up on the outside by Leitrim Cottage, who's right up with the leaders in the early stages. Also there towards the outside is Step Aside Boy. These are the four leaders and they're ahead of Grasp who runs fifth. As they go down towards the first of the uh, four ditches they'll be jumping in this race. And uh, they're all safely over that. The one at the back of the field who's jumping quite slowly, uh, that is Calliope. So, going down towards the next, fence number four, Grass the Nettle comes up to join Tompa 2. And up on the outside is Leitrim Cottage and Step Aside Boy. Right behind in fifth is Operetto. Then comes Jazzman. Behind Jazzman is Layston Door. Then comes Sat Catino. That's the order as they go down towards the next. And this is fence number five of the 18 they're coming to. Grass the Nettle on the inside. On the far side is Step Aside Boy. These two are stride for stride. They're just ahead of Leitrim Cottage and Operetto. Then comes Tompa 2. Behind Tompa 2 is Jazzman. Then comes Sat Catino. And the back marker of that leading group is Leiston Door. That's the order as they go towards the bend for the first time in this Huggy Bear novices chase. And as they swing right-handed, on the inside, just the leader in the Senior Albertrudi colours is Operetto. That leads now by half a length. Up on the outside in second is Step Aside Boy. A close third on the inside is Leitrim Cottage, disputing third place with Grass the Nettle. Tompa 2, the favourite, runs a very close fifth. On the inside, just behind these leaders as they come into the home straight, is Jazzman. Towards the uh, far side, we have Sat Catino and Leiston Door. And the back marker is still Calliope. Here they come to the second of the four ditches they'll be jumping in this. And they're all the leaders safely over that, with on the far side, the horse with the sheepskin noseband, Step Aside Boy, just the leader. From Operetto in the middle, towards the stand side is Grasp the Nettle. These are the three at the head of affairs. Leitrim Cottage is a close fourth, as they jump the next in the home straight. This is a plain one. A close fifth is Tompa 2 towards the outside. Right on the heels of the leaders is Jazzman. And just the back marker of that leading group is Leiston Door. Here they come towards the next in the home straight. Remember, they've still got another circuit to run. Step Aside Boy and Operetto in the air together. Third place, Tompa 2 on the far side, disputes third place with Grasp the Nettle this side. Then comes Jazzman, behind Jazzman is Leitrim Cottage, and then comes Leiston Door. That's the order as they come down and jump what will be the last on the next circuit. 
and uh, pretty tight up front three virtually in line on the far side we have step aside boy in the middle with the purple colors is operetto towards the stand side in the red and gray is grass the nettle the favorite in the yellow colors tompa two is fourth behind this is lee trim cottage behind lee trim cottage is jazz man behind jazz man comes sat catino and on the inside of this is laced and door and the one who's just passing the winning post now is struggling is calliope so out they go on their final circuit at the halfway stage in this the huggy bear and Novice's chase and up front in the blue and white step aside boy in second place is operetto disputing third on the inside is the favorite tompa two with grasp the nettle on the far side right behind in fifth is jazz man and a close six is lee trim cottage a little gap then to set catino this is the first on the far side and a beautiful jump by step aside boy takes him a length clear of grasp the nettle operetto then comes tompa two then behind tompa two as they go to the water is jazz man jumping the water for the next time good jump towards the outside by sat catino and also making a forward move is lee trim cottage going down towards fence number 12 of the 18 and this is the third of the open ditches grass the nettle on the outside step aside boy this side step aside boy once again jumps it the better bad mistake there by sat catino he lost a couple of lengths there so going down towards fence number 13 step aside boy dare i say it, jumping really well right up with him on the far side is grass the nettle they're in the air together. Tompa 2 made a little bit of a mistake there, and uh, he's just back in third place, disputing third with Lee Trim Cottage and Jazz Man. Little gap then to Operetto, who runs six. Going across the intersection of the course, going down towards fence number 14, and still up front, step aside, boy, from Grass the Nettle in second, Tompa 2 is third, in fourth is Lee Trim Cottage, and then comes Jazz Man. That's the leading five as they go towards the bend at the far end of the track, and up front going well step aside boy he's opened up a four length advantage grass the nettle under pressure in second tompa two being ridden along in third lee trim cottage is fourth and then beginning to stay on is jazz man but the one they've got to catch as they swing at the home straight with four left to jump is step aside boy and he's gone ten lengths clear here they come up the home straight four left to jump in the huggy bear novices chase and the fourth last is the last of the ditches here comes step aside boy He's over safely, and he's well clear of Grasp the Nettle in second, Tompa 2, who's third. The rest are flat to the boards. Can they catch? Step aside, boy. He's still clear with three more fences left to jump. Step aside, boy, and John Leach. He's over. He's running a bit towards the left. In second place, what a bad mistake by Tompa 2 in second. Jazzman is staying on in third. Grasp the Nettle in fourth. Then comes Operetto. Two more fences left to jump, and it's Step aside, boy. He's well clear. He's over the second last safe and I don't think they're gonna catch him. Tompa two's looking very tight in second, Jazzman third, Operetto fourth, the rest are absolutely out on their feet. One left to jump, and the only horse in it is Step Aside Boy. He's well clear, he's only got to jump the last. Here it is. He's over safely, step aside, boy, and this is a good performance. Second place, Tompa 2 in third, Jazzman. But look at this, what a performance and what a price as well. Step aside, boy, from the Roger Curtis stable is winning the Huggy Bear Novices Chase in style. In second place is the favorite Tompa 2. In third place is Jazzman, and it's going to be pretty close for fourth. Oh, if only well, <laughs> we did listen. I hope you at home listened to uh, Roger Curtis. I'm with me as the winning trainer of Step Aside Boy. What a superb round of jumping that was, Roger. Many congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, nice performance. He, we, we do think he is a lovely horse. Um, and he is a chaser in the making. We had him hurdling last year, uh, really, as it was his first season under under rules and in training. Your, um, ha your happy owner, Paul Warren, who rang up from Australia, from Sydney, he'll be ecstatic, won't he? Mm, I bet he doesn't go back to bed. <laughs> no, it's the middle of the night there, isn't it? Yep, yep. There we see the closing stages from the head on, but he's jumping, I thought, took the breath away. I mean, he never, he never put a foot wrong. No, 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 even, even when Tomo said how well he was jumping he still never put a foot no. on did he when um jonathan leach kicked clear about um what well, on, on that sort of final loop were you a bit worried then that he may have yes yes well i i did think this horse would need this race and though i thought he could win this i thought he would come on for it um and going on a long way from home just 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 gave me a few doubts for a moment and like all trainers you said oh i don't know what the handicap is going to do now when he was yes, on that's right, running. yes yes that's right yes You'd rather win than be worried in some other way, wouldn't you? Well, yes, it's the sort of problem you have to cope with, isn't it? Great stuff.
Great stuff. Step aside, boy. Good price, Luke. Certainly was for backers of Step Aside Boy. 14 to 1 the winner there. Second Tompa 2, the 11 to 8 favourite. Third horse was Jazzman at 3 to 1. Intriguing handicap chase next at Wing Canton, 3.20, two miles far. There. Second Tompa 2, the 11 to 8 favourite. Third horse was Jazzman at 3 to 1. Intriguing handicap chase next at Wing Canton, 3.20, two miles, five furlongs the trip, and the win and the well the winner, the favourite is King of Sparta, seven to four. Then it's four to one to Melstop Meggie, nine to two about three Quango, six full of bounce, seven to one, eight to one about four hold your ranks, and seven Oliver Duckett, and the outsider is Southampton at sixteen to one. What a pity, pity it is we didn't pour the contents of Luke Harvey's wallet onto uh, your horse. We'd have won seven pounds or so. Mm. But uh, let's hear from a horse, that, uh, well, from a trainer of a horse in great form. Jonathan Portman, King of Sparta, has been in, in an irrepressible form. He won two showcase races. Can he make it three today? Not showcase, but the three wins in a row. Let's find out from the trainer. Jonathan, King of Sparta, he's a lovely horse and he's proved a real bargain for you. I mean, he's done you proud since you bought him out of Oliver Sherwood's stable. He won here last time and funnily enough there, I thought he seemed outpaced four fences from home. Yes, down the back straight I thought, well, we're going to be fifth or sixth here and um, I really didn't think uh, the final result would, uh, would be like it was. But um, it's funny, you know, the, the papers have now gone from saying that uh, he's not one to, to back in a struggle, and today I noticed they say um, today won't be a struggle enough because it's too easy a race, so, he, you know, right, he only likes a struggle. So, um, who knows? I mean, he's, he's very well. I, he's come out of his race well. It's Thursday. He likes Thursdays. He's won the last two Thursdays except the last one. Um, I, you know, I hope he'll go well, but who knows? Are you so superstitious? Are you always going to keep him to running on a Thursday? No, not really. I, I, the only superstition I like to keep him to showcase races, more money. But um, no, uh, you know, it, it, it was a logical place to run him. The ground has changed to good, which will suit us. You know, there's not much good ground about at the moment, and that's the key to him, really, the ground, which is why we're here. Jonathan, best of luck. Thank you. Thanks. Is it going to be three in a row for King of Sparta, do you think? I think so. I think so. Tail swisher that he is, he's, he's done well, nothing I mean, wrong. He, does tail he? swisher he may be, and time form squiggle he may have. Maybe I hope they've removed that squiggle now because he's done absolutely nothing wrong in those two wins no. a few weeks no. ago. No, that's right. No. Six to four favourite he is. They're off and running. Here's Simon Holt. Away for the Somerset handicap chase and onto the first of 17 fences. Quang go towards the inside of Oliver Duckett, with King of Sparta close up and Mel Stock Meggie towards the outside as they. Reach the first fence now. Best jump there from King of Sparta. A slow jump by Hold Your Ranks at the back. But it's very close up front between four or five horses. And Oliver Duckett now asserts on the flat to Southampton. And then uh, towards the inside is Quango as they take the open ditch. King of Sparta, Melstock Meggy, a gap to full of bounce. And Hold Your Ranks not really having a cut at the fences at the moment in last place. Fence number three now, a plain fence. Oliver Duckett and Southampton take it together. From Quango up the inside, then King of Sparta, Melstock Meggie, full of bounce a bit closer, and tailed right off his hold your ranks, and uh, it almost looks as though he might be pulled up as they race to an open ditch. The front six all jump it safely, and uh, hold your ranks has been pulled up before that fence, taken out by Jimmy Frost. So they now swing right-handed, the field reduced to six, and it's Oliver Duckett that leads the lucky half-dozen to Southampton in second. Quango the inside of King of Sparta. As they begin the run downhill, Melstock, Meggie, and full of bounce the last two. A downhill fence coming up, Oliver Duckett, all jumping proficiently there, the six runners. And it's Oliver Duckett that still shows the way as they round this next turn. Southampton, the outsider of the party, in second place in the blue headgear. And then uh, King of Sparta towards the outside. Four times a winner this season, King of Sparta. Quango the inner, and then Melstock Meggie in full of bounce. As they race on towards this line of three fences up the home straight. Over a circuit to go then, Oliver Duckett. 
of a first. Slight nod on landing, nothing to worry about. Southampton, King of Sparta, travelling well, as he often does in his races, towards the outside. Quango up the inner, another plain one. And maybe even King of Sparta might just have pulled his way to the front there. Quango and Southampton, the next two. And uh, being pulled up is Oliver Duckett after jumping that one. And uh, so the field reduced to five. And um. and dismounted Oliver Duckett. Five. And um. and dismounted Oliver Duckett. So perhaps something amiss there. And up front, it's King of Sparta racing keenly. Southampton, then Quango the inside. Mel Stock, Meggie in fourth and full of bounce, last of the five. Along the side then towards the water jump. Number nine coming up. And three in a line here. Quango the rail, Southampton between horses. King of Sparta perhaps just took off in front again on the outside. And then Mel Stock, Meggie and full of bounce as they enter the back straight and King of Sparta gave a couple of swishes of the tail going down there, he's in front and uh, he has been known to be a slightly temperamental character but not so much this season he's been very consistent as they jump the first in the back straight good jump by the leader king of sparta southampton and melstock meggie second and third quango just nudged along by richard dunwoody in fourth place from full of bounce another open ditch coming up and king of sparta going into it jumped it beautifully and took at least a length out of the second horse Melstock Meggie there Southampton in third from full of bounce and now uh, feeling the warmth of Richard Dunwoody's whip there Quango up the inside another plain fence and King of Sparta taking the fences in his stride at the moment Melstock Meggie the only close one in second the other three all being scrubbed along Southampton full of bounce and Quango has dropped away the final open ditch again the leader King of Sparta foot, foot perfect which is more than can be said for one or two of the others full of bounce sent a bit of birch flying but it's King of Sparta and Melstock Meggie as they swing away out of the back straight then and begin the run downhill towards four out. King of Sparta, a reformed character, on the outside of Melstock Meggie as they race towards four out, well clear of Southampton. Here's the fourth last then. King of Sparta, Melstock Meggie hit it very hard there. A tumbling fall, a mistake also from Southampton and full of bounce, who are less second and third. And uh, then uh, in fourth place, Quango. Looking back, uh, uh, Martin Berry is getting up on his feet, OK, after that four. But King of Sparta has been left with a commanding advantage up the straight now with three fences left to jump. Melstock Meggie is all right as well. So three left to jump for King of Sparta if he's to record his fifth win of the season. Coming into three out then, King of Sparta. And again, he looks very sure-footed. The tail's going round. He's a long way clear. He surely can't throw this one away. Southampton in second, then full of bounce. And Quango, who hit it pretty hard at the second last. King of Sparta, still full of running in front. And racing down to the last, it's King of Sparta, who must be oh, a good 50 yards in front of the others. Shortens up going to the last and safely over. And he's going to collect again. Uh, Southampton in second, full of bounce back in third. And then Quango in fourth. But this will go to King of Sparta, despite top weight, who's going to absolutely hack up here in second place Southampton running on just ahead of full of bounce and then Quango will be last of four finishes the success story goes on for King of Sparta winning his fifth race of the season and he's absolutely trounced his rivals here one extremely easy he's it, I was looking at the list of uh, top prize money for top jump sources in Britain and Ireland Teton Mill is the top one and uh, King of Sparta is now moving up into 13th place. Yes, amazing, isn't it? Not undeserved, though, Bob, is it? He's, he's... Absolutely not, yeah. no. I mean, uh, d I think he'd have won anyway, whether, whether that uh, Melstock Meggie Meg stood up or not. Bad luck for... Uh, I went into a betting shop just to pop in to see whether, how everyone was, and I was watching a betting shop program, and Luke Harvey was on. His nap of the day, his parting words were Quango. Was that right? Yes. Well, yeah. I think Quango's Quango. Yeah. Luke, you've been Quango there, King of Sparta, a victory for favourite backers. <laughs> yes, thanks for that, Bob. Winner there, King of Sparta, six to four, favourite. Second, number five, Southampton, at 20 to one. And at uh, 3.30 at Leicester, it's a two-mile handicap hurdle for conditional jockeys. And the favourite here is number four, Bowcliffe Court, John Acres horse, at five to two. Then it's seven to two, about one, Nesson Doro, then... Nine to two, about two of them, th two distant storm and three compass pointer. 
six illuminates a five to one chance and five damas is a 20 to one chance so from uh, king of sparta jonathan portman we go to um our next live race at leicester final race in the car nothing not gonna i was going to mention these mr bean impersonation which he does after wins anyway let's talk about um, this race at Leicester. I tell you, if Bowcliff Court wins this one, unfortunately, our very own John Hunt will be bottom of the naps table because the <laughs> person below him has napped it. Camden Vent. Oh, no, I'm talking nonsense. But suddenly, my screen changed. <laughs> Bowcliff Court, the ninth four favourite here. What are your fancies? Well, I and see. I, I really thought that Nessandoro was um, going to go off favourite deservedly, um, but they've gone for for Bowcliff Court, who I thought. Um, would, though would be the danger. I thought Alan Spence's horse, um, trained by John A. Kirst, would, would probably come off second in the battle, but um, they're, they're, they're backing it in, aren't they? Familiar colours, those red and white sleeves are Spence colours, aren't they? Yes, yes, had a, had a lot of good horses over the years with um, Reg Akehurst, didn't he? Nelson Doro. What a tight betting race, 9-4 to four, this favourite Bowcliffe Court. And uh, Luke will just refresh our memories of the betting here. I'm sure you'd like to do that. Of course I would, Bob. Yeah, there's only one horse that's not really uh, very close at the top, and that's Damas. The rest of them are all very tightly bunched. Four, Bowcliff Court is favourite, nine to four. Then it's seven to two, number one, Ness and Doro. Nine to two, about two, Distant Storm, and three, Compass Pointer. Six to one, six, Illuminate is a five to one chance, and Damas is the outsider, 20 to one. There's number two, Distant Storm who's trained by uh, Bernard Llewellyn. One of his horses ran very well in that one of those novice chases earlier, big price, but anyway, Distant Storm's shown a little bit of form. Second at Bangor last time out behind uh, Eben El Habib. And uh, one of the dangers. Small field with a tricky race to end the day. Yes, it is, yeah, yeah. So you're still on Cloud Line with Cloud Nine with your Windsor winner, I, I bet. Yes, or Cloud Line, I'll go anywhere now. Cloud Line. Mm. Final time today. The last race has uh, come round pretty quickly. Let's go for the final time to Graham Good in the commentary box. Conditional. They're under starters' orders. They're off. And smartly away, Bowcliffe Court uh, takes an early advantage out of Damas, who sits second. Going into third, we have uh, Illuminate, and on the outside, Nesson Doro, who uh, comes through into fourth. And they rather flatten that flight of hurdles. Distant Storm sits at the back behind Compass Pointer. Head down towards the second, and it's uh, Bowcliffe Court that leads. Bowcliffe Court has the edge here, comes to it, nicked a length or so at the start, standing him in good stead. On the inside, Illuminate is taking quite a keen hold the inside of the red jacket Damas. Then the grey Compass Pointer in the yellow and blue is Nesson Dora, who was second in this corresponding race last year. With a red cap at the back, we have Distant Storm. Come up past us then, and it's Bowcliffe Court that has the edge just to Damas, who sits in second, and then magnetised to that rail is Illuminate, clearly seen in third. Compass Pointer on the outside shares a third place, and the length behind these Ness and Doro, and Distant Storm is the trailer. Towards flight number three, over which Bowcliffe Court will lead a tightly packed field. Illuminate moving through the inside of Damas that sits wide on the track and Nesson Doro and Compass Pointer and Distant Storm. Through the first half mile they've been taken at a good pace by Seamus Durak who leads on Bowcliffe Court. Then Illuminate the inside of Damas, touchdown together, Compass Pointer just checked in then Nesson Doro then Distant Storm. Race down is a dip on the far side of the track and it's Bowcliffe Court that leads. A steady pace. Illuminate the inside, then uh, follows Damas with Compass Point in Ness and Doro and Distant Storm. To the last on the far side, but still five more flights of hurdlers to jump. They're past halfway in this conditional jockey's uh, handicap hurdle event. With Bowcliffe Court and Damas one and two, and on the inside we have Illuminate. Then Compass Pointer, followed by Nessandoro and Distant Storm. Make that Distant Storm, Nessandoro, 
Just the back marker now, swinging out of the back straight. And it's Bowcliffe Court to illuminate one and two. Then Compass Pointer and Damas and Nesson Doro and Nesson Storm. Turning for home, half a mile of travel, still closely grouped, only about four lengths between the pack. Bowcliffe Court by half to Compass Pointer, getting closer now is the grey. Illuminate whizzing round the inside. Then we've got uh, Distant Storm, Nesson Doro. All closing in, all with chances, possibly without the exception of Damas, who's just the back marker, four out. Bowcliffe Court to Compass Pointer, travelling well, pushed along the inside, Illuminate. Nesson Doro, Distant Storm, Damas drops away. Three to jump. Bowcliffe Court, Compass Pointer. Bowcliffe Court by three parts of the length to Compass Pointer, Nesson Doro, Distant Storm. Illuminate's cracked. They've got two to take. And Bowcliffe Court, Nick to lead at the start. Still has a length to spare, two to jump. To Nesson Doro and then Compass Pointer and then Distant Storm, two out. And it's still Bowcliffe Court that just has it. Compass Pointer the grey. Nesson Doro, second last year, battling for a place again. Distant Storm, Red Cap tries to come back. This is the last. Bowcliffe Court, Nick this length at the start, don't forget, still has it to Nesson Doro, and then uh, back in third, Distant Storm. Inside the final furlong, Compass Pointer back in four, up towards the line. It's Bowcliffe Court, he's made all come home with youthful legs, and it's Bowcliffe Court who takes it. It'll be tight for second, one for the judge, Nesson Doro, Distant Storm, clear of Compass Pointer. He did it the tough way, Bowcliffe Court. He made virtually all the running. Seamus Jurak on board for John Acast. And uh, one by one they came at him, and one by one they were repelled. He held on really bravely, didn't he? Yes, the tactics were worth employing, weren't they? Um, Seamus Jurak's never the easiest to get by in those situations. Um, and certainly, um, yes, uh, it looked, jumping the second last, as if Nissan Dora was going to pick, go and pick him up whenever he liked. But in fact, um, he was so resolute, he just never let him head him, did he? No, and just before that, the danger was a compass pointer, and he dropped back. You can see with a red cap on the inside, Distant Storm stays on quite well, but uh, suddenly Nesson Doro's beaten. There's a battle on for second place, but the favourite has won the final race. A photo for second between Nesson Doro and uh, Distant Storm. And uh, just going to this, I was talking about this Naps tale, which is pretty cruel, but, you know, life is cruel, isn't it? Um, just referring to my tipsters table, if you, all you viewers who've got a racing post, have a look at page 62, because right at the foot of the table now, because Eamon Gavigan of the Nottingham Even Evening Post has tipped this winner, which makes John Hunt of the uh, Lincolnshire Echo bottom. He's holding up the table. <laughs> Shameful, isn't it? <laughs> I think it would be pretty cruel to call him the no worst newspaper tipster in the country, but uh, on the other hand, it's true. It's pretty cruel, but he, then again, he is bottom of the list, Bob. Yes, I know. And he can only go one way, or pull out altogether. <laughs> Let's get the SP of the winner. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be over the moon with you broadcasting that, Bob. First four was Bowcliffe Court, 9-4 favourite. Second was Nesson Doro, and uh, out that way, Nesson Doro was a 3-1 to one chance. Now we can go... To Windsor now for their last race, the 340. This is a two and a half mile handicap hurdle. And uh, we have joint favourites here, Another Knight and Dragon King, both at four to one. And it's six to one, number six, Prairie Minstrel, and two, Nordansk. Seven to one, about three, Foreign Rule, and eight, I Recall. Foreign Rule's now gone eight to one. And it's 14 to one, about seven, Charlie Banker. 16 to one, number one, Garnwin. 10 Cambo and 11 Colwell. 9 what, mile a minute is a 25 to 1 chance, along with King's Gold on the outside of the lot. Number 13, Sovereign, 33 to 1. Well, here's an emotion charged moment. This is the final jump race to be held at Windsor. Who knows, it might come back. Maybe the you know, pressure may make them change their mind one day, but for the time being, this is the last national hunt race. Uh, to be held at Windsor. It's going to be flat only from now on, so a sad farewell for this Norwegian blue handicap hurdle. Nice to go out with a winner here, wouldn't it? You've yes, had the penultimate well, winner. That's right. I've won the last chase there, I suppose. You have? Well, not I suppose. You have. 
Step well, aside. No, I'm, still, I'm still hoping perhaps that we'll get racing back there one day. But oh, I think, I'm, you know, I'm not saying I'm sure it'll come back, but I'm sure there's a chance it'll come back because it's a good, good jumping track, liked by trainers and jockeys alike, owners yes. as well. Yeah, I think all the professionals really, really like it. In fact, who doesn't like it? Well, I think we mentioned that it's probably the last meeting. So. Anyway, um, we've got joint favourites here. Another night, a good competitive race to, to close the card. Pat Murphy trains another night, and a Dragon King, trained by Robin Barwell. Prairie Minstrel on, on five to one. What are your thoughts here? Um, I'm a, a Dragon King fan. I think um, Barry Fenton um, might well end the day with the double. Um, Nordance, uh, Michael Magwick Hulls. Um, I, Seems to have a habit of finishing third, Nordan. <laughs> yes, yes, has a habit of running well, but never quite well enough. And there weren't many market moves this morning, and one of them, in fact, I think it was about the only one, well, it was the only one early on, I recall, was the one, trained by Peter Hayward, um, was backed, and this one is uh, a seven to one, so I think 14 to one was the best price you could yes. have got first thing this morning, so that's yes. definitely come in for support, I recall. Yes, yes, I can't say I know much about I recall. Um, it wasn't one that, that, that I looked on with an obvious chance, I must say. Money can often speak volumes there. Let's see where the money's been going, Luke. A little bit of money about, Bob, but uh, still joint favourites for another night and five, Dragon King. Next six, Perry Minstrel's a five to one chance. There's two on seven to one, two Nordansk, and a little bit of a gamble here. Eight, I recall, was eight, now a seven to one chance. It's nine to one, bar those. Yes, I recall so far, you're quite right, hasn't done an awful lot. I mean, he's run 15 times so far, yet to win a race. Uh, seventh of 11 behind Renzo at Ascot last time. It hasn't really been uh, in the shake-up the past uh, half dozen no, runs or so. No, 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 there, there's others that you'd expect to, to be in front of. It, Which say. makes the market move that much more significant. Well, that's right, doesn't it? Yes, yes they've obviously not done it for the sake of their health. Um, uh, foreign Rule, I think, perhaps would run well as well. Um, John Jenkins' horse, um, been off for a very long time. I don't know how straight it would be, but that, that certainly has got reasonable ability. On, yes, on the form that he showed when he was uh, last running, but it's been a long time since mm. he's been off. We've got a clear favourite, another night now at a 7-2, but uh, we can go for the uh, final, final uh, time, jump-wise. Derek Thompson didn't have a tear in his eye earlier. He had a drop on the end of the nose, he said. But are the tears now flowing, Derek? Oh, flowing. The Thames is overflowing. <laughs> no, it's, it's, kind of, it's been an emotional day for Hugo Beffen. Uh, last day is Clark the Course after 16 years. And you can see the turf trivia coming in a few years' time with the name the last jumps winner at, uh, at Windsor. Well, we'll soon find out. They're being called in for the last race under National Hunt rules at Windsor Racecourse. Peter Haynes is going to start it. It's over two and a half miles, 13 runners. Remember that jockey change. John Kavanagh on North. They're under starters' orders. They're off. So here we go in the very last race. And the old-timer Cambo is going to take them along in the early stages. Prairie Minster are right up with them. And Sovereign's also well to the fore as they jump the first. And they're all safely over that. So going towards the bend for the first time. And uh, Cambo, the 12-year-old, shows the uh, younger horses the way to do it at the moment. Up on the inside, Sovereign comes up to dispute it. In the uh, blue colours, check sleeves, Prairie Minstrel's right there. Towards the outside, King's Gold has pulled his way up into the front rank. Uh, Garn Wynn runs on the heels of the leaders. Just behind uh, Garn Wynn as they come at the home straight is another knight. And also right up with that leading group is Cole Wall. A gap then to the chasing group who are headed by mile a minute. Here they come round towards the home straight for the first time and straighten up towards flight number two. And uh, on the far side, King's Gold, who's pulling Sophie Mitchell's arms out at this stage, jumps to the front from Sovereign on the inside. Cambo is between the horses in third. Running fourth is the top weight, Garn Wynn. And then uh, tracking this one towards the inside in the hoop colours, we have another knight. Towards the outside is Prairie Minstrel. Also on the heels of the leaders is Call Wall. Then comes Irie Call. And behind this one comes Charlie Banker and Dragon King. Here they jump the next in the home straight. And a good jump by King's Gold. That leads as they come down and jump what will be the last on the, uh, on the next circuit. This time round, it's King's Gold from Cambo. Towards the stand side in the blue colours comes Sovereign. 
I recall has made ground to come and join the front rank, and right up with them is Prairie Minstrel. Behind these in the pink colours comes Garn Wynn, then comes Colwall. On the heels of this one is Another Knight. Then towards the outside is Dragon King. Uh, behind this one, looking back towards the rear, Foreign Rule is the back marker. Nordansk is just in front of that, and then comes Mile a Minute. They're tightly grouped as they go out on their final circuit in the final national hunt race here at Windsor. And uh, up on the inside, in the quartered colours, I recall, disputes it now with up on the outside, King's Gold. And here comes the old-timer Cambo, three in line as they swing into the back straight. Running fourth is the bottom weight Sovereign, then comes the top weight Gun Win. Prairie Minstrel is on the heels of the leaders, then comes the favourite, Another Knight, then comes Dragon King, Nord Dance. Behind this one is Colwall, and on the inside is Charlie Banker. That's the order as they go down towards the first on the far side. This is flight number five, and they're all safely over that with King's Gold taking them along from Cambo on the outside and I recall on the inside still very little to choose between these three at the head of affairs Garn when the top weight makes ground to go fourth on the heels of this leading quartet is Sovereign that's the leading group behind this one as they jump it we have Prairie Minstrel so crossing the intersection of the course it's Cambo thoroughly enjoying himself out there disputing it with I recall in the green and yellow quartered colors between the two is King's Gold then comes Garn Wynn Right behind Charlie Banker takes closer order, then comes Sovereign. Right behind Sovereign is Prairie Minstrel, the favourite at this stage, just being ridden along another night, and just going towards the back of the group. So going down towards the next, and this will be flight number seven of the ten, and Garnwin, the top weight, has come up to dispute it with Cambo, who's been ridden along towards the outside, as I recall. Beautiful jump by Garnwin, that takes him to the front. In second place is I recall. These two beginning to go clear of the chase group. Dragon King makes a forward move on the inside. Behind this one is Charlie Banker. Behind Charlie Banker, uh, making a forward move is uh, coming again towards the outside is I recall. Right on the heels of the leaders is Colwall. Then comes Prairie Minstrel. Here they come round towards the home straight and Dragon King has got a lovely dream run through on the inside. He now disputes it with Garn Wynn. Breathing down their heels is Charlie Banker. Behind Charlie Banker comes Colwall. And behind this one is I recall. Also making a forward move is Mile a Minute, who's making rapid progress on the outside. This is the first in the home straight, and it's Dragon King who has the lead, going well at this stage. A Garnwin now beats the retreat. Here comes Charlie Banker with a good-looking run. Prairie Minstrel is right there, and Mile a Minute is also staying on. Here they come down towards two out, and it's Charlie Banker in the red and white who now goes on. Charlie Banker and Storm and Norman now come to the front. In second place is Prairie Minstrel. On the far side is Mile a Minute. These are the three ahead of Dragon King, weakening back in fourth. One flight left to jump in the last race under National Hunt rules here at Windsor. And it's Norman Williamson on the Carl Burke train, Charlie Banker, and he's gone clear. Here he comes into it. He's over safely, and he's romping away with the last. In second place is Prairie Minstrel. In third is Mile a Minute, and it's Charlie Banker. Norman Williamson looks round. Charlie Banker's going to win the very last race ever run under National Hunt rules at Windsor and Charlie Banker's the name of the horse and he wins well. In second place, a rather tired looking Prairie Minstrel, close for third with mile a minute, just holding another night. Charlie Banker, a most impressive winner of that uh, Windsor finale, the Norwegian Blue Handicap Hurdle and um, that was his chin a little bit of bumper form last year but over hurdles. Mm. Impressive. Yeah. Yes, supreme leader. Um, looks like he'd go from strength to strength, and judging by the size of him, he'll certainly jump a fence, won't he? Prairie Minchel second, and Mile a Minute, who'd failed to get round in two runs, I think may have just uh, snitched third place. Yes, Mile a Minute confirmed by Judge Smith as third. But uh, Charlie, Charlie Banker is the winner. Let's have a look at the uh, head on here. And it was a typical Norman Williamson race, wasn't he? He was just sort of just waiting in behind. Uh, yes. Which is the one that had gone on? Dragon King had taken it up. Yes, Dragon King look, looked like he was going to be the one they had to beat, and then when, when Norman came up on Charlie Dropped. Banker and, and joined issue, then Just suddenly it all changed, didn't it? Hard held, winning very easily. Hmm. Charlie Banker, you can see them all riding away in behind, and a big gap to the second horse, who's Prairie Minstrel, and Mile a Minute was third. Final SP at Windsor with Luke Harvey.
Winner there was Charlie Banker, 8 to 1. Second, Prairie Minstrel, 5 to 1. And third was Mile a Minute, 33 to 1. And 13 ran. And the last race at Wing Canton, the 350. This is a two mile handicap hurdle. And it is the showcase race. Favourite here is number one, Neat Feet, 11 to 2. Seven, Punker is next at 9 to 2. Then it's 6 to 1, 8, Walk On By. 7 to 1, 6, Nazir. 10 to 1, about 2, Torn Silk. And then it's 12 to 1, about 4, Jers. And 8, Robert's Toy. Three, Shepherd's Rest is a 16 to 1 chance. And the outsider is number nine, Stone Cutter, 33 to 1. Stone Cutter at 33 to 1. Hasn't run for a long time. 573 days over hurdles. 496 on the flat. But um, he's trained Stone Cutter by Jonathan De Giles, who was, uh, in fact, had quite a good long price one in the first race. Mankind uh, <laughs> finished third in the first race. What I'm trying to get round to about talking about Jonathan De, De Giles is but he's been talking to Miriam. Jonathan, you've just um, got the two runners here today, and you must have been thrilled. Mankind was a good third behind Yorkshire Edition in our opening race. Yeah, he ran well. He, he was in a race which outclassed him mm. realistically. Um, he'd run a good second a couple of weeks ago in a cellar. I think he is quite a, a decent horse on this level, but he's had his problems, mental mostly, but mental and physical. Well, he had a lot behind him there. Now, your runner in our last is Stonecutter. Um, he's been off the course for a long time. I mean, it's nearly 500 days since he last ran on the flat. And you've got first-time blinkers on him, Jonathan. Well, first time this year. In fact, he's always run in blinkers previously oh, when he has run. I don't know why that's in the paper. Um, and not that he's going to need them particularly, but it just keeps his eye on the ball. But realistically, um, he's got a lot to do to beat the likes of Neat Feet, even getting over a stone. Yeah, indeed. He, he's ha had a long break, and it'd be nice to see him you know, run well and enthusiastically. But um, there's some horses who have been running well this year, and um, you know, the, the, they're the ones to beat. Jonathan, it's jolly nice to meet you, and uh, well done with Mankind, and let's hope the stone cutter can do you justice as well. Hope so. Thank you very much. Stone cutter. I think I'd have, be having more rocks on that one, would you? <laughs> no, no. Neat no. feet. We were talking. We were talking about this race earlier, and the one that we came out in, or you came out in favour of, was for David Ellsworth. Top weight here. Neat feet. Yes, yes, I think so. He, he's been running very well. He's won round the course, which, which I think is always very helpful with Wing Canton. Yes, you were saying that Wing Canton horses tend to do, you know, they're the ones to follow here because it doesn't suit all sorts of horses. No, no, I don't know why that should be, but um, certainly uh, some horses thrive on Wing Canton and, and some just, just don't like it. They come back a bit shell-shocked. Um, he having one round here, obviously, he's, he's likely to go and do it again. Yeah, he won here in October and he ran quite a fair race at Ascot next time behind Real Estate of David Nicholson's. Yes. And second behind him. And uh, the obvious favourite, six to four, not a lot of value there. No, Punker, but... see that one's been backed a bit. Of uh, Graham McCourt's open fives now four to one. Punker, let's get another show with Luke. Yes, Bob, there's been a couple back. Punker was fives now down to fours, and also number four Jers, that one was as big as twelve to one, is now a ten to one chance. Neat feet still favourite at six to four. Then they go seven. Punker is a four to one chance, and it's seven to one bar those two. Nice work there by Luke Harvey. He's really coming into his own in this latter part of the afternoon. Um, but they're lining up. Let's go uh, for the final time. Neat Feet's the one we're going to be cheering home here, isn't it? I do think so, yes. Neat Feet for me. OK. Let's go to Neat Feet, Simon Holt. Thanks, Bob. I'll go walk on by to walk on by the winning post first. In the green headgear, Robert's toy, just about the first to show. Punk car in blue and white stripes. Nazir over on the inside. Richard Dunwoody as ever taking the shortest route possible as they approach the first flight then let's see who takes off first possibly Punkar particularly as Robert's toy only got about halfway up the flight and knocked it flat Nazir the inside then Jers is close up 
with uh, walk on by a grey and stone cutter. Neat feet towards the outside as they rise over the second. Robert's toy made sure of it this time, gave it plenty of air. Nazir, the inner though, is the leader. It's Nazir from Robert's toy and Punkar at what looks to be a strong pace. In fourth place then, behind them is walk on by from torn silk and stone cutter. Neat feet settled uh, two or three from the end. Uh, Jers is anchored in rear at the moment along with Shepherd's Rest. And it looks as though Jers is going to be pulled up, in fact, uh, rounding that turn. Uh, possibly something amiss there as they run towards the next flight of hurdles. And it's Nazir that took it first from Punkar. Robert's toy and then walk on by a third and fourth, followed by Torn Silk, Stone Cutter, Neat Feet and Shepherd's Rest. As they prepare to swing right-handed now into the back straight. The remaining eight runners after Jers was pulled up and has been dismounted by Tom Dascom. Meanwhile, down the back, it's Nazir in a closely bunched field. Nazir, the leader, took it uh, quite cleanly in front from Punkar second. Robert's toy, walk on by, just shaken up on the inside to go the gallop. And then Shepherd's Rest and Torn Silk, neat feet, round horses and stone cutter, racing all in a heap then towards flight number five. Again, not much to choose up front with Nazir the inside of Punkar and Robert's toy who's jumping has been a bit awry. Uh, neat feet is uh, fairly close in behind them. Shepherd's Rest has got a lot closer as well with a big white face as they head towards the last in the back straight and still well grouped though uh, just dropping off them at the back is uh, at this stage Robert's toy having been up there early and it's Nazir who has the advantage on landing over the last on the far side from Punkar and Shepherd's Rest torn silk in the headgear towards the inside just snapping at the heels of the leaders then neat feet the favorite followed by stone cutter who's running pretty well after a long absence and after stone gutter uh, stone cutter is a, a gap opening up to the others. Walk on by is being pulled up and Robert's toy is tailed off down the hill towards the final turn. And it's Nazir in front in the hands of Richard Dunwoody from Punkar. Shepherd's Rest obliged to race rather deep. Torn Silk still going well on the heels of the leader in the green headgear. Then Neat Feet who switched to the inside behind horses by Paul Holly and Stone Cutter and forget the others. Down the straight then and Nazir trying to hold them all off. Torn Silk now given rein and shown the whip trying to stake a claim. Neat Feet is running on pretty well now towards the outside from Shepherd's Rest. Here's the second last coming up then Nazir joined by Torn Silk and Neat Feet almost three in a line now he gets to work on Nazir and Neat Feet is the one that's showing a fleet of foot down the outside towards the final flight and Neat Feet opening up now and goes four or five clear at the last big jump at the last for Neat Feet Nazir and Torn Silk they both got very leg weary and then Shepherd's Rest back in fourth place but Neat Feet is doing this very readily in front despite 11 stone 10 top weight Nazir trying hard in second place but plodding on at just the one pace and can't get to neat feet neat feet far too good for them neat feet goes on to win very readily indeed nazir in second from torn silk and then shepherd's rest easy win there for the favorite the david ellsworth trained neat feet partnered by paul holly has uh, beaten number six nazir with torn silk blinker for the first time today that one ran a fa fair race in a third, but uh, really quite an easy win for the favourite. Yes, yes. I thought he was going to struggle when, when they came into the straight because Jamie Osborne was going very easily on Torn Silk, but um, once, once he got his head in front, he, he soon put that beyond any doubt, didn't he? He's gone well clear. You can see Paul Holly there looking over his, over his shoulder. Yes, and Nazir's stayed on well under pressure. And torn Silk visored, not Blinker for the first time in uh, third place. So, favourite wins the uh, final race at Wincanton and the final result from Luke Harvey. Yes, Neat Feet records his third course and distance win there, winning the 6-4 to four favourite, second number 6, Nazir, and he is a 6-1, to 7-1 to one chance, third number 2, Torn Silk, 10-1, to one, all nine ran. So it's been a pretty good day for our guest in the studio, Roger Curtis. Not so much on the tipping here, although one of your two won. 
Yes. Yes, yes, one but of my double. But step aside, boy, if any of you have been brave, could you have possibly gone and napped your own horse, or would that have been just a bit too much? Step aside, um, boy. Yes, I could have done it. would have been very brave, because I think most of my owners have backed it anyway, but, um, and perhaps wouldn't have been quite so pleased with a seven to one. But um, no, super superstition would have got the better off me, I'm afraid. Well, the main thing is that he won extremely well, didn't he? He won, he won extremely convincingly. I thought he just jumped superbly. Yes, yes. It, for, for a first time, first time out in a, in a novice chase, yes, it was a very brave bit of jumping. Now, tomorrow at uh, Sandown Park, which, of course, you can see on the racing channel, was a tremendous race at five past two. It's the Bovis Europe Winter Novices Hurdle. And all the runners in the race, I think there are six or seven of them, and seven of them have either won or been second last time out. There's a fascinating rematch here between Barton and uh, Roger's horse. Do you know what? Who was uh, second behind Barton in a good race at Utoxter recently? Yes, I, I think that was perhaps the the best novice hurdle so far this season. Um, my horse, I think, is is very very decent. Um, well, I know that Tim Easterby thinks that uh, Barton is extremely decent. Yep. Lorcan and Wye was on yep. board, so this is a real race yep. horse. So I think you were beaten by a good one. Well, here. that's right. Yes, um, you know, I think I think mine is not far short of top class, and this horse has has beaten us very easily. So we're thinking of going, taking him on again here. Um, it's owned by, uh, do you know what's owned by a, a chap called Eddie Gloyne, who's a great sportsman, and he really just, uh, he's not confident about beating Barton, he just thinks it will be a great spectacle, and he didn't want to rob everybody of a great spectacle. Is there much difference in the weights tomorrow? No, we meet exactly the same. Exactly the yes. same? Yes. So really, on the, I mean, Barton was an impressive winner there, wasn't he? Yes. We've, we've come on quite a bit for our last run. Um, he's, he's very much a, a novice chaser for next year rather than a novice hurdler for this year. Um, he's come on a lot. I know Tim Eastby thinks his has come on a lot as well. Uh, there's not another obvious race to go for, so we'll, we'll, we'll come here, take him on again, and obviously um, King's Road as well. Yes, I know. Good luck to you anyway. <laughs> very nice of you to join us here today. Have you enjoyed your... Um... Your, your spell here in the Racing Channel today? Yes, it's been good fun. It's been smashing. Thank good. you. And let's, let's hope you have two winners in two days. Yes, it'd be nice. <laughs> be very happy. Roger Curtis. As uh, we've been talking all afternoon, it's a very sad day at Windsor. It's uh, final, the curtain comes down on National Hunt Racing there. And earlier today, Mark Richards, our reporter at the track, caught up with the clerk of the course, Hugo Bevan. Well, Hugo, you are retiring from Windsor, but of course you've still got plenty of other courses to keep you busy, the likes of Worcester... Huntingdon and Toaster, but it's still nonetheless a very sad day to uh, be bowing out here at Windsor. Yes, I'm very sad. I've been here 15 years, jump racing finished today after 130 years. I've been operating on something like 80 days racing a year, less 20 now, so I'm back to whatever it is, 50 days. <laughs> so I haven't really retired, but I've retired from Windsor and I am very sad. It's the people you miss. It, you know, I've got a great team here, terrific groundsman and Russell Knight, and I shall miss it here very much indeed. Well, of course, Windsor's had great loyal support from the jumping fraternity, hasn't it? I mean, you do see the same faces here year after year. Yes, you do. It's, I mean, we've had plenty and plenty of runners. Uh, and, and I think it's a sad decision that the executive decided to give up National Hunt Racing here. I'm a jumping man, as you well know, Mark, through and through. But there were decisions that had to be taken. Um, we had eight days racing. We had two decent days. We had the New Year's Day hurdle that lost its way when the Christmas um, hurdle at Kempton became such a big race. The fan run lost its way. Whatever we did with the conditions, they never got them right again and a lot of work has been spent on the track I mean 120,000 has been spent leveling the track and it was felt that quite honestly that that, that, that jumping here during the winter would, 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 would damage the course and therefore the decision was taken to only race on the flat for the, the great disappointment from jumping people's side of uh, things is the fact that the ground here was always so good. You never ended up with bottomless ground. At the same time, you never had very fast ground either. No, it's always been reasonable ground. Apart from today, I've had my worst problem with ground today. I've had in 15 years here. I gave it this morning as good, good to soft in places. The jockeys come back and say it's not good to soft. It's soft. So it hasn't been one of my days. In fact, it's the worst ground I've had here for some time. But basically, you're absolutely right. We've always produced decent ground here. Well, you can't expect to get away with it, you see. Last day, we've got to make a few things complicated for you so we can have a cut at you when we go to your other courses. Well, it's been a difficult day, hasn't it? Two horses loose in the first race. I don't know how many fell in the amateurs race. They're all over the shop. So it hasn't been an easy day's racing, even if it's my last one. Nothing's easy in this business, as you well know. It's been some very enjoyable and some very light moments here at Windsor over the years, though, for you. I've had lots of fun here, yeah. I've had a terrific bunch of stewards. And, of course, Bill Shank Kidd, who you all know, was a great amateur rider and a steward here. We had some very amusing times. Um, the Queen Mother was a great supporter here. And in the 80s and the early 90s would come here to, well, most of the, most of the National Art meetings. 
Well, no, uh, no jumping, no royal anymore, I shouldn't think. No, I don't think we'll see um, the Queen Mother here again. I remember an instant when she came down the Arn steps from the steward's dining room and a chap was standing at the bottom of the steps and he said, Hello, darling, to which she replied, Isn't it nice to be called darling sometimes? <laughs> Those were great days, but they're not going to be any longer, sadly. Well, very sad that we're going to be missing jump racing here and missing you as well, Hugo, but uh, all the best with your other three courses anyway. Be looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you, Mark, very much indeed. I'm not completely going. <laughs> Is that okay? Hugo Bevan, sad, and uh, uh, that uh, racing has uh, finished there. And now we can go to uh, Wing Canton. Jump racing still going strong at Wing Canton, thank goodness. That's a real home of uh, national hunt racing there in the West Country. Let's get all the news for Miriam. Yes, uh, welcome back to Wing Canton. And I can never envisage a day when there won't be national hunt racing down here at Wing Canton. Wing Canton is one of those courses, Robert, that's got the most tremendous local loyal following and uh, it's always well supported and quite rightly so. Now we've had a good afternoon. We kicked off with the CERN Abyss, Abyss National Hunt Novices Hurdle. This was over two miles and six furlongs. Now Yorkshire Edition hadn't fared very well on his debut this season up at Haydock but having said that he had a dreadful journey to the races and Paul Nichols was saying that uh, he only arrived about 40 minutes before his race and I think it must have put him off because he was never jumping well and never traveling there it was a completely different story today richard dunwoody was always look looking confident on this robert ogden owned horse and what a handsome horse he is too you can see him there in the robert ogden colors over on the far side he's still very much a baby and actually to be fair he was left in front a little bit uh too soon which made him sort of get a little bit lazy and wander about but as soon as the other horses came to him he ran on again well and you can see there richard dunwoody just waving that whip just saying you know come on keep up to your work and on this side running on to be Third, we had Ashgan. Now, Ashgan had won a couple of point to points uh, in Wales before joining uh, Ian Williams. And Ian felt that he was just short of a gallop here this afternoon. Uh, but in fact, he ran extremely well, and I think Connections will be well encouraged by that effort. Now, second race on the card was the Char Juvenile Novices Hurdle. This was for three year olds over two miles and newcomer. Tom Paddington ran away with this. Jamie Osborne had given him the most tremendous ride. You can see him there in the pink and black just popping over that hurdle. Jamie had given him plenty of opportunity to get to know what he was doing. He'd taken him round the outside, let him have a good look at his hurdles. And in the end, it was really easy. He was always traveling well, but just had to be pushed out. The Jean Genie taking second spot. And in third spot, we had Master Caster. Huey Morrison, I don't think, would have more than uh, three or four jumpers. So jolly nice for him to have this juvenile. And he was saying that, of course, you know, everybody with a three-year-old uh, that wins, especially first time out, would dream of the triumph. But as he said, it can ruin more horses than it makes. And he might actually think more in terms of Liverpool, providing everything goes well between now and then. Well, our third race was um, at 10 to 2, and this was the Tattersall's Ireland EBF Fund Mayor's Only Novices Chase. This was over two miles, and for Tria Rosie Dawn looked to have this race sewn up turning for home and she jumped the second last. You can see her here just coming to the second last, popped it perfectly. Sissinghurst Flyer was the only one following her home and we're coming up to the last fence now and just look what happens. Poor Shane Kelly, given no chance of staying in the saddle. Sissinghurst Flyer pops it beautifully under Richard Dunwoody and goes on to win. I did feel very sorry for Shane there because he did absolutely nothing wrong. The mare was still trapping going into the fence but just pecked on landing and it's one of those unfortunate things. But anyway, Sissinghurst Flyer winner by default there, um, winning her third race of the season. Well, fourth race of, of the day was the Sunley Bay Conditional Jockey's Handicap Chase. This was over a trip of just short of three and a quarter miles, and it provided us with the most exciting finish of the days. And let me leave Simon Holt to talk you through it.
Kinahala trying hard to bridge the gap in second place, drawing closer. The final fence coming up, this side ball by two lengths coming to it. A good jump again. Kinahala's got two and a half lengths to find on the running and getting there slowly but surely. But can she get there in time? Disciborg's out on his feet. Kinahala coming home the stronger. And Kinahala edges ahead in the final 50 yards to win from Disciborg. Oh, just ran out. So mean. Desai Borg had jumped beautifully for Jerry Supple all the way around. He'd given him a tremendous ride and they just couldn't give all that weight away. It was nearly two stone, um, which over that sort of trip is bound to tell in the end. But a great effort there uh, by the top weight. But don't let me get it, take anything away from the Mayor Kinahala, who again had jumped very well all the way around and uh, just took advantage of a better handicap mark on the day. Well, at 10 to 3, we had Division 2 of the Cernavas National Hunt Novices Hurdle. Um, again, let me remind you, that was two miles and six furlongs. And Yeoman Sailor, a four-year-old son of Roselier, ran away with this, really, in the closing stages. He finished extremely strongly indeed. You can see him there just jumping the last... Um, in front of Upham Lord. Um, Upham Lord had thought that he had Devonshire to beat earlier in the day. Devonshire ran a very disappointing race indeed. And you know, it's rather unusual to see um, a four-year-old son of Roselier winning like this because normally they take a lot longer to come to hand. So jolly nice horse he'll be. And uh, David State, Jenny Pittman's uh, husband, was telling us that he still needs time to mature. Now, Jonathan Portman is only in his first season training and he bought King of Sparta back at the August sales and what a bargain he's turned out to be for him. He was winning his third race on the trot here today, having won at the previous meeting and uh, it did look as though he was going to have a battle on his hands with Mel Stop Meggie going to the fourth last. You can see King of Sparta on the far side, the big dark horse, Mel Stop Meggie in the blue colours this, this side. Oof! gives Martin Berry a crashing fall and she had a hard fall too, poor mare. But uh, I'm happy to say I talked to Simon Sherwood and they are both absolutely A1. But it's the jumping really that wins it for King of Sparta. Again, he was carrying top weight here today, 11 stone, 11. And it's quite funny because he has been called a rogue in his time. There's no doubt about it. And his tail does seem to go round and round. But Chris Maud, who won on him at the last meeting, I remember him saying to me then, Robert, that the faster his tail goes round, the further he seems to win. A really lovely horse, and he's given his owner, Emma Tice, the most tremendous amount of fun. Well, we've just had our closing race, which was the Manston Handicap Hurdle, over a trip of two miles. And uh, turning for home, nobody was going better than Paul Webber's Torn Silk under Jamie Osborne and equipped with first-time visor. But uh, I'm afraid he really didn't look as though he wanted to win. Not so with Neat Feet, a really bonny little horse, Neat Feet. You can see him there with the brown sleeves. He pops this like a little cat and goes on to win fairly readily under that top weight. Nazir running quite well to finish second and Torn Silk, I'm afraid, only managing third, third place. He's out of the picture at the moment, but I'm afraid he really doesn't look as though he wants to win. And as I say, unlike Neat Feet, you can see him there, really lovely little horse with his ears well pricked. Very attractive, and David Ellsworth understandably thrilled with that effort. So there we are. That was our last race, and that concludes the action for this afternoon, Robert. Thank you very much indeed, Miriam. Good stuff there at uh, Wing Canton. And certainly a jockey I'm going to keep an eye on. I've been rabbiting on about him before. It's Barry Keneary, who rode Kinahalla. He rides for Toby Balding, and some good names have come from uh, Toby Balding before. Of course, Tony McCoy, Adrian Maguire. And uh, Barry Fenton, of course, as well. So watch out for Barry Keneary. Now, watching out for all the action at Windsor this afternoon. And we've seen some good jumping because uh, uh, my studio guest, Roger Curtis, had a winner during the afternoon. But rounding up all the highlights, here's Mark Richards. Well, at the end of what's been a very sorry day here at Windsor, the la very last jump race has been run. And, uh, well, the winning last winner goes to Norman Williamson and trainer Carl Burke. But uh, it's been very hard to find anybody that's had a good word to say, I'm afraid. Uh, it really has been a very disappointing day as much as this is the last day of jump racing at Windsor. 
Nonetheless, we've had some very good racing, like we always have had over the years here at Windsor. Plenty of novices in the novice events, and it kicked off with a novice event with Nicky Henderson's horse and Mick Fitzgerald on board, Grecian Dart. Well, he had the form going into the race to win it quite easily. He returned at 7-4 to four on, and he wins it like a 7-4 to four on sh should. Uh, the second horse to, in chasing him home is My Lisa 2. That's one that ought to go into the notebook. 66 to 1, about to an each way price there would have been very handy. But Grish and Dart fairly bolting up in the hands of Mick Fitzgerald. Uh, this horse who had pretty decent form, as I say, going into the race. Looks like this won't be the first race he's going to win. Uh, expect a few more from him. Afterwards, Nicky Henderson, I'm afraid, uh, wasn't uh, too forthcoming about where the horse was going to go. He was more forthcoming about his disappointment at the lack of no more opportunities here at Windsor. It's been a great course for him. He said one of his greatest days racing was uh, providing a winner for the Queen Mother and a third on the same day here. And, uh, well... He would be very sorry to miss it, but uh, very grateful for the winner on the day, nonetheless. Our second race was an amateur riders handicap chase, and uh, it was fairly strewn with incident. An awful lot of horses and jockeys on the floor, but a great race nonetheless going to the last. Philatelic and River Bay on the far side with the red cap fighting out a very close finish. It was a neck when we finally get down to the line, and J.D. Moore rides the winner this side on Philatelic. At uh, six to one, quite rewarding odds, one would have to say about the Robert Arnold horse if you disregarded his last disappointing run at Ludlow. No excuses for that uh, run. They no idea why he ran so poorly there. But uh, as I say, it was incident packed on the home turn. A loose horse raced straight towards the leaders. And uh, Teller Porky uh, took evasive action. But I'm afraid the stewards felt that Mr. O and James Owen, the rider of uh, Teller Porky, really uh, didn't, shouldn't have made such a, an evasive move and he's been stood down for two days. Uh, one would have to say, I think it's quite difficult what else he could have done with a loose horse coming towards you. It actually knocked with well, the horse that was in for the fourth jockey, the, the jockey that was on the fourth. That's the best way of putting it who was a Hawaiian youth, actually got knocked off by the loose horse, so I don't know really what they could have done to avoid it. He took evasive action, but as I say, he's got a two-day holiday into the bargain. Our third race, this is the second division of the Novices Hurdle, and again, it went to Nicky Henderson and Mick Fitzgerald. Uh, very, very close finish between Copper Coin, our winner, and Dragon Lord on the near side, Dragon Lord. Barry Fenton get, getting the best out of that one. It hadn't jumped all that well on the way round, just a little bit sticky and green. I'm afraid Barry got a a four-day holiday for his use of the stick on Dragon Lord on this one. He goes down by a head at the line to Copper Coin. Uh, Copper Coin is a big jumping sword. He's got plenty of future in him, Copper Coin. There's no doubt we'll see him in the winner's enclosure an awful lot more in the future. But uh, just starting his career, which is more than be said for the race course here. Our fourth, this was a handicap chase run over two miles. And, uh, well, a very interesting looking race before the car because they won an awful lot of them in form. But Buckland Lad hadn't run for an awful long while. Gardy Grizel, Barry Fenton on board, and Barry soon got over his uh, whip man because he rode the winner of this one. And a, a nice win considering the horse had been off for so long. Uh, Mick Fitzgerald riding Robin's Pride. Robin's Pride made a nasty mistake at the first and uh, just jarred his injuries up from yesterday where he had a nasty fall at Plumpton. So after this, Mick Fitzgerald didn't ride again. But let's say Buckland Lad, he, he was a, a bit of a stuffy horse guard. He felt that he needed another two weeks with him really to produce him at his best well he jumped very very soundly today and ran out quite a tidy winner it was only a head at the line but uh, I think you'll find that horse will improve a fair bit with that run under his belt our next race was the mayor's only handicap hurdle. It looked like it was a one-sided affair with Henrietta Knight's horse, Hart, and that's how it turned out in the race as well. Liam Cummings having a leisurely look over his shoulder there on Hart. It was well clear. Eight lengths was the final winning distance at the line, and, and 13 to 8 on. Well, it certainly won like a 5 to 1 on shot, didn't it? It'd be interesting to see what the handicapper does with this one now. Uh, it was only racing off a mark of 93 today, but I think it can well earn at least a, a £7 rise in the weights after this and if it well wouldn't like to say wouldn't be brave enough to say that it hasn't stopped winning yet a very very easy win indeed for Hart and Henrietta Knight Henrietta wasn't here Terry Biddlecombe was her husband and uh, Terry said that we'll just have to see where we go uh, more than happy to get three wins into this filly after last year where she had a bit of second-itis had a win problem had a win problem last year had that sorted out and it certainly has worked the oracle there 
Well, our next was a three-mile novice chase, and, well, the man in the studio with you knew all about this one. Roger Curtis, his horse, step aside boy, was kicked into a clear lead by Jonathan Leach, five out. That's uh, just before the turn for home where they go to the last ditch, and that was the winning of the race, really, eventually coming home by 15 lengths, but it got everything at it, turning into the straight. Tom Patu and Jazzman are the second and third horses. They were the form horses in the race, so the form would appear to be very sound. It was a decent point-to-point -point winner, this horse, so... It looks like there's a fair future to be had with him. The owner, as uh, Roger, I know, has already told you, lives in Australia. So he wouldn't have been able to see it live, I don't suppose. It's about time we got the racing channel channeled over there so you could see it all without having to uh, telephone up all the time. But a nice win there for Roger Curtis in the studio. Well done, Roger. And well, as they say, our last win. And uh, that goes to Norman Williamson and Carl Burke. And a very easy winner too, Charlie Banker winning the Norwegian Blue Handicap Hurdle. Well, any follower of uh, Monty Python will understand exactly why it's called the Norwegian Blue. If you don't, I think it's too long a story for me to start telling you now. And that, that was the first winner for Carl Burke since he moved to Newmarket. So a very pleased man indeed, Carl Burke. Charlie Banker, I think one or two uh, bets were laid on this one. Returned at 8-1 to one in the end. So uh, more than happy way to finish at Windsor on what is a very, very sorry day. I should be sorry not to be here any longer. And, uh, well, I'm not on my own, I know. But that's it. Got to close the book sooner or later. I'll close it now. Back to you in the studio. I'm still trying to work out that Monty Python joke with a Norwegian blue um, to do with cheese. Extinct, is it? Anyway, let's go to uh, Leicester and uh, roving Rupert Bell. Well, not a bad afternoon sport here at Leicester. Disappointingly, only four runners in our feature race, but that was because Cap and Ray came here and frightened off the opposition in the £10,000 race. And it was easy to see why, because he cruised to victory. Jeff King's horse has been in five form all winter. Three out of four wins he made it. Five to four on he was sent the favourite. And actually, you consider that's a pretty good value uh, when you think that uh, the horse, well, was expected to win as he liked and that's exactly what he did winning by uh, 12 lengths popped the last it was all over bally line running on a little bit one paced kamitrov out in last and uh, disappointing run from that one maybe uh, we'll see an improved run from that but take nothing away from cap and ray won more or less as he liked and will continue i think to win races judging by this effort he's not going to be shooting too high but i don't think he needs to because he's going to keep on winning races and winning races pretty comfortably well it was a predictable winner in the opener not uh, not in the opener i should say because cool performance was a 50 to 1 winner in the uh, juvenile novices hurdle die haynes horse uh, trained uh, for her father and actually the first time that she's uh, trained an out right winner for her father who uh, was asked her to get a horse to run on the flat buy one in the uh, over hurdles buy it out of the flat for six thousand uh uh, guineas and I think they're going to get a reward on their investment and in fact uh, she said after the horse won and won pretty nicely that she would like people to uh, consider buying the horse because her father is looking to sell a share and I think people could do worse than buying a share in cool performance who won pretty handily well the 130 race was an incident packed race right from the off with uh, Caras Rose who was one of our talking horses made a complete hash of the uh, first fence down in mid div but as they come to it with Pee Wee to bridge out in front. Karras Rose completely, uh, well, pecked on landing. Brilliant recovery from Brian Harding. But uh, there was more incident to follow as uh, they all jumped the uh, second. Pee Wee Bridge is out in front. Looks a pretty hairy ride. Went off like a scalded cat. But as they approached the third, this is where the drama happened. And it involved Pee Wee Bridge as he uh, veers violently to his left and gives Timmy Murphy absolutely no chance. Sends him over and then Adrian McGuire is brought down on uh, Sarah's Delight, who was one of the fancies in the race. And actually, Timmy Murphy had a horror fool that meant he had to be stood down for the remainder of the afternoon with chest injuries. Adrian Maguire, where this course is pretty unlucky, got up unscathed. But when you consider how harsh, hard the Carras Rose hit that opening fence, well, then from then on, it was a remarkable turnaround in form because Carras Rose won very, very easily under Brian Harding, coming in for a chance ride. His first time that he's ridden for Jenny Pittman, a good performance. Well, the best finish of the day was in the uh, selling race, where there was a fine finish between Apache Park and Be Brave. Tim Ely on board for Andy Streeter. Well, it was a, a ding-dong battle right to the line, but uh, Be Brave was just run out of it. 
come down towards the uh, final flight now on the left the blinkered be brave on the outside in the yellow apache park there's only a half a length in it and it's going to be a struggle to the line balmoral princess has come running through the for a place yet again rosevar behind that and connell croft but head to head they go be brave apache park what a ding dong it is apache park possibly be brave fighting back at the line apache park be brave a long way clear of balmoral princess who is placed and Rosevar who comes home for. Apache Park then getting up to beat Be Brave, but delight in the Ely camp because the horse was ridden by Tim Ely for his brother Mark and it came after a long wait. Apache Park? Well, it's been 12 months since we've had him and the pressure's been getting a bit more and more. And I, I mean, the horse has he's ran, well, every time he's ran some better races and some not so good races, but, you know, it's just a delight to ride a winner for your brother. I, um, I rode him at Warwick last time. I turned down a ride of John Mackey's Northern Maestro to ride for him because I really want to win from my brother. And thankfully today it's come good. Uh, and Mark, um, were you never lost faith in your brother? No, not at all. How can you lose faith in your brother after all? He's tried hard, Andy's tried hard, everyone's tried hard, and we needed a little bit of luck to change us, and today's done it. And uh, well, I'm delighted totally. Pleased for me and my brother. And for you, your first ever winner as an owner? Oh, fantastic. Show me the champagne bar. <laughs> I think they're probably still in the champagne bar. Great scenes then after the success of Apache Park. There was no bid for the winner, incidentally. Good winner, though, we did see uh, in our fifth race, Burundi. One hit first time up this season and has made it two out of two, this time winning with a penalty and winning very comfortably indeed. Fine performance from Burundi, who looks a, a good hurdler in the mating, making. And, of course, Tony Carroll, the horse's trainer, well, he was tickled pink. Win. Yes, he's, you know, it's nice to see them progress. And he's, he's a progressing horse, you know and beating Dasher, although that one made a mistake towards the end, in even more convincing fashion, so going the right way. Yes, he, he jumped a lot better today than he did, obviously, the first run stood him in good stead for today. But, you know, he's, he's, he looks as though he, he seems to enjoy it, and uh, I think he'll go on and win again. An exciting prospect? I think so. He's a, he's a nice horse. I, I don't um, particularly want to go too high with him at the moment, but because he's, he's a little bit of a baby still, but I, I think that one day he could be a, a good horse. He's huge though, isn't he? He is, he is a very tall horse, very leggy horse, but uh, you know, I think in time, it, it could be good, you know. You're looking forward to running this one, aren't you? Yes, very much so, yeah. Yeah, he's a nice horse to train. Nice horse to train, ridden incidentally by Graham Bradley this afternoon because, as I mentioned, Timmy Murphy picking up a, a nasty injury on that fall earlier in the afternoon. So a good spare ride for Graham Bradley. Well, the final race of the afternoon, that was won by uh, John Akers, Bowcliffe Court, who stole a march at the start and then won more, well, in good determined fashion to take the uh, conditional jockey's race under Seamus Durek. Well, early on in the uh, day, I was told that the mulled wine here was particularly good. So... As time-honoured tradition, research is all the important part about being a racecourse reporter, and I can report that the mulled wine is particularly good. Good night from Leicester. I don't believe what I'm seeing there. Alcoholic beverage live on the racing channel. I'm lucky to get a little carton of uh, mushy peas. Well done, Rupert. We drink to him. So, uh, <laughs> thanks to our reporters. He's got to drive home, especially when the police have just started their anti-drink driving campaign, and maybe he'll have to get a taxi home. Let's hope Rupert gets home safely. Now uh, we're going to, at five o'clock, round about five o'clock, give or take a minute or so, just after five o'clock I think, we'll be looking at today's racing at uh, Wexford, but right now it's time to look back at yesterday, the whole card at Catrick. Catrick going here is good and it was good to firm in places. Their first race was the one o'clock, this is a conditional jockey's handicap hurdle over two miles three. A favourite here was Mary Reevely's Jessica One. 